Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the official EGF channel. And today is the final day of Rocket League action and the inaugural season of EGFC Rocket League. My name is Abmind. I'm joined here by the one, the only, the uh, personally, I, I, I think this, handsome. <laughs> door casts Ooh. how are you doing man i'm doing well thank you very much it, it was nice seeing you too over over that little bit ago however today we've got another tournament on our hands like you said egfc season one final tournament and we have all of the matches on stream starting all with the them. eighth and ninth seed playing for that quarterfinal spot we have sienna college going up against niagara university which should actually be a very interesting matchup yeah, absolutely. So this is technically this is technically bracket, but you could call it the wild card spot. This is the this is the game between the eighth and the ninth place teams. Um, Sienna coming into this with the eighth place, Niagara coming into this with the ninth place, and Niagara actually coming into today they or actually coming into this week period they didn't have a single win under their belt. But they actually started off Wednesday by playing off against uh, Manhattan University, and they ended up beating Manhattan. So Niagara was actually able to, uh, you know, avoid the 08, get themselves the 1-7, and actually a lot of confidence and a lot of momentum heading into today. And they're actually facing off against uh, Siena. Siena is, you know, uh, their, their one win that they have on the season entirely was against Niagara a couple of weeks ago. So these two, they know each other. They know they know each other very well. I would like to argue that their skill level might even be, you know, pretty even to one another. So I'm actually expecting a, a barn burner of a first match here on stream. Yeah, looking at it, it's going to be a good one. I'm looking at what's happened this season, though. And Sienna really have had a, a real tough time. Niagara's oh, yeah. always been behind. They've been losing matches constantly. But I feel like they've consistently improved to the point where they were able to beat Manhattan last week on the... Meanwhile, Sienna has just struggled up against no matter who they come up against. And you look at the Founders Invitational that they played before all this, and they played perfectly fine. They were about a mid-table team. They were having some good results. They were taking games off of teams. But now it just seems impossible for them. And Niagara, coming off a week like last week, I got to say, I hand him a slight edge. Absolutely, my man. Absolutely so. Let's just jump into it, my friend. First game of EGFC playoffs, and it's to qualify to see who plays against the number one seeded RT Arlington or RT Arlington. RTA, RT Arlington. Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. And we get there. Oh my oh, God! Man, what? Off the bat, Niagara. They already get themselves their first goal. I mean, <laughs> just as I mean, they didn't even give me enough time. To even get through my first sentence because I was messing up too much. But six seconds into the game, Niagara already starts off with a banger. They already get themselves a goal. Well, I mean, you already talked about ETR Linkedin or UR Linkedin T, whatever you were saying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And if there's one of these teams that I think stands any sort of a chance against UTR Linkedin, which is easily the toughest team in this entire bracket, obviously the first seed, but I, it's hard to express how on another level they are. But I've got to say, that's going to be Niagara. Niagara, they're looking up. They're playing significantly better. I think they're about the only team between these two that could really keep up with the pace of that Texas team. And so coming out of this, I think Niagara taking a win would be huge for these lower seeds. Here comes Pablo in a 1v1. He's going to end up losing it. Mid in the back lines. Kind of going to wait it out. He was actually going to go for boost, but he ends up missing it. Instead, in comes Oz to try to defend against Turn of God. Pablo tries to get the clear, but Mitt is in the back. Great save from Mitt and an even better shot from Ive McFallen. And uh, ball now in the center. Us towards the corner. Going to hit the back. Going to actually hit a really weird angle towards the corner. Pablo with a beautiful jump. But instead, it's going to be saved. McFallen with a... What? He tries to clear it, but it's actually cleared towards the center. Big opportunity now coming in from Sienna. Oh. Tag, shot. It's going to go in. Beautiful play going back and forth from both Niagara and Sienna, ending up in a Sienna tie, one to one. And a great counterattack off the back of Tag 20 wing, two 50-50s there, and allowing that ball to go off the back wall, really, Pablo's got to be taking that touch, got to be forcing that one out wide towards his boost pad so his teammate can pick it up, allowing it to bounce Ooh. off like that is bad, but now Austin has an opportunity Aust up for the air dribble. Get oh my god! Oh my god! 
over the goalkeeper with no boost. Look at this and juggle. Two one, they fire back. Jukes out his first opponent, gets the flip over tag twenty, chips it right on in over turn up god. What a legend! Us one seventeen. We're just a minute and a half into this game, and I feel like we've already seen everything. Oh my god, Dora! I, I, I'm already, I'm already exhausted. Not gonna lie. <laughs> so I think one of the one of the neatest things about that goal is the way you set it up. So the ball bounces, he jumps with it. It effectively looks like he's setting himself up for an air dribble, but instead of going for an air dribble, he effectively just does a late flick to boop the ball over, and it just caught the goalkeeper Beautiful so far pass. apart. I'm almost certain that's exactly what the goalkeeper was expecting was for him to take an air dribble, and then all of a sudden the ball's over top of you, and you have no clue what to do about it. I love the creativity. Right, absolutely. So still an opportunity here. Ost off the side. Pablo up for the shot. Catches a rebound off the post, though. Heads over towards Ost, who's going to try and let this ball bounce back to Mitt, but Niagara... Gonna under rotate a little bit, allow the ball to go back into their half. Now Ad McFallon has this attack. It'll go off of the corner. Ost happily oh, gonna man. play it over here for Niagara though. Try and get this oh. ball out of their half. And Pablo finally there to hit it out. All right, the 50-50 going towards the side of Niagara. Big clear though from tag 20. In comes Pablo, starts it up, gonna bump it towards the middle. Tag 20 is ready, but instead it's gonna be Ost going for the 50-50. In comes Mitt. Oh, actually. Tag 20, Ooh. he passes right on by two players, but he's going to end up getting demo from behind. I McFallen starts off the play, going to go up above, instead it's Mitt, and he actually double dribbles. In comes Aust, 1v1. Oh, oh. But, but it's going to miss. Two minutes left on the clock. Niagara still trying to make their way forward, but instead it's oh Sienna. Oh my god, Mitt. Oh my god, a little bit of a reverse out of nowhere, but still, big opportunity for Sienna. McFallen still on the front lines. And the pressure is being put on here by Sienna. I feel like they're winning a lot of these 50-50s. Niagara's no, playing no. great passing game, but when it comes to the 1v1, Sienna are just getting the ball past them. Now, though, it's a waterfall in here for Mitt. No finish had, though. The defender will arrive just in time. The ball now in the counterattack. I have McFallen will be there for the shot. bounces, but no, Ost makes it barely to the ball. And this man has been all over the field all game, and he gets back just in time. Again, heroic performance from Oz thus far, but he has to work just a tiny bit more just to confirm out this game with just a minute and a half left. These two teams are just going back and forth at the moment. Sienna, not so many opportunities, but it almost seems like every time they do get a shot in, it's close. But Niagara, they keep chipping away at the defense, chipping away at the rotation. And finally, it works out in their favor. And look at that beautiful pass from Oz going coast to coast in the middle. Beautiful goal from Niagara. That's them forward. 3-1. Niagara with a solid lead here. Sienna have a big gap to close with just about a minute left. And if there's one thing I want to see out of them, it's passing plays like we just saw out of Niagara. We're seeing a very strong individual play from the side of Sienna, but they're not really stringing passes together. They're booting the ball out of the half, praying for counterattacks. Honestly, that's where every single one of their goals has come from. The only goal, rather. Every single one of their attacks is well. Ooh. Just like that, it's a counterattack from Tag 20. He does it all on his own. And that's going to be enough to close that goal gap just a little bit. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, good start off the left flip. But, I mean, he angles himself just to try to stuff down Mitt. But he didn't exactly need it. Just went right in, got the bump. And with exactly a minute left on the clock, Niagara just trying to hold off Sienna at this point. Reminder, ladies and gents, this is a best of five format. So... I mean, there's still enough time for both teams to try to bounce back or just to try to change up their play styles depending on their teammates and against their I mean, opponents. I mean, if I'm Niagara here, oh, no. I, I'm changing my play style to just pull on that handbrake, park in the bus, you know. Right. They just got to stop one from going in right now. But in Rocket League, that can be a tough order. Aust is in a dangerous position. Not Great to fall clear. out towards that field. Term God may not have rotated in time, though, playing a little bit too aggressively. is going to allow the push from Niagara to come back out. Awkward bounce here. I've been falling. Can't quite reach it. Tag 20, though. Will be there to catch the rebound. No going for the shot off the air. Joel Pablo makes the save. It might be there for the oh, this is tough. The dangerous waters right now. Two, three whiffs here from Niagara. And it's going to be played out finally by Aust. Good clear from tag. In comes McFallen. Covered by mid. That has to cover time. That's going to make up the time. Mitt bumping up tag 20. Ball still has to make his way up. No. Pablo just has to hit it down. He hits it towards the corner. McFallen. Tag. Going to try to play it out. But instead, Niagara. Going to take game one of this BO5 series. It's exactly what we saw last week. Niagara making really, really solid team play. Their mechanics might not be as great as some of the other teams within this bracket. I mean, obviously, the, the, the big three, UD, UT, 
A and RIT all coming out will probably drive circles around them. But what they're what they're lacking in mechanics, they're really making up for in strategy and pure communication, if nothing else. The amount of coordination we're seeing out of this Niagara side is something that I don't think we've ever seen out of them until last week. And it's really impressive what they've been managing it to do, considering that they had that little bit of time off due to the virus. I'm pretty sure they scrimmed hard. They took advantage of that week off and they made the absolute most of it. And it totally shows and it's going to pay off in spades right now for them. Absolutely. Reminder, ladies and gents. Stay safe, stay home. Thankfully, everyone is home at the moment watching out this EGF playoff series because, uh, you know, we just want the best for you guys. Stay safe, stay home, wash your hands, practice social distancing, all that good stuff. I'll tell you what, Niagara's been practicing more than social distancing. <laughs> they have been playing a hell of a lot of Rocket League, and it shows. They're on the attack again, but one demo could look to end this one. Also has a little bit of ball control. This could be dangerous. Good 50-50 here from I've been fallen. Or from, uh, yeah, I've, I've been fallen. <laughs> and it's going to be eliminated entirely by a demo. Niagara putting a full stop to that one, but it's exactly what I've been saying all series. Sienna are doing so well on those 50-50s, and you can really tell, because 50-50s are something that, generally speaking, you learn over time. It's an experience thing. How do I want to approach this ball to get myself the most advantageous bounce? But as far Ooh, as what a pass. just team play goes, Niagara definitely in the lead, and it shows how much that can matter compared to just raw mechanical and individual skill. I love this pacing so far from Niagara. I mean, you saw up in the back, they switched up the tempo. It was, uh, you know, pretty slow at the beginning, purely just waiting for a pass. They always have Pablo in the back, just trying to keep rotations going. I mean, Niagara, they've, they've got it down so far, but it's just going to come down to how they actually act against this Sienna offense. Because so far, again, like I mentioned before, Sienna, they don't actually have too many opportunities on the front end of the field. But whenever they do, it always seems as if they get the ball in goal. But look at that. Niagara, consistent pressure on that defense. Pass after pass. Tiki Taka type oh, plays. Dude. Good Lord, Ooh. Aust. The X factor to the entire attack. And Pablo coming in from the middle, getting himself that first goal. Niagara up 1-0. I mean, I think calling Austin X Factor is exactly right. The man's been playing out of his mind all day right now. Has what a shot! Here to shot plays the top right off the crossbar, goes for the rebound. Might just try and catch the goalkeeper here, but tag twenty will manage to avoid it. Sienna not going down to goal anytime soon. Now it's their turn for the counter attack, but three whiffs on the ball. I mean, it's a no man's land right now. Mitt though will catch the rebound, will get the counter attack in for Niagara. In comes the pass, mid towards the middle. Kind of goes right towards goal, but tag twenty definitely ready for it. Pablo. Hits it up in the air. Oz is ready for it. Going to hit it towards the corner. Actually, hits it towards the wall. Just going to go for it again. Little bit of a floater towards the left. Not going to be too much of a shot. Pablo just going to keep the ball forward. Doesn't have any boost either. Tag 20. Trying to get another tap. Doesn't work. McFallen has to go for the 50-50. Ends up winning it. Ball towards the middle again. Oz starting it up. Oh, Chips it over two players. Oz, you're nuts, my man. 2.50 left on the clock. And Niagara off the back of a beautiful offensive performance from Austin. The entirety of the Niagara team. They're up 2-0. And you can look at the mechanics that Austin's pulling out right now. The air dribbles, the flicks. There, it's going to be the air roll shot, actually allowing him to just reach a little bit higher on that ball, beating the opponents to it. It's little differences like that, but this man is making every play required Again? to score goals on the Sienna team. And that's not to be said that Sienna don't stand a chance in this match. Sienna are playing great. Like you mentioned, they are making the most out of every attacking opportunity that they get. It feels like they're scoring nearly every time. Uh -oh. Niagara really need to step it up on the defensive end. But if Sienna can't even get the ball out of their own goal right now, it might be bad news bears. Oh, tag 20 starts it up again. He's going to go for a pass off the corner. Going to go up towards the post. Great shot by, uh, or a great save by Ost. But still, another opportunity. Tag 20 doing a good job. Not letting that ball pass the midfield area. But he's not able to control it. Ost with just a simple clear. Turn up God. Wait, he what? misses the ball. And Pablo, he tried to compensate for it. But instead, both of them, they were just thrown off. Pablo didn't get the shot in on goal. He's low on boost. Still trying to pressure the ball. Pre presses it towards middle, too. Tag 20 and 50-50. He ends up winning it. Still on the attacking side. Great stuff from McFallen. And now a counterattack. Turn up towards goal. Oss with a save. Shots, saves, assist. What can't Oss do right now? Hell, he's going to go for the air dribble. The cross is in. Tag 20 for the save. Pablo can't hit the shot. And I feel like it's really just been the Sienna defenders missing balls that's been throwing them off big time, but it's paying off for Sienna. Niagara still only a two-goal gap. This is closable for Sienna. 
Absolutely, but it's not, it just doesn't come down to, you know, simple misses and whatnot. Because whenever you do miss the ball, of course, that's the ball going behind you. But that also messes up the rotation. At least one of your teammates is going to be off their line, off the rotation cycle. So at that point, it's going to come down to your teammates to try to switch things up. Tag 20, that was a little bit difficult for a back pass. But Turn of God ended up stopping it. But then again, there goes that rotation. It's gone. Everyone from Sienna is back in the corner. And Pablo, he just gets this simple tap in towards the goal. Beautiful work from Mitt, just getting that center. McFallen not going to be able to follow it and that's going to be our goal again niagara almost solidifying their lead at this point with just about a minute left yeah that back pass from tag 20 works exactly the same way that you were talking about those misses it forces his teammate to be off their line to have to play in the goal get a rough touch on the ball and all of a sudden you're down a player because you've had to over rotate one to compensate and you've got an open goal great job by niagara though realizing the opportunity and taking advantage of the pressure McFallen gonna miss. In comes Tag. The ball is forward again. Turnip has to stop it, but Aust, great ball control. Plays around with the ball, but McFallen, he's actually gonna backflip right towards you. He's gonna stop it. He's still playing around with it too much. In comes Turnip. He can get the shot. Aust, he gets the save, though. He taps it perfectly to the left side of the goalpost. And again, 20 seconds left. This has to be it. At this point, Sienna just looking for consolation goals. But ladies and gents, this is BO5. This is do or die playoffs. There's no double elimination. There's another goal for Mitt. Putting the nail in the coffin. Niagara, they're going to be going up 2-0 in the series. So, Niagara have their match point. They're feeling good. They haven't lost a match this week, which is right. great for them. But Sienna is staring them in the barrel at yet another 3-0 right now. What mentally do they have to do in this third game to turn this one around? I feel like it's mostly the communication, but it's hard to communicate when you are feeling down. You're feeling a little tilted, and this has to start getting to you. I, I think they just have to focus. It almost seems as if, you know, Niagara, they're throwing so many cars towards these balls. And, I mean, Sienna at this point, they're, they're getting confused. They're getting overwhelmed. So I think at this point... A little bit more aggression would help them out a lot, especially towards that midfield, to try to thwart the Niagara defense, you know, early, or Niagara offense early. Um, also, at least, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking that, you know, at least some sort of presence towards midfield to shut down Pablo. Because, yes, we're talking about Austin at this point, but you guys are looking at the stats. Pablo is the finisher for this team. He has himself three goals so far. He just kind of straggles al along that midfield, letting Austin Mitt kind of play along, kind of pick and prod at the rotation of this team. So I think at this point, their main goal should be to at least have some sort of midfield presence, whether offense or defense, because we're just not seeing it at all. And I feel like the one thing that we can really highlight right now for Niagara is just that shot to goal ratio. Three goals and three shots for Pablo, one goal and two shots for Aust, and Mitt making his only shot into a goal. It's just so consistent. The defense and goalkeeping from Sienna just hasn't been there tonight, and Niagara are picking and choosing their shots very, very well. They're deciding, okay, here we want to pass, here we want to play off the backboard, we want to look to apply more pressure, and then finally pulling the trigger the second that CNR out of position. At this point, ladies and gents, we are waiting for our next game, and things, I mean, things are just getting closer and closer as we go through, and again, Siena, they made quite the run so far. I mean, again, yet both of these teams, they're 1-7. This, this is essentially our, our qualifier game. For, for the actual playoffs, for the top eight playoffs. So one of these two teams, they're going to have to recollect themselves. I think they'll have another opportunity come a week from now when Power Series ends up coming around. So this isn't it. Off season, there is no off season for either one of these teams. It may be the end of their EGF run, but Ooh. my lord, they're still going to have more chances to be in it. But let's not talk about semantics, ladies and gents. This game isn't over. This series isn't over. Starting off in game three, we already start off with a goal from Tag 20. I did miss it. I'm not going to lie, but it was a pretty good shot. <laughs> Up off the back wall, Tag 20 getting really aggressive. And I feel like that's what I want to see out of Sienna. When you start seeing teams go for 50-50s like that, going for aggression like that, it says something about their confidence. It says they want to turn up the speed. And that's so huge in Rocket League. Being able to make those quick decisions and being confident in them so you can act on them quickly is going to win you balls like that, where you're going to just outright beat your opponents to them. Nets Sienna a goal. Now Nets them a lead that they need to try and hold on to here. 
All right, in comes a cheeky chip here. But Tag 20 is going to go up in the air early. And Pablo actually being proactive on the front line. Going to leave it over to us. It's going to hit the post. McFallen has to clear. He's not going to do so. Mid going to be able to get an easy goal off the front. Niagara, even though Sienna was able to get a cheeky goal off the beginning, Mitt gets oh. an even cheekier one. And I have McFallen. Feels backflip, man. <laughs> uh, it's the classic Rocket League conundrum. He's trying to reach up for that ball, but I'll tell you what, that backflip barely gains you any altitude. Whiffs on it. Niagara even up to score 1-1. One, one. They're searching for a second. Austin off the back wall goes for the double oh. touch. Not quite there. Leaves it for Mitt, who plays it out wide. Pablo now here to receive in Niagara. Just not relenting on this pressure right now. Absolutely, and you still have mid on the middle line. Love this rotation, period. I was talking about Pablo being kind of that X factor over to the midfield, but it seems as if, I mean, they're they're just rotating players in and out. I mean, that's that's how you need to go. Pablo is now more on the front lines. You now have Mitt in the back lines ready for these shots. And you see right there, he actually goes for it. And then Pablo, he rotates all the way back. Love this from Niagara so far. But Sienna, we haven't seen even a showcase so far in terms of their attacking, you know, strategy. So maybe that could come in play in just a little bit. It almost seems as if Tag 20 is just on his own in some of these attacks. Oh, man. I mean, Tag 20 has been almost enough earlier on in these matches, but the later they go, the less and less these counterattacks are Ooh, going Pablo. to work for Sienna. They need to start finding those team plays and finding them now. There's only three minutes left right now. It could be three minutes to just being the end of their day. Absolutely. It's still tied, however, so maybe we could see some more magic from Tag 20 or maybe see his teammates step up in terms of assists. We just haven't seen any of it so far. Tag 20, he's had his moments, but even then, he can't be all over the field. His teammates still stuck towards goal. Turn up, ready for the save, but instead, he's going to be able to go on the attack. He's going to go into 50-50 against us. Us doesn't actually go, uh, go for it. He actually decides to go back on defense. Beautiful decision-making from us, oh, and that's no. going to be a goal. Unfortunate as Mitt... He actually goes for the shot towards the ground, more or less towards the corner. And Tag 20, he decides to try to get the clear, but it's off times. Niagara going to get a 2-1. At right at the halfway mark, Niagara, they just need another half a game to get another 3-0 on the week. And I can't help but feel like Tag 20 is trying to do a lot of things on his own right now. You can tell. If he had a little bit more confidence in his teammates there, he wouldn't have gone for that ball, just allowed it to roll back into the corner, understanding, okay, my teammate's going to get it. That's a great position for us to be in. But he tries to make the save himself and gets hard punished for it. Now, Niagara back on the attack. Bob wow. The finish. Oh, just whiffs, though. Played back into the corner by Sienna. Tag 20, searching for this air dribble out. Going to go for the flip onto the underside Good of the flip. ball. Trying to give it a little bit more air time. I've been falling, though. Can't quite receive it. The Niagara defender will be there for the save. McFallen has had some pretty rough positioning in terms of, you know, Tag 20's attacks. I feel as if, if you know, McFallen were to play just a teensy tiny bit more back towards the midfield, it would be able to kind of collect the rebounds. But instead, the rotation is going to come in. Pablo actually going nuts on this pass. And right before the ball ends up passing through the goalposts, Mitt is there to get the touch. Niagara, 3-1. to one. There's so much confidence in their teammates from the Niagara side. It's winning them so many balls. Just knowing that your teammate's going to be there, that you can commit that much boost into just getting a cross off from Pablo. Oh, no, Niagara. This ball stands. That's a right big mistake. Tag 20's got the shot. That's in. Nobody in for the save. Slow balls in Tag 20. Brings us one goal closer to a tie game with one minute 41 left on the clock. Yeah, big mistake. I mean... You had the two players, you had Pablo and Mitt towards the middle. They did get into a little bit of a miscommunication. And Aust, he simply didn't have the boost or the positioning ready to get that ball cleared. So simply, it just had to depend on fundamentals based off of no boost to try to get that ball cleared. So, ball ended up being left for tag 20. But here comes another attack. Aust, try to reaffirm that lead. Tries to go into 1v1 against Turnip. Turnip ends up winning. Ball still towards the corner, and Pablo's actually going to miss. Here comes a counterattack. McFallen off the wall. Going to go for it. Has to bump it one more time, but mid. Going to pinch it towards the corner, and that's a perfect stop. It is. Now they get to play on this counterattack, and Aust has the ball. What is this man going to do? Goes for the 50-50, pinches it up in the corner. This is taking so much time off the clock here for Sydney. What is going on? Time that they need. It's in no man's land. What? Mitt could be there for the finish. Turn up, though. Just in time for the save. Man, I mean, 
talk about miscommunication. I mean, Sienna pulls a little bit of their own. All three players going for the ball towards the corner, and they simply just couldn't. Oh, just couldn't get it out. Pablo with a floater towards goal. Tag 20, going to be able to clear. They have 45 seconds to try to get one goal to force this into overtime, but instead, McFallen not going to be able to collect that off the wall and off the 50-50. Beautiful 50-50 from Mitt. Us is going to be there once again, being the aerial ace of this squad, Niagara, 4-2, and Sienna, they have 40 seconds to keep their season alive. My guys out here playing leapfrog with the Sienna defenders, beating them to balls that should rightfully be theirs, and he's looking for another one, goes for the double touch, wow. oh, but saves his own shot! Uh, now an opportunity for all in one. <laughs> <laughs> Give it, I'm confused. Tag 20, gonna hit it towards the corner, Us, beautiful clear. Still going to have to go for some more, though. Turn of God. He does have a little bit of boost, but he's going to stay patient. But they have to attack. 20 seconds left, and they need two goals. Ball. It gets oh, cleared. That's not going to go in, but that's so much time. That's easily eight seconds, ten seconds off the clock. Ball is still in the front field. Tag 20 starts it off. Five seconds. This has to be it. Tag 20. Oh, Hail Mary shot, and he's going to get it in. Two seconds left. Sienna, can they do it? They've got time. Any amount of time right now is enough for Rocket League. This ball stays up in the air. It's not touching the ground. And until it does, Sienna are going to still be in this one. But that's a tough order. It's going to go for the kickoff. Ball oh, no! Second left on the clock, and it's perfectly done by Niagara. They take the win. They take the series 3-0. They're going to continue on in this bracket. My lord. Great work from Niagara. They look like... I guess you could say the, it, an awaken team at this point. They look like a totally different team from earlier this season. Niagara came into this week with just the hopes of getting a consolation win against Manhattan and, I mean, hopefully getting this W against Siena. And mission accomplished. And look at this, ladies and gents. Look at the chat right now. Watch out, UTA. We're coming for you. Oz leaving his mark on the server. Oz leaving his mark in the tournament. We're going to see Niagara facing, uh, facing off against UTA in just about an hour but ladies and gents we're getting into top eight area we're gonna start off in our quarterfinals very very soon it's gonna start off with maris versus canisius as soon as we can we're gonna go into a very small break thank you so much to egf for having us so far we're gonna be here for the next couple of hours taking you guys throughout the entirety of this rocket league playoff bracket we'll be right back
ladies and gentlemen we are back and we're starting off our top eight with a pretty good matchup for you guys here we got the red foxes maris facing off against canisius ladies and gents my name is up and i'm joined here by my good old buddy door casts and uh run us through this one door because uh, i know i know you've been looking at the standings you know th this is this is as middle of the table as we can go well, yeah, we're going to be starting out here four seed up against 50. This is bound to be one of the closest matches of these quarterfinals. Maris College sitting at five and three right now. Canisius at four and four, but I don't think those records being different really says too much here. Maybe hand Maris a slight edge, but having watched both these teams play, I can't help but assume this is going to be a pretty close matchup. Canisius has their off days, though. Maris seems pretty consistent from what I've seen out of them. They're solid players, but Canisius, if they can show up on the day, they stand a solid, solid chance at winning this match. It's going to be a good one, Gus, but we got to just head straight into the match to find out what's going to happen. Absolutely, friendo. Looks like everything should be ready on the server. So what are you, what are you looking for at this point? Because I know you've watched both teams in the past. You just mentioned it. In terms of uh, aggressiveness, in terms of rotations, in terms of players, who should we look? Who should we be looking out for? So Maris across the board is going to be an extremely strong team mechanically and very solid as far as just Rocket League basics go. Canisius are going to be playing fast and they're going to be able to keep up, but it often punishes them in either over rotations or just under mechanically performing, and that's where this aggression's coming out already. We see they're starting to lay down that pressure onto the goal. Their captain, I'm Stuff, already in the back. Already gets in towards goal. A humble potato. We saw him show up the other day. Same thing with with uh, GLXI, Glixy. <laughs> Don't really know how to pronounce his name just yet. Nah, you got oh, it. No. Oh, oh no! Oh no! The floater Glixie gets away with murder. All right, so a, a very simple floater, but even then, he didn't even flip midair. He just kind of held down, he just held down square and just went for it, and it just goes right on in, bottom right corner, and Canisius actually off to a lead. I mean, I think we can admit that that was definitively going to just be an error on Maris' part, a pretty relatively easy save for the goalkeeper. Jumps too early, though, doesn't have any boost to get to the ball on time. The flip doesn't take him there. Now, all of a sudden, they're down one goal, and they've got to start to find it back. Tones, though, does have the counterattack. Two of Kanisha's defenders, though, over-rotate. Leave the shot open. Z-Ball plays it in towards the corner. Goes through the pinch across oh! the goal, and Tones finishes it off. Yeah, great one-two play over to the corner. Z-Ball, he was already ready for the attack. And Humble Potato, actually, he gets bumped off by Tones. So no one's actually going to be in goal at that time. So good play just from Tones, period. Just keeping up that tempo. And there you go. Just a minute in, both teams, they already have a goal. Oh, wait! Oh, wait! Oh, my! Tones popping off in the past 10 seconds. I mean, Cypher, he just goes up for the kickoff, but that's a relatively high kickoff, one of the higher I've seen. Just go in for a goal. And Tones, he was ready for it with a boost. He gets the goal. That's 2-1. to one. And we saw this earlier on this week. Tones is such an integral part of of this Maris team they beat Quinnipiac University earlier on this week and it was tones all over the field the man's an absolute menace yet he can't be back all the time the shot thing Glixie looks for the finish not quite there for Kanisha however ball position handed over to Maris in the hands of Zeeball searching for his teammate but can't quite find that flick in time now the counterattack wait here Kanisha. comes the pass I'm stuffed I'm from I'm stuffed Stuffs it into the back of the net. There you go. <laughs> Double tap coming in from Stuff too. That ball was actually going to dribble right on out off the post. But Stuff, just his trajectory off the jump, helped him stuff it on in, as you said. And there you go. I mean, Canisius, they're showing signs of life, too. Both of these teams showing an attacking prowess. Yeah. Hi oh, my! Kyfer, come on, man. Cypher. Cypher, <laughs> yeah. Happens, happens. The pressure's being applied by Maris. This oh! To go in. There's no boost on the side of Kanish, you just can't keep up with these high-flying Maris players. <laughs> Absolutely, my friend. And look at that. Tones, again, acting as both enforcer and striker. Gets the ball in towards the middle, and he just goes directly into a bump attempt over to the corner, holding down I'm Stuff. 
And there you go. I mean, again, Maris on the front lines. Their X Factor, I mean, that we've seen so far has been Tones. But great assist so far from, uh, from Ball. And their other teammate, Cypher. Cypher, again, just keeping it towards the middle. Again, oh, going to dribble up towards the middle. Ah, but that's cleared. So there's something that Maris is doing on their attacks that we're not really getting to see with the camera here. And that's boost control. They're applying so much pressure by just laying this ball up off the backboard. They're buying so much oh, time that they can go and take every one of Kanisha's boost pads like it was their own. And then Kanisha's are stuck in their goal. Zero boost, zero way to chase this ball around, zero way to actually make a save. And that's where these shots are coming out from Maris. It's great. Oh, no. Great oh, no. Oh, Tone's still in the back line. Glixie with a shot. Going to try to tap it towards the middle, but Tones is ready for the for the clear away. And he's still going for it. Pass towards the middle. Humble Potato has to clear it away, and he does. Good movement. And now in comes Stuff. Going to have to tap it towards goal. No one's going to be there for the pass. Humble Potato, though, goes for the rebound. Not quite going to catch it. Two whiffs here from Kanishas, and that's a wide open goal. Cypher goes for the finish. But Glixie gets there just in time. Zebel now down for the finish off the roof. He's got the flip in his back pocket. Not going to use it. Allow the ball to drop to Tones. He takes a shot. I'm Stuff, though. Makes a save. The pressure still on here from Mare's side. Oh no, the, the whiff! Unrelenting in the finish. No way! Let you go in, but Cypher, how do you miss that man? Now, I'm stuck. <laughs> Finally gets the rebound, but Canisius have no boost to do anything here. In comes a shot, Canisius. Like you said, boost management has been tough for them so far. I mean, that, I mean, realistically, boost management was tough for both of these teams, but it seems like Maris, they've, you know, uh, they've come alive in terms of their rotation in a sense. Tones still in the back lines. He's able to clear, allowing his teammates to rotate and get themselves a little bit of boost. And Tones, he just doesn't stop. Somehow, he's able to not only clear the ball, not only contest Humble Potato, but he's just ready for the mistake. Off the wall, he gets the flip and the aerial. And Maris off to a, yet another commanding lead. That's 4-2. to two. Man, I'm trying to think of a place on this field where Tones can't find or threaten a shot right now. Oh, the they're shot! Like Wait! What? Angle, and he does it again! How did he even get that shot? Of course, there goes the kickoff. Oh, the pinch! Just goes directly towards goal, right below the crossbar. Tones is going nuts. Tone's playing out of his mind right now. An even game taken all the way to 5-2 right now for this Marist side. All they need to do is just park the bus. If they can do that, Kanisha stand very little chance of putting these three goals into the back of the net. It's all thanks to Tone's right now. Honestly, there hasn't been much in the way of assists. There hasn't been much in the way of... Uh, what a pass! From Marist and Cypher. It's going to be <laughs> doing it with the teamwork. Marist, one player or three, they're going to be making a play regardless. Oh, my... So you saw right there, Z-Ball stopping the attack. Tones is already in the front lines off the whiff, and Cypher is just over towards the middle. Also, I said earlier that that was a pinch. Might have been a pinch, might not have been a pinch. I don't know. <laughs> Something of the sort, but all I know is that that just two beautiful passes and shots coming in from Tones. And just in a, in a matter of minutes, we see ourselves a Marist coming off to an extremely commanding lead. And this should just be about it for this game. And now we have Canisius, all of them just trying to go towards that front line, just trying to get some sort of consolation goal. And actually, Glixie yep. with, a, with a shot towards the corner, and uh, it's going to end up being an own goal towards the side of Maris. But, uh, but yes, they would have to make up three goals in the next couple of seconds, so they're not going to be able to do so. Again, still a BO5, so still tons of time for Canisius to get back into this one. But Marist looking strong. Tones apparently just as good at scoring on his own goal as he may be the opposing teams, but that's not going <laughs> to lose in the game quite yet. 6-3 to three is a great scoreline here. And note, goal differential, not really going to matter here as much as it did in the regular season. We saw a lot of these teams end up on relatively similar scorelines as far as games won and games lost go, especially that 8th and ninth seed both sitting at 1-7. and seven. And so it was goal differential and just game differential that made up that difference. Now, though, that's all out the window. You can afford to lose games like this if you're Canisius. You need to understand this next game starting 0-0. Fresh slate for them, and I know that they have it in to pull this one back. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, mental fortitude is going to be a big one. I mean, you mentioned it's playoffs. It's do or die. Each one of these games, it could potentially lead to their season ending. So, again... At this point, we're, we're just going to have to see a little bit more from Canisius. I mean, we saw 
I, I guess you can see glimpses from really everyone. We saw tons of saves coming out from uh, I'm Stuff and Glixie. And uh, goals on everyone. 1-1-1 one, one, one down the line. Glixie, I'm Stuff, Humble Potato, all getting themselves at least something there. But again, Marist... I mean, we, we didn't know it before. I mean, we, we kind of did. We've been kind of paying attention to, to Maris throughout the season. But little did we know is that Tones would actually just explode in this set. Four goals, two assists, even a save in the back lines. He's just going nuts. Now the question is, is how much can Tones keep that up? We saw good team play out of Maris. It net them, I believe, one or two goals. But... For the majority of the game, it really was the Tones show. This man was pulling off shots from his own half, from right next to the opposing goal, from midfield, off the walls, off the roof. He was all over the place, putting goals in the back of the net for probably a minute or two straight, but you can't rely on that for another 10 minutes of game time, for another 15 minutes of game time if Kanishas can take a game off you. you got to start forming those team plays if you're Marist, or else Kanishas is going to start to gain a little bit more of that momentum back. They've got the clean slate. They can start building it up again, and if... Tones can't do that exact same thing. Kanishas can threaten a lot more pressure right now. All right, so it looks like Tones hey, got a little bit too hype. Got a little bit too hype, and he actually, you know, uh, ended up leaving the server. <laughs> so uh, looks like we do have to restart things real quick. But you know, in the meantime, I mean, I don't, I don't even know what we can sit on in terms of that game because, again, we we pointed out tones, we pointed out the fact that Maris is actually pretty good on these counterattacks thus far. I would actually like to see what Kanishas has to actually pull off in this next game, in a sense, because we haven't seen, you know, kind of their structure of rotation just yet. We've seen their counterattacks, we've seen a couple of one-off goals, but I mean, they're exactly that. They're just one-offs in a sense. We saw the Florida at the beginning. We saw individual passes coming in. We even saw an own goal come in for the third goal. So I think at this point, Canisius, I think they, they just have to showcase a little bit more just fundamental Rocket League coming into this next game, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah, I feel as far as rotations and fundamental Rocket League goes, they're playing fairly well. They're just getting outpaced by Maris. It's mechanics and that boost control that we talked about earlier. The fact that Marist have been taking their boost pads while they're on the attack has been huge for the little amount of time that Kanishas actually get to spend on the attack. They have no boost when they're doing it. And that's not because bad boost management on their own behalf. It's because Marist are just taking it away from them and taking every last inch that they can get from this Kanishas side while they're on their own attack. All right, looks like we, we did end up getting... Our second server. And now everyone is here. <laughs> Thank goodness. Even Tones. I mean, I even saw someone in chat just like, you know what? He had that game, dropped the mic, and left the server. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. Oh, the one-off. Again, off the middle, off the kickoff. We almost get ourselves a goal. But, uh, but yeah, that was, uh, you know, quite the quite the Chad move in a sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing. That's one way to call it. Z-Ball, though. <laughs> Up for the shot here for Maris. Own potato has to make this save. Zebo just whips the shot. No way! To finish as always. Can't quite find the back of the net, however, as the ball bounces out. And Kanishas get a little bit of reprieve here. Ball's going to go up the field, but Z-Ball will be there to receive. Now off the roof, flicks it over. It's going to bounce off the back wall, set up perfectly for a teammate that is not there. Kanishas finally on the counterattack. Ball's going to dribble on in. Tones is... Ooh, Tones was waiting. Kind of waiting for the approach of the other team. And then he just executes right towards the wall. Z-Ball. Trying to get a pass over to Cypher. Cypher still trying to stop it. Tone still over to the midfield. Acting oh, as kind of the anchor. And there you go. He's going to end up stopping. I'm Stuff. Shot from Glixie. Going to hit the crossbar. Stuff in the right position. But he stopped. No momentum going towards that ball. Ball is just going to go right towards the middle. And Z-Ball. Going to be on the front lines trying to get a counterattack. Bumps it towards the middle. Tones with a bump down and beautiful shot from Tones. That was just a pixel or two off from hitting the crossbar, but he just floats it on in. Beautiful play from Marist. Really tough angle here, being above the crossbar, having to use the bottom side of your car that hits the ball a little bit softer. Just lays it gently into the goal. Beautiful redirect and great team play from Maris. This is exactly what we want to see out of them if they want to start securing more oh, the than shot. just that initial victory. Oh my! Out from Humble Potato, half field tones anything you can do, I can do better. He says, reaches deep in his pockets and finds what he needs. Yeah, that was just a straight up shot off the corner, and that 
almost a carbon copy of the gold that we saw from Tones, like you mentioned. And there you go, Canisius. They do get the one off once again, but again, I'm just waiting uh -oh. to see what uh -oh. their rotation might oh, be like. No! But are you choking me? Again, Maris. I mean, you literally made this joke earlier. Whatever you can do, I can do better. Tones goes for the pinch off the kickoff, and the kickoff ball just ends up in the net. Are you kidding me? You just gotta blow that one off here, Kanish. That just sucks. Like, there's nothing you could have done about it. I mean, the kickoff maybe could have been better, but the second that kickoff is over, it's it's done. It's done and dusted. Your team is not in a position to make that save. You can't be expecting the ball to go that way. And uh, all of a sudden, it's Maris back with the 2-1 lead. Kanish is oh, oh, showing that they can play, showing they can fight. They've got the cross. Searching for a teammate now, but Z-Ball will be there for the save. Tone's playing it out now. Maris on the counter attack. Kanish is desperately scrambling back to try and stop this ball, and it's going to be... The teammate, Glixie, I believe, still staying in goal. Humbly defending as long oh, as... Oh, no, the double! Oh, Wait! Shot. No way! Glixie! He tried to go for the save, but instead, his late response ends up being the own goal for Maris. Look at that! No, oh, Glixie! No. And he realized a little bit too late, too. Oh, no! That's unfortunate. Calculated, in a sense, of course. <laughs> and it is just Again, no! Tones off the kickoff. The humble potatoes mash. Glixy looks done right now, and I'm stuffed having a real hard time with these kickoffs right now. Tones! It, it, where can't this man score from? He's doing it on kickoffs, he's doing it mid game, he's hitting it from his half, putting him in from over top of the goal, and two kickoff goals in one. There, there is a large degree of strat strategy that does actually go into these kickoffs. Well, of course. And how well Tones is executing them is really impressive. But it's just Canisius not managing to take advantage of every opportunity here. And Maris doing exactly the opposite. Punishing every little mistake that Canisius has made. Before we reach the halfway point of the game, I mean, Maris continuously just barraging that, you know, that front end of the field. And I don't know, it, it, this is just weird at this point because we haven't seen Canisius break through the rotation of Maris just yet in the back lines. We haven't even seen them make an attack oh, period tones. in this game, but oh my god. I mean, Canisius, they were on the rotation back, but instead Tones with a Kobe shot towards mid goes off the wall, floats his way towards middle, just gets a nice slick shot towards the top left. And top left bins, ladies and gents. Kanishas, they can't reach it. And uh, and Tone's just looking like an MVP right now. I mean, he looks, feels, plays, and does everything like an MVP. Don't get me wrong, Z-Ball and Cypher have been consistent for this team. And it really does form a nice backbone of just consistency. But Maris, it's been the Tone's show as far as shots go. The man's on four goals, five shots, two saves. He's all over the place right now. And his teammates are doing a great job of supporting that. Blixie has to get the clear. Cypher going to be ready for the shot, but that's going to go off wide right. And Z-Ball still going for it. Get a pressure at forward that's going to allow his teammates to get the boost and actually rotate back towards the front. Tones with a pass towards his teammates. Glixie's actually, actually going to be ready for the pass over to Humble Potato. And he's still forcing it through. Z-Ball helping out on the clear. I'm Stuff, stuffing it back in again. Uh, oh no, Humble Potato, he misses. And in comes the shot. Glixie trying to just drag it in towards the middle. Humble Potato with a shot, but great early save from Z-Ball. Stuff can't get it through either. Canisius, I mean, that, that's, that was their first kind of rotation break opportunity, but they just couldn't do it. And there's something to be said for confidence here. Tones has instilled so much into his team that now they're taking really aggressive 50-50s, really confident 50-50s, and they're winning them because of that. You see two members heavily playing in the offensive half right now, ready to challenge every single ball that Canisius let out of their grasp. And it's so punishing to Canisius who are playing so timid, so scared. They're shaken up right now, and they just don't know what to do about this Marist offense. They're shook. That That's how, that's all you got to say. They're, they're shook at the moment. And, uh, and again, there you go. Humble Potato tries to drag it out alone there. And I'm Stuff tries to follow it up, but he also misses. In comes Z-Ball trying to stuff it. Uh, 30 seconds left. Should be done and dusted. Maybe we could get a nail in the coffin. Maris still trying to force it forward. Cypher, actually a pretty good pass over to the middle. Z-Ball, yet another one. Hits the back. Ooh, hits the backboard. In comes Tones, but he has to go in a 50-50 against two other players. 
And that Humble Potato is trying for this one right now. He's trying, trying to get one more touch in. Humble Potato up. But ironically, oh, it's glitzy. all going to be gravy for Canisius right now as they search for the ball on the ground. And for game two victory, taking us to match point, Gus. <sighs> don't don't really know don't really know what to tell you, man. I mean, I I think Canisius they they just oh wow, maybe we could be getting a little bit more of an X factor from Canisius. We see here from I'm stuff, you know, this team is actually going to be making a substitution soon, so they're actually going to be taking out Glixie in for their sub. Don't really know who their sub is just yet, but that could change up the composition for the team. This is I was about to say, really they, they need something. Because Glixie's super integral to what I've seen from right. Canisius all season. I'm curious that it's him they're subbing out. I feel like I've seen him sub out Humble Potato before, but Glixie going here is interesting. Uh, but they're going to be bringing in Lord Bat, but we got to see him earlier this week. Right. Man can pop off. Canisius effectively has this four-man starting roster. You could see any three of them on pretty much any day. And they're going to perform consistently, which is nice. But I think you need more than consistent here for Marius. You just need to pop off right now. All right, just communicating uh, to the players. I think we should be all good. Yeah, it's it's difficult. First of all, the the sub process they actually made it real quick. Glixy immediately when the game ended, got off the server. Lord Bapo immediately joined after, so it, it seems as if they got everything down to a T. Because this isn't the first time this week that they've made this specific substitution. But I don't really know what would actually be throwing them off in terms of their dynamic with Glixy. Because like you mentioned, I mean, Glixy has been sort of that pivotal part to the attack, to kind of that midfield whenever they do have that opportunity. But we just haven't seen those opportunities, period, from Canisius. So maybe at this point, we could see Lord Bapo be a little bit more of a staple in their defense. Something that they desperately need against these attacks from, uh, from Tone. So, yeah. Who knows at this point? I, I'm excited to see what happens. But again, ladies and gents, this is our best of five. And Maris, they need one more game to move on into the semifinals. I mean, I really do like the sub choice here. Bringing in a player, trying to cancel that negative momentum that Kanishas have going on right now could be a huge play. But it's all going to matter about this beginning of the game. This first few seconds, the first goal matters so much. It's going to decide whether or not Kanishas get to keep that momentum gain or whether Marist are just going to start to run this game over again. Tones already laying on the aggression. Absolutely. In comes a shot from Cypher. I'm self actually went for the clear too. So a little bit of a double commit. I'm a potato trying to clear, but instead it's going to be a shot from Cypher right from their own opposition's wall. I'm stuff trying to go for the stuff again, trying to clear out that ball. Z ball still trying to force, but he has to clear it away. I mean, if, if we were to see Canisius get this first goal and actually hold on to it, like actually try to park the bus, that would be a huge momentum shift for this squad. But pressure oh, stuff. doesn't stop no. ever. Oh my, I'm oh. stuck. He just drives right under the ball and tones again. A floater shot is going to end up in a goal for Marist. Yeah, I'm stuff. Can't react quickly enough. Couldn't. Pull that left turn quite fast enough. Now Maris back in the driver's seat, a position that they are very familiar with today. But they've got a long road ahead, and this is their only their first match. They've got some tough teams ahead of them, and I'm not going to say that this means they're going to win later, but it definitely bodes well going up against those big three teams. They're probably going to be playing either RIT, University of Delaware, or UT Arlington in their next match. I'm not sure how this bracket lines up quite for them. I can't look right now, but... Right. I've got to say, it bodes well how consistently they're playing. They're managing to keep this aggression on. I remember earlier on in the series, I was questioning, can Tones do this all series? Well, yes, he can. And that <laughs> bodes so well for this Maris side. Great clear from Tones. Stuff, he was about to make that pass, but Tones, just with a backflip, he was able to clear it away. And now here comes Tones again, tries to get the pass forward. A little bit more of a clear from Cypher, but in comes an attack from Lord Bapo. But instead, you still have Tones in the front line stopping every attack. Humble Potato, he has to bump his way through Tones to actually, you know, stop Tones uh -oh. in a sense. 
But uh, a little bit of miscommunication there from Maris. Ball is middle. Lord Bapo can't go for it, but instead he's going to wait for the attack from Cypher. He's going to go for it again. Ball towards the middle. Ball towards Humble Potato. Goes for the shot, but Tones is there for the clear. Lord Bapo has to get the clear, and he does. Halfway through the game so far, Maris, they have not stopped, but it seems like Canisius, they, fin they figured out just a little bit more on how to stop that midfield. We're halfway through this game, only up 1-0 as Maris is looking like the best start that we've seen. A shot Canisius from Cypher. Could be made worse by Cypher. Shot. Shots up, shots over. But I'm stuffed there for the clear tones. Always around. I feel like we're saying it. Uh, the phrase tones is there, but tones is there, but tones is doing X, but tones is doing Y. That's really been the name of the game. It's like a horror movie. Everywhere they turn, that's all they can see is tones. <laughs> okay. I understand. Okay. Okay. Maybe maybe it would be like a more like a... Like a Jason Voorhees type thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it yeah, just doesn't stop. He doesn't, doesn't stop. behind him, you know? Right, exactly. <laughs> oh, nice double tap from Z-Ball. In comes Tones again, but he's actually going to get a rare miss. But instead, Cypher still helping out that attack, trying to keep the ball forward. In comes an actual opportunity from Canisius. Ball towards the middle, but Z-Ball is there again. Tones with a double tap. In comes no Stuff. Way. Stuff has to get the stop, and he does. In comes another shot from Tones. Going to hit the post. Cypher tries to get the stop, but it doesn't happen. And another shot from Zeepo. The rotation destroyed on, on Kinesis' side. And Maris again picking and prodding at this attacking side. And that's going to be another goal. A minute and 30 left. If Maris, if Maris can keep this lead, they're in semis. Amazing rotations there from Maris to allow them to keep the pressure on, allow them to keep playing that ball off the crossbar and take away the boost critically from Canisius. Now they have to play a little bit on the back foot here. Canisius has control of the boost, has that attack that they want. Nime Stuff is going to make a shot out of it, gets one off and hold potato there for the rebound to lay one up. This defense from Maris is solid. Their boost management now, holding on to as much as possible while still making these saves has been huge for them and is netting them a counter attack with pretty much half full boost bars, which is pretty much all you can be asking for right about now. Pass towards the middle. Lord Bapo can't get can't get a tire on it. And I think at this point, the rest of their team, ball was more or less a no man's land. And Tone somehow is able to stop the momentum towards middle. But in comes item stuff. Has to get an attack forward. But instead of passing it to his teammates, he just tries to go in a 1v1 against Tones. And you don't want to see that. He's always going to stop it at this point. And 40 seconds left. Humble Potato trying to go for it. Canisius somehow just trying to break through this defense, but they just can't do it so far. Lord Bapo, he came in as a sub earlier, but we just haven't seen any attacks from him, period. And that might just be the nail in the coffin. Z-Ball waiting for the whiffs, and he does. He gets a floater on in to the center of the goal. And ladies and gentlemen, Marist, 24 seconds left to make their way into semis. Yeah, Canisius trying to relieve them of their afternoon duties right now. But Maris have held strong so far. And it's just been such a dominant matchup for Maris, considering this is right at that mid table, oh, wow. right at what we expect to be. Man. And a, a dead even game, Maris have made it anything but. I can't. Oh, man. Tone's going nuts, too. He's in a 1v2. Lord Bapo and Potato, they just can't get the angle in and. Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't really know what to say at this point. Maris dominating this entire time. We saw glimpses from Canisius, but I think the one thing that Maris did to, to you know absolutely win this game is that they just didn't let their opponents play this video game, period. Didn't let them get any attacks, didn't let them lead the the offensive area, didn't let them do anything. And Maris, at this point, this ball's gonna land, or we could get another goal, and it will. Oh, Little bit God, of style! Families, man. <laughs> Little bit of style. And Canisius has been eliminated from the EGF Season 1 playoffs. Maris, we'll see you guys in semis. What a game. Don't leave your seats quite yet, ladies and gentlemen. We saw impressive play out of Maris. I can't wait to see what they have to offer later on. But there's another matchup coming up next. It's going to be RIT, the, uh, I believe, second place team right second now. Second place, yeah. team. Yeah, U University of Delaware and them are very, very close right, right now. But nonetheless, sitting at that big top three that we're looking at, those three teams, RIT, University of Arlington, and uh, University of Delaware, that are huge players right now, going up against Manhattan. And Manhattan has had some stellar weeks. A very on-and-off team, but when they're on, 
they will absolutely stomp. And I've seen some great things out of them. I'm expecting great things out of them, and they need great things right now if they want to beat RIT. Yeah, it'll be real tough. I mean, RIT, they didn't lose a single game all this season except for this week when they lost to the number one seeded UTA. So I, I think at this point, ladies and gents, it's just going to come down to, you know, what, what kind of form Manhattan's actually in. Because one of the only teams that Niagara was able to beat this season, no, the only team that Niagara was able to beat this season in the regular season was Manhattan just this week. So Manhattan... Coming into this, you know, playoffs, not exactly too confident. So let's see how they can actually perform in this playoffs against one of the best teams in our league. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We'll be right back with our next playoff match. Like you mentioned, Manhattan's going to be next up on the board against our second seed. We'll be right back.
ladies and gentlemen we are back welcome back to the official egf channel and uh in a in a little i guess you could say you know a little web of media in a sense we're live on mixer youtube and twitch so wherever you guys are watching welcome back to the rocket league playoffs next up on stream we have ourselves rit versus the manhattan jaspers i'm joined here by the one and only door how are you doing so far my man I'm doing well. We've had great games so far. And I think especially what we've gotten to see today is just certain teams turn up, certain players as well. Niagara coming in hard. Marist and Tones. Oh, my God. Tones, man. Coming to play. Now we've got RIT versus Manhattan. And Manhattan have a hell of a task on their hands taking down this number two team. RIT only losing games here to University of Texas Arlington. And they have to do it all over again manhattan has proven they can be a threat they've got great players but it's just going to be a struggle here for manhattan as sunblaze puts one in well there you go there's already our first goal from sunblaze and i and my uh and my labels are actually incorrect at this point some of the players show up as uh as just numbers so i'll try to take you guys through it i'll, I'll reset the server you know as soon as we you know get out of this game but i'll try to catch you guys up in terms of names real quick but uh, but actually, there there's a player on the server that 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 is literally just a just, oh my god! Wait a minute, RIT already coming up to an explosive lead, but there's already a person on the server that's literally just an equation, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I mean his name's just the equation for enthalpy. Enthalpy. Delta heat is equal to MC delta temperature, but. <laughs> yeah, we're calling we DH for short. Okay, okay, I see you, I see you, Mr. Smartman. It, it's what I do. It's what you do. Right it's now, what you do. It's Jeez. what RIT do is scoring. Because they put a third one in in just under 30 seconds, man. Oh. Yeah, that's that's just nuts. I mean, I mean, this is what we expected before this game. RIT, they didn't lose a single game before this past weekend or this past week when they faced off against what is now the number one seed, UTA. Um, but, I mean, I... You even said it before, Manhattan, they're either on or, or they're off, in a sense. You know, they, they're they a very they're a very hot and cold team, and it just, it, it's a cold start. It's a cold start, and it's a very hot start from RIT, so you can't do much about that. Well, RIT is one of those teams. So we look at the top two of RIT and the University of Texas Arlington. There's something I was actually talking to the players about earlier. RIT is a huge threat to the teams beneath them. RIT plays extremely fast and extremely aggressive, and if you can't keep up, they will score goal after goal after goal after goal on you like we're seeing happen right now. Manhattan are struggling to keep up. When you look at the first seed, University of Texas Arlington, a lot of these lower-seeded teams prefer playing University of Texas Arlington because they're a lot more methodical about how they play. They're not getting greedy with the plays that they go for, and so they're generally a little bit more simple for these lower level teams to play against, but RIT oh, man. are just taking every opportunity. And if you can't keep up, then you can't punish them for when they take the wrong opportunities. And that's why we're seeing such dominance right now. But it looks like they finally broke through that rotation in a sense, very early aggression from the player over to the left. And I mean, you just had JoJo ready and ready to go for kind of the pinch goal right towards the middle. So good stuff from Manhattan, at least on that goal, but they still have a lot of work to do. They do. That two-goal deficit is going to feel infinite right now until they can get a couple more goals on the board. Prove that they can break this difference, but Sunblaze putting one more in just lengthens that gap even more, widens the difference between these two teams, and RIT look just as dominant as ever right now. Yet another one. Just, uh, we're literally two minutes in. Already a 4-1 start, and it doesn't seem like RIT is stopping anytime soon. Manhattan would need, you know, a, a, a huge momentum shift in the next couple of minutes to start. But again, that's that's usually how game ones of Rocket League go out, anyways. You know, if if you know if one team is just on, it's gonna be super hard to just stop them purely because game one is usually just for that download in a sense. Yeah, figuring out what your opponents want to do, figuring out how they want to play is key. With RIT, they're going to play one way, and that is aggressive. They're going to look to put shots on at any given point in time. And we see right now, they are just all on top of this ball, playing in that midfield, going aggressive for the shots, and they're winning them on just pure mechanical skill alone. 
And what's interesting is when you see them go up against a team like University of Texas Arlington, who can keep up with them, who can play at that pace but play more controlled, we see them really start to struggle because they can't make those aggressive plays. They can't get as greedy as they usually do as they would teams below them. And so they start to get punished a lot more. And so they'll give up goals like this one to Manhattan fairly often, but it's not nearly as often as how much they're scoring. Right. Absolutely. And I mean, it it just comes down. I mean, it, it was just the early aggression at this point to RIT. I wouldn't be surprised if they if they just parked the bus at this point. Just I mean, it's what they're doing right now. Manhattan, they are putting balls towards that blue side of the field, but they don't exactly need to do much. They have Sunblaze in the back. The rotations are pretty good. You do have Bindo. Just, I mean, it's lots of support just from this entire RIT team so far in this game. And Manhattan, j just for that one goal, they have to work so, so hard. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's 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 a hard to explain in a sense, but that 3-0 start was just already brutal. Wow, what a pass! What a pass! Sunblaze, man. Look at this ball go up, pinches it off of the wall here, downwards to his teammate, Caso. The confidence in his teammate, knowing exactly where that ball is going to be, flies straight into it. You, uh, you can believe he was going to be whiffing that one <coughs> huge, wasting a lot of boost if he didn't. But that just tells you how much confidence they have. Now an air dribble from Vino could be very dangerous. Gets a flip reset on the ball, doesn't quite get the second touch, however. And now it's Manhattan on the attack. They've got a good opportunity. They're outnumbering oh. two players, and they take advantage of it. DH shoves one into the back of the net. All right, so it does look like uh, I I I haven't figured out the uh, the naming scheme just yet, but I do have a little bit of a I guess you could say a, a key in the bottom because all of my names I I don't know if you're watching Door, but the names on my screens have all been replaced with numbers. So, for example, Moose is like number seven. Bindo is number one. So it's a uh, it's it's. Ooh, it, it's rough for me here, so I can't exactly go through names all the time, but hey, I was actually spectating Sunblaze there for a second, so he was able to get a shot right on our screen, and that was just a very simple floater right on in, and there you go. Six to two start for RIT. A quick start for RIT into the series, and honestly, this is what we can expect going on. It's basically just going to be bloody matchup after bloody matchup as long as RIT in the, are in the game. They changed the way you have to play entirely. I mean, how they're really struggling to deal with that. I feel like they're playing well, but it's just so hard to play well against a team like RIT. Their fundamentals are good, which is what's netting them a few goals. But as far as adapting to RIT's style of play, I feel like that's where it's really letting them down. Right. Now it'll be a tough period, and there you go. I mean, the rotation just gets broken, and some blaze just goes for a floater shot again. And uh, he actually just tries to stuff it on in, but instead he takes a little bit too long, you know, playing with his food in a sense. So he's not actually going to be able to get himself that goal. But with 15 seconds left, this should be done and dusted. And we might even get ourselves another goal here, but actually a pinch out from Moose. And there you go. That's, a, that's another save for Manhattan, so that's at least something. So Manhattan, at least keeping a tit for tap in the last couple of minutes oh, in this there. game. But wow, what a play. There to kind of end the game for RIT, but that's finally going to be our game, ladies and gents. RIT, 6-2 to two win in our game one. And I think we're going to go to a quick break here to try and get those numbers on your screen all fixed <laughs> up. Let Upmine restart his, uh, restart his Rocket League real quick. We'll be right back with you in just a moment.
All right, ladies and gents, we are back in it, and it seems like all of our players are ready in the server finally, and I can actually see all of the names. Big change. <laughs> thank, thank goodness. I was really hoping for you. Translating the whole numbers to name things sounded like a rough time, but oh my god, man, having a rough one. Sunblaze nearly pulled off an insane flip reset shot there. All right, there you go. So let's finally get into it. Moose with a big shot over to the middle, but instead it's going to be Casso with a quick clear. And Moose still going. DH, he goes for the bump. He goes for the demo. But even then, Manhattan not actually able to execute with a goal. But this is actually a, a much better start, to say the very least. Within 30 seconds of our last game, we already had, you know, RIT off to a, an incredibly stellar lead. A minute in, we were 3-0 down. So you know what? progress we're making progress here with manhattan yeah they're doing better right now but they've just got to find the back of the net if they can do that gain themselves a one goal advantage it would be huge now they have a counter attack here only two defenders back for the side of rit some place they're going to take good control of this ball gets it off the wall gets the air dribble out in a 50 51 means rit are in a very dangerous position right now tops the ball up sets it up for his attacker but there's nobody there to finish now manhattan scrambling to try to get into touch on this ball seemingly panicking a little bit and RIT are going to look to take advantage of that. Here comes Bindo. Boots it upfield. Sunblaze just trying to clear it off to the uh, clear it off to the left. And Bindo, he just can't get that last shot. So instead, it's in no man's land for Casso. Boots it on forward. Sunblaze with a shot. Bindo trying to stuff it on in, but he just can't do it. That was real, real close. Moose has no boost. He's trying to go in a 50-50 on the wall against Casso. That's not going to work out for you. Double commit. That's it. Picking and prodding is RIT with a rotation of Manhattan, and that's just unfortunate. Boost manage it from RIT is nuts, and there you go. They get their first goal within a minute and a half in. I mean, you said it best. The rotations from RIT came out over and over and over until Manhattan just couldn't keep up. They send two defenders at a ball, and then boom, shots in for RIT. Game's 1-0, but only 1-0 at 3 minutes and 22 seconds. Definitive improvement so far for Manhattan, but they got to stop the bleeding now. Got to cauterize that wound or else it's going to continue to just bleed out because this RIT team can smell blood and they are looking for more goals. Sunblaze up for the shot, goes for the wet, double Ooh. touch. Casso though, helps him out, not quite able to jam the finish in. Manhattan now has a counterattack with Moose, but the Knopf touch allows Sunblaze to get the rebound. So many dangerous attacks from RIT, it's just, it's just kind of tough to try to figure out their actual plays. I think at this point, Manhattan, they just need to get some sort of ball forward because we haven't seen a single attack so far from Manhattan. We're just about halfway through this game. JoJo somehow actually able to swing his way on in to try to take away that ball. And RIT, I mean, they, they just keep getting faster and faster. The closer they get towards that goal. And Manhattan, we, we've already saw, we already saw in the first game that they aren't exactly, you know, too, too... I guess you could say they, they, they don't exactly have a prowess with their rotation. They're not exactly too solid at the moment. So they're just kind of throwing cars at the ball and just seeing what happens. And uh, right now, it's just controlled chaos. Yeah. Manhattan needs to turn up the heat, but luckily enough for them, they could change any of the variables on the other side of DH's name, and they'll be perfectly fine doing that. That's just a tough call, though. What they need to do outside oh, what? of just making really bad puns about it <laughs> in order to win this game. Oh, okay. Pinch going all the way to the other side of the field. Bindo, he has a red carpet towards the goal. And that's going to be our goal. Yeah, look at this. Bindo's up. It, it wasn't going in. It was off the post. But JoJo goes for a 50-50 really unfavorably. Taps it in there for RIT. Now up 2-0 and... 2-0 is an infinitely larger lead against RIT than 1-0 is. 1-0 is closable by a lucky goal, a pinch headed somewhere up against them, an over-aggressive attack from RIT. But now you send that goal lead to 2-0, oh. make it 3-0 as Casso lightly puts in a ball that's just floating in front of the goal. And that gap just gets wider and wider and wider. And you can't count on three lucky goals to bring you back into this one. Yeah, absolutely not. And... Not it's tough again, Door, to try to to try to describe what's going on, to actually analyze what's going on. It it seems like Manhattan they're doing a little bit better on the defense. They keep pouring out, you know, the these one v ones, these fifty fifties. Sometimes they win, sometimes they don't. And the times that they don't, RIT, they just have an attacking prowess at the moment. They just have a 
a, just a better attacking presence than Manhattan at the moment. So any ball that's going to go forward for RIT surely would be going in the goal if they just went out that first initial 50-50. You see it right there. Sunblaze, he wins it against Jojo. No one else is going to be able to stay on the ball. And Caso, he actually stays very patient, stays in the backfield. And they take way too long to actually clear out that ball. And with just about a minute left, we're going to get Sunblaze getting himself another goal. And that's a 4-0 lead for RIT. And RIT, we saw it earlier on in the games that they were able to take a lead and just get a stranglehold on it. And Manhattan was doing so much better in the first half of this game, but they have seemingly fallen off, not managed to keep up. The second RIT get a little bit of momentum behind them. It feels like it just all gets out of hand, and with wow. the fifth goal on the board, it seems insurmountable here for Manhattan. Yeah, that's just rough. That is just rough. I mean, great goal period from Casso, but they just can't they just can't come up with it. Big demo coming up from one of the RIT players too, so it's just, it's just all spilling out on that orange attacking side, and you can't really do much about it. No, they're really feels helpless right now for Manhattan. They're rotating on their defense. They're doing everything they can. But it's just how many times RAT are making them do it. Relentless aggression in the midfield and the opposing half. Manhattan are just getting choked out. And every ounce of pressure that RAT is throwing at them is really just adding on to this. It's not just in that one individual play. When you feel like you're on the back foot the entire game, it can be really hard. Now, though, Manhattan has got an opportunity at one. And it's going to bounce over the goal. An opportunity for Manhattan just to get some sort of consolation in the game. But other than that, ladies and gents, we just have about 10 seconds left in this game. And Manhattan can't exactly do much with it. It's still a best of five. So we do still have yet another game on the board. But Manhattan not able to even show up with a single goal in this game. They've had their opportunities. But RIT, they just keep holding solid over toward that attacking line. Not allowing Manhattan to even cross that midfield threshold in a sense. And that's another game for Manhattan. Yeah, there's been zero room to breathe here. But against Manhattan, another game starting out 0-0. If we can see more of the same for Manhattan of what we saw in the first half of this game, we can expect a lot better things. If they keep it at that one goal difference, they will be able to close it by just punishing a mistake from RIT. But nonetheless, I've got to say the mental game for Manhattan is not looking strong right now. They're starting to park the bus. It's starting to get to them just constantly being on the back foot and it's starting to feel like they may have just given up on this one but they've got another game see if they can mental reset that's re it's really the name of the game right now can you mentally reset from a loss like that yeah i mean they just need to change up their play style and i say that with such confidence but you know it's it, it's tough you know what i mean purely because i mean to actually start up a play period you need to get that ball away from your own side but they just haven't been able to do so Finally, some sort of luck there. They're, they're able to kind of execute off the miscommunication and miscommunication between the Manhattan players. They pinch each other. Mid-air. In comes a pass from Bindo. Bas Ooh, pass towards Sunblaze. Saved by DH. In comes the shot. JoJo has to save. DH is actually going to be on the bottom line to get it. And in comes an opportunity. JoJo on the front lines. Same thing with DH. In comes the shot. There you go. Manhattan. They get themselves a lead for the first time in this set. You know, I didn't think I'd be saying it, but Manhattan coming off with an early game lead right now. But every single time we see them score, we see RIT fire right back. So now it's about stopping that rebound, stopping that counterattack, that fire back that RIT seems to always have. They win the kickoff, but the shot is up. The shot is over. Sunblaze looks Floater. to it down. Waterfall, great. Save there by Moose, topping the ball out wide. Now gonna net his own team an opportunity. Caso up with the 50-50. They'll place up the wall here. RIT, they've got another uh -oh. opportunity up off the roof. Goes to the challenge. Wow! Dangerous. Sunblaze has a shot. JoJo for the challenge, but it's played out wide by Manhattan. And Caso, I love that too. He just stays in goal, so he just, just try to get the stuff in off the shot from his teammate, but no ball ends up going forward. Now here comes Manhattan trying to pick at the rotation. Instead, Moose, too high of a pass. It's going to be an opportunity to clear the ball. But instead, DH, good stuff. In, in comes JoJo. He has no boost to actually go for it. In comes the attack. Bindo on the front lines. Sunblaze trying to go for it. Great save by DH. Cutting off the run early. Still another opportunity. Ball is up. Caso with a shot. And that's a 1-1. And Manhattan holding on to their lead for a good amount of time, but it's just hard to hold on for any longer with RIT just absolutely pummeling them 
like they are. We saw, though, Manhattan got another couple attacks out of that. They got to start playing more aggressive, take a little bit out of the of the wind out of RIT sails. Oh, no. I think that's what you need to look to do here. Now it's all about not letting them gain any more momentum. DH manages to get a touch out. Caso playing very, very good. Oh, Caso? Set them Sunblaze for the finish. Wow. The end of the day, he's going to find the back of the net in the slowest play imaginable. The, I mean, it was just the switch up from Caso. I mean, these Manhattan players, they've been so used to going a mile a minute. But <laughs> you just have Caso vibing out right, right in front of the goal, stopping the ball right in front. And uh, don't really know what else you could do at that point other than just try to throw your car at the, at the ball. But uh, yeah, no, that was just about it for that goal. And now Jojo has to stuff the ball here, but instead Sunblaze starts off the pass. He already has an aerial opportunity. Flip reset off the roof. And now the ball's in no man's land. An opportunity here for RIT to continue yet another attack. In comes Caso, going to bounce it off the roof. Sunblaze floats his way in just to try to save. Double commit. That's brutal. Sunblaze just tries to keep the ball with his teammates. Caso starts it off again. His two teammates tried to get towards oh, the ball, so but they crazy. both they both miss. But Bindo, with probably his biggest opportunity, his freest opportunity for a goal so far this game, he misses. At a pretty critical time, RIT wants to extend this lead. Half the game is over in Manhattan after the best start that we've seen him so far. And they could just find one more goal and change oh, this entire game. So RIT is all set up in front of this goal right now. Moose going to go for the clear. Go for the counter attack, but Bindo oh, is what? there lying in wait at the midfield. Mark gets the ball out to his own corner. If DH can get a good challenge here, he could put another one in, but Manhattan just can't find the back of this RIT net right now. In comes Sunblaze. Moose trying to stuff. DH, he gets chipped over too. Ole from Sunblaze. Passing right through two orange players right towards the middle. Manhattan, they still have Moose on the front line. Same thing with DH, trying to shut it down. He's still on the, he's still on the wall, but he actually misses out on the flip. JoJo in the back gets the pass towards the middle. Lots of pressure from DH. They dribble it on forward, but that's not going to be a goal. Big opportunity, but Moose just didn't have enough power on that shot. In comes Caso. He's dribbling, trying to make his way forward, trying to dribble past DH. Gets the ball towards the middle, off the pinch. Moose with a clear, and even then, Sunblaze trying to stuff. Ball still going to hit towards the backboard. Bindo again, tapping it again. Triple commit towards the ball. Another opportunity from RIT. Ball's on the ground. Costa trying to hit, but it's not going to work. And this is Manhattan struggling to hold on. That's how we've seen RIT score goal after goal so far. Just pummeling that net with opportunities. Forcing the overcommits out. Not able to punish there, though. Keeping that goal lead. Oh, what? 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 Could close it. Okay. RIT getting a little bit too confident with the ball. Sunblaze not expecting the other team to try to actually attack the early approach because they just simply haven't been doing so. And JoJo just comes on in, sweeping the ball. Two to two scoreline with just about a minute left. Manhattan, they're not out just yet. Absolutely not, Manhattan. They're starting to punch these mistakes. They get a 50-50 in the opposing half. Oh, no! How far they're That's playing it. up right now. The overconfidence has gotten to them, and they get punished hard by Sunblaze. The hype. Can't exactly stop it just yet. RIT. They're able to nip it at the bud just seconds after that ball goes through for Manhattan. And now again, so many plays just to try to break that ball through the barrier of RIT, and once again, they just get clapped back. Again, that's a that's a that's a huge confidence change. That's gotta hurt for them, but they can still fight. They still have 40 seconds left. DH actually bounces the ball off the ground. Moose has to go for the clear. Same thing with DH. Clears it over to the right side. 1v1. Bindo clears it up. Sunblaze on the front lines. Floats it on in. Great redirect. But no one from uh, RIT is actually gonna be there for the stop. Ball is forward. Caso's going to stop it. He's going to play it towards the wall. Actually, DH stops it. It's towards the middle. Moose on the other side. Going to collect it. Still keeping it towards the middle. DH. He actually sweeps away. That's a big fake. Oh. But it's going to miss. 10 seconds left. So much time being crunched off the clock. 7 seconds. Sunblaze. Chipped on through. We're going to hit buzzer. Ball has to stay up. Bindo. He's not even going to let it land. Ball is up again. It's floated in. Moose. And Kasu, they're fighting for it. Hits the wall. Jojo, he's still up front. Goes for the shot. It's going to float. Hit towards the post. DH, no, that's going to hit the floor. Manhattan, 
They see the ball land and in goes their playoff opportunities and their championship opportunities gone. That is their season and RIT move on into the semi-finals. And what a great last showing for Manhattan. Showing they can keep up with this RIT team, you can really be proud of that. This is a second place team that has dominated every single person they've come up against. You go from losing games 5-1 uh, whatever the score of the first game was, it was not great. And this final game now, just all the way to a 3-2, driving RIT up the wall, making it a close game. RIT having to get a very clutch goal in from their just pure overconfidence out of Manhattan. I got to say, if Manhattan didn't let that goal in, I, I'm pretty sure we'd be seeing overtime right now up mine. They showed a whole lot of heart today. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, we actually, we actually see a little bit of back and forth in the actual in-game chat. JoJo says, do me a favor and win it all, boys. And Bindo just says right before, hey, we'll try against UTA. So, RIT, it seems like they're ready for that rematch against our, uh, against UTA. But again, they still have to go through that semifinal stage. And we're going to find out their opponent coming up next. It's going to be... University of Delaware facing off against Quinnipiac in just a couple of minutes here. Ladies and gents, still stay tuned as we're just going to set up our next game. Thank you so much for tuning in so far on Mixer, YouTube, and Twitch. We'll be right back with the rest of our Rocket League EGFC playoff bracket.
Alright, welcome back. We did take a little bit more of a break, but our game is slated to start at 2 p.m. EST. And ladies and gents, it is just about that time. My name is Upmind, and I'm joined here by Door. And we're going to be taking you guys through the second half of our quarterfinals. This time it's going to be between UD versus Quinnipiac. Door, how are you feeling about this matchup right now? We have our third seed against the sixth seed. Pretty bad. I've named the teams incorrectly in the lobby. But oh, did you now? I'm feeling, yeah, you did. I'm feeling really, really good here for University of Delaware. They have looked hot. They're off of two losses, though, because their last two weeks, they have played up against both RIT and UTA, which were rough matches for them, considering that's right up in those top three. Losing to both the other top three teams, though, does not bode well for them later on in this tournament. Yeah, you're absolutely right, and I think and I think at this point, uh, UD they they have had a pretty impressive past couple of weeks. They ended up facing against UTA this week, and it was close, man. It was it was as close as you can get. So to see our third seed, you know, get as close as they could get with that first seed, maybe they could be a very viable competitor to uh, potentially RIT that they I think they might have to face in semifinals. Who knows at this point? Actually. Yeah, it is, because uh, because of how the bracket goes, UD would actually have to face RIT in this next round if they do end up winning. But like you mentioned, Winnipeg coming into these playoffs with actually a pretty decent record. Um, I say pretty decent purely because they, they didn't exactly have the best start to the season, but they've been, you know, crawling their way back up. They're currently 2-6 and six on the season. And, you know, that's that's more along the lines of a team like Manhattan, Siena, Niagara, more near the bottom. Then things really start to get spicy near around the Canisius line and the Maris line. But I really do feel as if we could see, you know, some sort of fire from Quinnipiac coming out, you know, coming out of the gates in this game. Yeah, Quinnipiac, they've shown us that they can do great things, but it's all about finishing them off at this point. Being able to execute against a team like Delaware, though, who are generally pretty defensive, pretty slow, look for more of those team plays rather than relying on their individual prowess. It's really hard to punish those teams as somebody playing beneath them. It feels like you're just constantly rattling shots off at the goal that just aren't going in. Right, absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Is our server up, Mr. Door? 
Uh, it should be up in just a moment. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. So I know, I know, we've been going at it for a little bit. So this is this is actually a nice calming moment that we actually do get a little bit of an opportunity to just chill out, relax, and actually like think about the bracket that we do have going up over to today. But before I do that, ladies and gents, to the people that are sticking around for this game, I wanted to let you guys know: please stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, practice social distancing, stay home i do like the fact i do enjoy the fact that everyone that is watching the stream right now either if you're watching from mixer youtube or twitch hopefully you guys are home you guys are you know nice nice relaxed that you guys are just watching some good old rocket league action from the comfort of your own homes so thank you guys so much for tuning in so far ladies and gents and you should be good to hop into this lobby it seems like Let's all go. the players are just about ready nice just waiting on our lovely up mind right now. I think though, obviously the advantage of this matchup is going to go to UD. Quinnipiac had to punch far, far above their weight class Absolutely. right now. But as all the players are ready, it's time to start. And Quinnipiac have got to start gaining that momentum. They've got great players on their team. Matt Muskie, Zook has shown up all season. 22 scoops is a uh, is a new face right now though for the Quinnipiac side. Maybe a little bit of young blood will help them out in this series. Well, hopefully so, but they would need to come out to a pretty good start if they want to end up beating out UD. And there, oh, their rotation already gets broken there by the Human L and Fever. But in the end, you already have a quick opportunity for Quinnipiac on the right side. Growl trying to hold things back. Fever, they actually pick it up back up. And uh, 22 scoops, he's uh, <laughs> sliding around the, uh, the back corner. Trying to, trying to find where the ball is. Fever with a shot. Going to hit the post. And that's going to be a goal for Growl as it just dribbles right in front of the goal. Drops right on in here for UD. And 22 scoops being stuck in the corner there was a real detriment. Not allowing his team to do much. Had to keep one in goal. Just allow University of Delaware to take that shot. Which is effectively free at that point when you have so much more boost. Now though, only 1-0. Quinnipiac can get the way back in this one. They can fire a goal back quickly. Zook plays the ball up, fires it into the corner, searches for the shot. Matt Muskie will be there. Oh! Rebound, hits it, and that's it. Evened up 1-1 here. Quinnipiac, shoot right back. All right. All right. So, Quinnipiac showing signs of life before, you know, UD could eventually get that streak going. And that's the thing that we've seen from all of these dominant teams so far in this league. You know, RIT, UTA, UD, whenever they get that small lead off the beginning, they're usually able to wa waterfall it out. So to see Quinnipiac already start off with a pretty good goal just to get themselves going, that's at least something to keep them close. But as I say that, they already get the rotation absolutely destroyed. Zook, he comes off his line and the rest of his team, they have no opportunities to actually get their rotates back in. So that's going to be UD actually with the lead. Yeah, UD retaking their lead just as quickly as they first got in. 22 scoops here is struggling. A player that we haven't seen on the team so far. They're playing pretty well without them. But 22 in a scoops, sense. I've got to say, I'm not sure how much experience they may have here. It may just be the pressure getting to them, though. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it does take a little bit of time for you to actually get, get into a game, in a sense. I mean, I, I mentioned this before, just about game ones in general in Rocket League, they are mostly about, you know, that, that download period. You know, see see what you can actually figure out about your opponent, but wow, what a play from Humanel. I can't, wow. And, um, I mean, yeah, Quinnipiac, they're, they're just going to have to depend on the leadership from their uh, from their captain at this point. See what they see what kind of advice they can give them between that game one and game two But for now they just have to put up a good fight to see if they can restrict the bleeding before things start to get rough And it, it just looks like like it's all over the place. Things are already starting to get rough Yeah, and 22 scoops throws themselves into the goal leaves it in a two versus three there And it's gonna be University of Delaware taking full advantage making it 4-1 here and the substitution that we see out of Quinnipiac not doing so great right now, but They've managed to find one goal. They can find more, you know what they say, if it bleeds, you know. But nonetheless, Quinnipiac are bleeding worse. And I think that's going to be the real issue here. It, I'm not sure how much general Rocket League experience 22 Scoops might have. I'm not seeing flipping or 
too much boost usage. I, I think this may have been a substitution out of need more than anything. They may have had a player not able to maybe, play. Maybe, maybe. And I, I, I suspect that may be what happened. If we have some sort of confirmation on that, we'll let you guys know. But I, I'm, I'm not going to speculate anything. Maybe he's just having a bad game or something of the sort. Let's see what he can actually do in the backfield, however, because Musky has to help him out here. Scoops is actually able to kind of dribble it out forward. Zook, with almost no boost, just has to find some sort of way to extend that ball forward, but he just can't do so. Scoops actually going for an aerial, but that ball is just going to dribble right on in in front of Zook. That's going to be a 6-1 to one score line with just about three minutes left. And, um, yeah, I mentioned this earlier. Once a team starts to get those goals going, it, it just doesn't stop. Yeah, we're two minutes into this one, and UD are up 6-1. I think we might see double digits for the first time today, up mine. Uh, that would be interesting. Oh, okay, stop from Muskie, but that... Oh, wow, it, it just... Brow doesn't want to take it in either. 22 scoops on the ball. He's actually going to miss that out. Doesn't get the turn radius in. Humanel. Gonna go up for it. Oh, the double tap. That's gonna roll on in. Beautiful work from Human L. And ladies and gents, we have reached the Brazil Germany scoreline. Myself, as a fellow Brazilian, I am not very happy to see that. Not too happy. As somebody who is in Germany for the Brazil Germany scoreline. No I, way. Uh, I'm right. I, I am perfectly fine with that one. I didn't know that. That's actually really interesting. Yeah, no. Great, great day to be in Germany. Well, uh, I bet. I, <laughs> I, I, I can't. Yeah, yeah, I, I would I would hope so, right? I would hope so. But yeah, absolutely. So a dominating scoreline to say the very least, and we have barely passed the halfway point of our game. And um, yeah, Quinnipiac, if they can get some sort of consolation in, that would be great for them. But otherwise, oh, Growl, actually, really? with the last second, last second save there. But he, okay, good defense from Zook. Going to try to keep the ball rolling. Keeps it going forward, too. Fever in a 1v1, taps it towards the side. He actually gets bumped. Shot from Matt Muskie, but a great save from Human L. Good stuff here from University of Delaware, and I feel like they're just clinical with it right now. They are generally a more team play oriented team in general, looking less so at individual opportunities, looking more so just dominate on a consistent basis. And I think that's what makes them such a good matchup here up against Quinnipiac, who constantly need to be taking risks because they're only going for these two man offenses, these solo sort of uh, counter-attack plays, the rotations from University of Delaware, because of the team play, are so strong. Therefore, there's really no opportunity for a counter-attack to come out from Quinnipiac. Right. Absolutely. I mean, even with this lead, it doesn't seem like they're they're stopping with any of their shenanigans. That's going to be an 8-1. to one, And like you mentioned, double digits might be on the board very soon. They have a minute to get two. So, uh, yeah. At this point, Quinnipiac, we're on to game two. That's what they're saying in voice chat right now. Yeah, they need to just reset, try and head on to the next one. Make this one as quick as possible. I think that's one of the unfortunate things with Rocket League that makes mental resetting a little bit harder is when you do lose that game, you're in it for a while. The The more goals you get scored on you, you're only going to be in there longer because of the goal cams. Right, and absolutely. The length of the game is going to be the same, so you have to sit there and kind of contemplate what you're going to do the next game while you're still losing. Wow, time, fever. Which is always a rough time. What a setup. So, Zook... Kind of dragging the ball out midair, and uh, you already have fever. You know, kind of off the wall. You know, kind of, kind of airing it out, waiting, <laughs> waiting to get that ball in. So you know what, UD, they're taking this opportunity to kind of showcase their stuff in a sense. 20, 22 scoops over to the midfield. Gonna actually tap it over to the corner and Human L with a little bit of a cheeky pass, and that's gonna be over to Fever. Thirty seconds left on the clock, and that's a nine to one scoreline. Stylish stuff here from UD. I'm liking the way they're going for goals. It's team plays crossing here. You see it go high. Fever's there for the finish. Confidence in his teammate that it's going to happen. But honestly, University of Delaware are very slowly playing this ball into the Quinnipiac half, calmly playing the cross in. And there's always a man there to just mechanically outplay whatever defender might be trying to put a stop to their shenanigans. Ball is up. Human L. Sells it towards goal, but it's going to go wide. Here comes Fever trying to stuff it down. He actually gets it towards middle. No one's going to be there for the actual pass, however. Uh, attack here from Humanel. He gets the reset. He's just going to drag it on in. Use his final jump there to just boost it over. And with one second left, all the ball needs to do is touch. And that is an extremely... No way. They're going to go for another goal. Uh, no, Fever was going to go for the style. But that's a 9-1. to one. For University of Delaware. 
Good stuff out of them. Quinnipiac now. The onus on them to try and fire back. They may have given up on that game, but a 0-0 scoreline. We saw them come out. They had a good starting with that one goal, setting themselves ahead, but University of Delaware just unrelenting right now, and I don't suspect they're going to be letting off that gas pedal anytime soon. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So on to game two, as I mentioned before. It's it's going to be tough for Quinnipiac, but we, we saw some signs of life, especially from Matt Muskie on the front end. Let's see if they can actually continue kind of that drive forward, or maybe they can get themselves an early lead. Again, we saw Manhattan. They were getting demolished in, in game one and two, and even then they showed signs of life. They showed spirit. They showed mental fortitude in that game three, and maybe Quinnipiac, they could find that spark sometime soon. That's really what we're hoping for right now. Matt Muskie as well as Zook have been playing especially well it's just been a rough time as far as team play in general goes, and honestly just outspeeding University of Delaware game ball past that midfield seems like this just unfathomable obstacle to cross, but they do win the 50-50 kickoff, which is going to buy them at least a little bit of space and boost. It's already a bump up. Growl gonna just dribble the ball in. And again, 22 scoops, tries to go for the save, but it's not going to work. And a double tap from Human L almost goes on in, but it just doesn't. Hits the post. Still up in the air. Matt Muskie tried to save. Same thing with Zook. So over towards the corner, Growl. Bumps it on forward, but Matt Muskie starts the attack over to the corner. Stop from Human L. Ball is going a little bit slower, but Human L, this is how kind of the uh, the spill starts. He tries, to, he tries to pinch with the floor, actually, but that doesn't work. But still, UD dominating that midfield. And it's going to look to net him another goal. Human L's up for the shot. Is just, just going to roll in? No. Grau pushes it out of the goal. Uh, University of Delaware with a curious play. Trying to dribble it back into their own half now. Fever will be there to receive. Ball played back to the midfield where Human L's going to knock it up. It's off the back wall. Go for the double touch here. Uses the backflip to reset himself. That's Goes in. Double touch. But it's Fever at the end of the day who's going to finish it. There's going to be that goal. And again, I mean... You mentioned before, I mean, we, we saw a little bit from 22 Scoops. It doesn't seem like he's being, or, or at least he's on the same level as UD at this point. Um, well, that's that's kind of the thing with collegiate esports in general. I mean, it's more of a more of a spot to showcase, more of a, pray, uh, more of a place to practice your skills, hopefully hone them to one day make it into potentially the semi-pro, the pro level. But I think at this point, you know, it, it, you know Quinnipiac, they're kind of stuck on their own. Uh, again, you mentioned that 22 scoops would be a, uh, a sub for this team, so something uh, something happened, at least in the past couple of days, where one of their players wouldn't be able to play. So, I, UD, they're just taking full advantage of it. Yeah, and Human L even coming in here. Not sure if there's disrespect or not, but looking like he's trying to dribble this one out of the goal. Not managing to, however, a goal will go in for University of Delaware. And with 3 minutes and 27 left, 7 seconds left. On the clock here. Quinnipiac, it's not out of range for them right now, but it definitely just looks like dominance. And that's the thing with UD. With such a defensive team, with such a ball control oriented team, you're going to have lower scoring games that can feel just as dominant as those double digit RIT games, you know? Right. Absolutely. Let's see what they can actually pull off, though. 22 scoops trying to stuff. Same thing with Matt Muskie, and he actually gets the ball forward. Big opportunity for Quinnipiac, it seems. Ball is up in the air. Zook tries to get the boost up to try to stop the counterattack, but it doesn't happen. Here comes Human L off the corner, still tapping it in. Matt Muskie stops it on the wall, but Grau just goes for a straight shot, and Matt Muskie again all over the field, stopping it once again, just trying to pull the weight of this team. Same thing with Zook. 22 scoops starts off the attack. However, Grau already stopping it early. Great aggression from UD, and Grau... He's kind of the, uh, the, the X factor, at least to that play. He's going nuts. Yeah, it goes for a little bit of a cheeky freestyle there. A low altitude freestyle, if you will. And with half that time off the clock, Quinnipiac are just as far as ever from taking a W in this game right now. Got looking to fire one back in here. Fever goes up for a shot. Going to be a little bit more cautious to play it over to his teammate, Human L, who's set up for the goal. Goes for the double touch, but... Just off the crossbar, UD continue their assault on Quinnipiac's goal line, but not anything. To oh yet. no! Matt Musky whiffs the ball, rolls across the goal, and Fever slow rolling it in here. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's rough. <laughs> Matt Muskie. Oh my god, the ball was going so slow. And Human L ended up demoing him too. Not something that I saw earlier. But man, that is uh, that's just UD styling on him. Yeah, UD doing everything in their power to make Quinnipiac feel as powerless as possible right now. Human L going to fire one over into the corner. Look for that rebound. I'm not sure the last time we saw Quinnipiac leave their own half, which is just... Feels so bad for them. Grau goes up for a 50-50. Wins it. Can dribble the ball towards the goal. Plays it out wide towards Human L instead. He plays it over to Fever. Ball set up in the middle. Going for the double touch here. Waterfall down from Human L to a teammate. No, it's going to be played directly in. Well done by University of Delaware. Yeah, it's tough. Especially with this beautiful team play from UD. It seems like they're ready already to move on into that semifinal round. They're just taking this one. Nice and easy. I mean, even the, even their attacks at this point, they seem slow, but they seem extremely methodical. Again, lots of showcasing going on from this team. And Quidipiac, they, it just doesn't seem like they're, they're a full rotation team at this point. No, Quidipiac really, really struggling right now. I think stopping UD from getting too much more is really the name of the game here. Maybe you can find a goal or two in, but... Not quite sure what you're going to look to do after that one here. Of course, it is game two. Not match point quite yet. They've got some time to do something. But they have a long gap between them and the way UD are playing right now. To another opportunity from UD. They're going to tap it over towards the wall. 22 scoops trying to stop it. Same thing with Zook. They actually get the ball kind of towards no man's land over in the middle. But Fever, he does not stop his play even when he's on the front lines. Matt Muskie. Taking the ball forward. Same thing with Zook. Human L is going to be there for the stop. And he ends up getting demoed. Ball is up. Fever with a shot. Muskie with a stop. Ball is over towards the front line. 20 sco 22 scoops trying to predict it. But instead it's going to be Growl. Just taking it forward. And he just rolls it. Midair. Great pass to Human L with a shot. But Matt Muskie, great save. Zook with a great demo. And now that's going to actually allow Matt Muskie... To be on the front lines, trying to get some sort of goal here. Ball in the air. Human L clears it out. Zug needs to get back. Does stop it at midfield, but this is just... Oh, no, Fever. Love that from him. A, a, a little bit of BM, just a little bit of sh uh, show-offing from him. Floater shot from Grau, but Matt Muskie, he actually messes up his flip midair. And that's the sixth goal from <laughs> from Maryland. Or, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, from Delaware. It's... It, <laughs> I get the two mixed up sometimes, not gonna lie. It's alright. University of Delaware, if you see the number at the top, Gus? Yeah. The bigger, the bigger one's the University of Delaware. Gotcha, gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah, 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 no problem. Oh, wait, Matt Muskie! Oh, he puts one in. Maybe we see a Brazil. There's, uh, there's, there's ten No, not again. Would you <laughs> that, would yeah, I would, yeah, I would love to see it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just flashbacks. Oh man, oh man, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm having a tough time. I'm having a tough time here. It will haunt a country forever, man. Right, Let's right. Talk about it. Right, no matter what we do, even if we do end up winning another championship, another World Cup, that that's gonna that's gonna sting. <laughs> yeah, the, the seven one's just iconic, man, and doesn't look like we're gonna be seeing it here. The six one scoreline goes the way of University of Delaware, taking this one to game point. Congrats to University of Delaware. They're playing well. They're playing consistent here, having a little bit of fun with it. I think. Keeping your mental game up right now when you have such a long day ahead right. is a great thing to do. Quinnipiac, though, they've got plenty of work on their own side right now, and they're going to look to come back. We're going to have to go to a quick little break. We'll catch you guys in just a moment.
this, this match sucks. Oh, we're back, ladies and gents. And uh, and there you go. Now we have ourselves our third game. And yeah, no, this is this is a rough, rough one for Quinn and Piek. This is a rough one so far. But I mean, we we should see something come out soon from Quinn and Piek. I'm excited. I mean, it, it's another game, and this is where we saw. I mean, this is this is where we saw Manhattan come back earlier. In that, uh, you know, they were playing against. Uh, yeah, actually, you could say a better team in this league, and they were able to pull out. And not only that, but they're a lower seed in the bracket, so maybe we could see maybe some magic from Quinnipiac. But uh, as I say that, they already get slapped in the face with a uh, with a one two. I think as well from Quinnipiac's perspective, this is especially unfortunate for them just having to go up against the University of Delaware. Like we talk about those top three teams, you know, right. But Nonetheless, University of, or UD is still third in that placement. Had Quinnipiac placed one position better, they would have been playing in that uh, fourth, fifth matchup, I believe. It was, yeah, Canisius versus Amarist. If Quinnipiac just sneaks in there with a few more goals, a few more wins, it could have been them there, but instead they got to play against University of Delaware, which is a significant gap, wouldn't you say? Right, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean... Uh, I, I I would like to see some sort of fire from them, but it doesn't seem like Quinnipiac they're playing with their full squad right now. Nor do they seem like they're they're confident. All of their attacks they get thwarted early, and it just seems like UD they just have their number. Yeah, UD have the number of a lot of teams this season, but Quinnipiac here especially right now, looking rough. Four minutes and eight seconds away though from either holding on for one more match or getting knocked out here and it's not looking good for the former option human l starting to soft <laughs> start something saucy even growl coming in helping out and these are the opportunities that quinnipiac would have for a counter attack especially off of a double commit like that and even a player over the middle but it just doesn't seem like they're they're really ready for any attack period no they're really struggling with anything that university of delaware has to throw against them and a large part of that it's the fact that University of Delaware are playing so well in the air. Uh, 22 Scoops is struggling to keep up in the aerial game. And so that's leaving them effectively 2v3. The oh my god. The goes anywhere upwards. University of Delaware searching for another aerial attempt, but not quite able to finish it off. Ball goes down. Zook. Actually going to start off the counterattack. Still on the front lines. Going to be stopped by Grau early. 22 Scoops ends up running into the ball, and he just can't collect it back. And Humanel just continues his run forward. The ball is up. Growl. Oh, the no. Turtle. The turtle. Oh, my God. You'll love to see that. A little bit of flashiness. A little bit of a Twitch clip for him a little bit later. And, man, oh, man. UD showing off in this game three. All right. We give him style points for that one. Yeah, you absolutely. Can, you can have a couple style points. Like, UD have been going for some wacky stuff. But uh, the turtle goal might be iconic right now growl putting the sauce on quinnipiac lays up the human l though for another shot university of delaware not done with this one yet searching for a fourth goal in fact searching for literally anything that they can get right now ball is up growl passes it over to fever and growl actually hits it up over the wall human l trying to go for a floater growl tries to stuff it on in but that might have helped zook save and even Matt Muskie going for a save too. And a counterattack opportunity, but Human L, he's already there to stop it. That he is right now trying to search for these aerial shots going, following the ball consistently, just chasing it down. University of Delaware, they don't have to worry about rotations if they're just going to win every single 50 50 they're offered. Ball is up. Fever gets down a pass to Grau, and almost an opportunity there for 22 scoops. Just to try to get the ball rolling over to the other side of the field. But instead, it's yet another attack. Two minutes left. Still, it's it's an insurmountable score. Even if Quinnipiac were able to score on. I mean, ha they, they've scored two goals so far this entire series. And, I mean, Delaware, they've scored what? They've scored uh, 15, 18 so far. That's nuts. Yeah, Delaware... Playing out of their minds. I think they've got tougher roads ahead, though. If they end up taking this match, I believe it is RIT that they will be going up. Right. With, which is a really, really scary prospect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Considering the fact that, you know, UD, they actually had to face off against the number one seed earlier this week. They got 3-0'd by UTA. You know, it's 
it's a tough aspect to look at period but that's actually a really big opportunity because ud did not look you know they they just didn't look bad whatsoever even though it was a 3-0 they kept it close the entire time, and I truly believe that UD, they can be the team to try to thwart that uh, RIT team before RIT ends up making it towards that grand finals potentially against UTA. Yeah, and that's really going to be a matchup to watch. RIT versus University of Delaware. We saw them battle it out earlier on in the season. RIT taking the victory there. And I think that matchup being played out again could go a number of ways. Of course, it was RIT taking uh -oh. it on the day. I think that's, it was a 3-0. That's not going to be a goal. Matt Muskie was so close. And here yeah. comes another opportunity. Humanella going to hit it off the backboard. Going to float it on in. Double. And uh, Fever actually wasn't ready for the double. It says it's going to be Grau clearing it over to the, his own side of the field. And uh, passing play from uh, UD to Matt Muskie. And uh, Matt Muskie wasn't able to get that last shot. 15 seconds left. We might see the nail in the coffin. Human L. Pass up. Growl. Passes it back to Fever. He's still going. Still floating the ball in. Quinnipiac. It's been real, my friends. They reached the sixth seed of this entire tournament out of the nine-team pool. But instead, in the end, it's going to be UD demolishing Quinnipiac. Making their way into the semifinals against RIT. I've got to say, this looks great for University of Delaware. Those starting off the day with some good momentum, heading into what's bound to be an incredibly different, difficult rest of the bracket coming up against RIT and such. But we've got one more of those top three teams to watch, and it's going to be University of Texas Arlington up against Niagara, the winner of that eighth and ninth seed game. Niagara have a hell of a task on their hands right now, but they've been playing out of their minds all week. Question is, will they be able to keep up? We'll find out in just a bit. We'll be back with you guys with that matchup in just a moment.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And next up, we have our number one seed, UTA Univers. Wait, what? What was it again? It was a uh, University of Texas Arlington, something of the sort. Door. There you go. Nah, got it. That's and one. and they're going to be facing off against the lowest seed in the tournament, or in the top eight at least, Niagara. And I'm I'm going to say this now. We have the potential for possibly the biggest upset of this entire season, uh, of the entirety of EGF, you know, so, you know, kind of spanning all of our games, you know, Rocket League, Smash, Overwatch, everything. I'm going to predict here that Niagara can seriously put up an actual fight up against UTA if they play like they were earlier. I mean, the way Niagara has been playing all season has been rough. But the way Niagara is playing this week, it's a totally different story. It's a completely new team right now. Us is popping off. Pablo is playing out of his mind right now. And I think they stand a chance at putting a few in here, maybe taking a couple games off UTA health. The upset could come through. Niagara are the people to do it. Pablo with a great save here. Already off to a decent start right now, this Niagara side. Challenging these 50-50, playing fast, playing aggressive. But it's all about getting that ball out of their half right now. Adverse up for the dribble, gets the touch. Wow. Echo Coach gonna play it back over here to Samba though. He's gonna have some solid ball control right here. Ah, but it's early stuff from mid. It's gonna end up forward. Echo Clutch, big clear. And Samba's gonna keep it going over to mid. What a pass. Adverse not ready for the shot, but instead it's gonna be Echo Clutch. What a shot, but mid is gonna be there for the save. Samba again, and he's gonna be able to get it. Now, I think, look at this UTA team. How quickly they can make these passing plays. We saw three different attempts on goal that weren't just an individual person's, person's shot. They were a pass off the wall, a pass off the roof, a setup, a huge threat over and over again. And finally, putting one in there, Samba was able to complete it. But impressive stuff from UTA, exactly what we expect from our number one seed. So... I mean, we're watching a team right now. We're first of all, UTA is a collegiate Rocket League, or I guess you could say like collegiate Rocket League team in a sense. So all one of these teams is a collegiate Rocket League team, but the actual tournament hosted by the official Rocket League, you know, tournament Psyonics. league itself, yeah, it, it, Psionics, CRL, CRL. The, the proper, yeah. It sounds weird to say out loud, but you know, we're we're talking about you know UTA. They're they're an actual contender in that lead. And most of the teams here in EGF, you know, they're they're making their way in and whatnot. But UTA, they're already firmly in there. They're the number one seed this season for a reason here, Dor. Yeah, UTA as well, a top 100 ranked threes team. An incredible force of nature in their own right. And Niagara have the task of going up against them. Niagara, though, like we've mentioned, have been having an incredible week so far. They're playing very well, and I suspect this match it's going to be a lot closer than it may have been in times prior. Niagara applying a lot of pressure, and this is something we don't see out of a lot of teams when it comes to playing against those big three, is pressure. Niagara are showing a ton of confidence because they should have it. They have it because they can play these games. They've played great all week, and I'm glad that it's showing up for them in more than just the games that it's happening. Love the patience from some of these Niagara players, but it doesn't seem like their approaches are too coordinated. And just like that, they double commit on the ball over to the right, and that's going to end up butterflying effect right into, you know, uh, right into Samba for an easy goal. All of their players that were off their line trying to go for the attack, and instead UTA stops it early. That's a 3-0. And I think that's it. Is The struggle here for Niagara is going to be more so on the attack. They can save uh, shots here and there, left and right, you know. They'll be able to defend for a good while just for the fact that they have three people back. But it's on the attacking side that they're really going to struggle. Because this UTA team plays relatively similar to the University of Delaware, where it's hyper defensive, but I'd say the big difference between them and UT UD is that they can string together these series of shots on the attack that aren't just individual plays, like, like we see the passing play from Samba, the air dribble into the shot from Adverse. And that's where the real difference is between UD UTA and these other top three teams. It's just that ability to string it over and over again. But they're still a defensive team as far as the overall metagame goes, which is rough for Niagara because pretty much any goal they would hope to have against UTA is going to come from a counterattack. And there you go against Samba. 
Already trying to make his way forward. That's already the 4-0. And I, again, I keep making this point about Game 1s in Rocket League. How they just continuously, you know, show that, you know, the stronger team is always going to come out to these multi-goal leads off of Game 1. Purely because the weaker team is always going to be taking this time to at least try to read their opponent and at least trying to figure out their attack in some way, shape, or form. And Niagara at this point, I, I don't know, somehow they need to try to figure out UTA before stuff starts hitting the fan in game two. Yeah, stopping that bleeding, figuring out what you need to do on the defense to get that ball out of your half. I'm honestly, I'm not too concerned with their defense in general they're playing decently it's just the fact that uta are so insanely powerful on the attack but now you've got to start figuring out okay what are we going to play in the midfield here how are we going to get the ball into their half and how are we going to finish it off because once you get there you have to know what you're doing they've had a couple opportunities on defense here to get it out but it's getting past that step that's going to be the real issue ball is up in the air ost Gonna clear that out already. Samba taking it towards middle. Echo Clutch just brute forcing his way in. And Mitt somehow just keeps it away. Still a minute left. Niagara still showing some sort of defensive prowess. Trying to see if they can at least thwart off this team for the next minute. That would be just a huge challenge for them. If they could somehow hold off UTA and at least show to themselves that they can hold off UTA for more than a minute in between their goals, you know, that would already been, be a big challenge and a big show of strength just from them alone. But other than that, this game is already done and dusted. Yeah, 5-0 and oh with the 40 seconds left on the clock. Nearly insurmountable here for this orange side. UTA is going to oh. for more goals. The pinch out! That's it not in. Be in. It's just wide though. Oh, oh yes, up. finally. Put in for Niagara. There's your dignity goal. There it is. So Mitt, he ends up getting bumped by a UTA opponent. And uh, it ends up going right into the car of Ost over in the front end. And there you go. I mean, Ost, he was that hero for the Niagara side earlier. But he just hasn't had the opportunity to actually execute. So let's see. Let's see if uh, Niagara can actually, you know, kind of bring that fire to game two. Because again, like I mentioned before, this game's already done for. Yeah, 5-1 scoreline. You could search for another. You could hope to try and get that win back into your sails right now, which I don't think is a bad idea here for this Niagara side. Keeping that momentum that you've had all week is a huge factor in this game because this is the first bit of, uh, how do we say... It's the first real adversary they've had all week. The yeah, first time they've absolutely. seen any resistance, the first time they've even lost a game. And so now they need to learn to rebound back from that because they may have gotten a little bit too comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. This is, well, of course, it, it's going to be their most impressive opponent that they've seen, well, maybe all season. The UTA that they faced at first is a completely different UTA that they're facing right now. I mean, as the season progresses, a team is always going to get better and better. And it just so happens that UTA is one of those teams, if you think that is even possible. So Niagara, you know, they, they exponentially improved in just the past couple of weeks, you know, getting through their faults in a sense. So now they made, I mean, they're, they made their way into this quarterfinal position. I mean, surely the, the odds are completely stacked against them for them to make, into, make it into semis. But to at least leave your mark on this season, to maybe even take away a game from UTA, or at least try to keep these last few games close, that will leave their legacy going into the next season, just so they know, just kind of as a benchmark, where are they at, at, where are they at as a team, and how do they honestly stack up as some of the best teams, not only in EGF, but in Rocket League in general. Yeah, and I'm looking at this previous game that we talked about. Niagara did play UT Arlington early on in the season. UT Arlington pretty unsurprisingly beat them 3-0. However, the scoreline for the first game, 1-8 followed up by an 0-5 and then an 0-7. So we're already seeing better scorelines right now out of Niagara University, showing a lot of improvement right now. And let's see what they have to offer us here in game two. Let's see what they got already an early start adverse off the backboard us is not going to be able to reach it that's going to be quite the floater and no one's going to be there for that whatsoever beautifully placed by samba pablo he just wasn't in the best of positions he thought that mid would actually act will actually just get it period so he was just off his line and 10 seconds in you already have uta with a backhand slap to the face 
Yeah, UTA starting off just as quickly as it did in the previous game. Niagara, though, getting a little bit unlucky with that floater. Like you mentioned, placed very well by, I believe it was Samba. And now UTA are searching for yet another goal. Adverse is wow. oh, oh my god, that was a fastball. A great shot and an even better save. Oss. Still just trying to make his way to the front lines because we already know how aggressive he is as a striker. But here comes Mint. Tries to clear it out. Samba with a shot that's going to go top left. Bins. Beautiful shot. And UTA again. Off the back of, I mean, just great shots from Samba. Just keeps banging these goals in, man. I mean, there's something to be said for just the absolutely perfect ball placement from University of Texas Arlington. Finding those top bins, finding the shots behind the goalkeepers where they really just can't reach regardless of whatever boost they have. It's impressive stuff. Niagara, though, they've got ball control for what feels like the first time in this game. There goes the ball center, though. Samba, my lord, just trying to keep that ball going by himself all the way up close. Adverse in a 1v1. Pablo dribbles it forward. Here comes Echo Clutch, trying to make it out. Same thing with Pablo. Pablo, I mean, he, he just plants his tires running the ball. That at least stops the momentum. But a big opportunity. Adverse misses the ball. Echo Clutch. Trying to make his way in. And oh! Nice juke. And a beautiful dribbling play from Echo Clutch. That's going to give you to. Uh, oh, no. Pablo was off the wall. He just couldn't reach it. Right. That was just good stuff from Echo Clutch. Yeah, quality dribbling plays here coming out from University of Texas Arlington. Three minutes and 45 seconds left on the clock here. Fortnite Agra to search for a goal or two. Great kickoff for them. Heads the way of Echo Clutch, however. He's going to play it in the corner here for University of Texas Arlington. Off the back wall, searching for the shot. Mitt with a whiff right now. Samba fakes the challenge, trying to allow his teammate to come through, but Adverse can't quite reach that ball. Niagara now have an attacking chance, but it's going to get shut down immediately by Echo Clutch. Ball floated in again. But it's actually a little bit of a floater. In comes Adverse. Trying to bang out the ball away. And in comes Ost. Actually going to get that demo. Has to keep the ball rolling. Has his teammates in the back lines. But here comes Samba. Dribbling play. Trying to stuff. He gets it. Still off the right. Adverse. Ball's over center to Echo Clutch. Echo Clutch. Keeping it up in the air. Same thing with Samba. Trying to do the same thing. But it's not going to happen. It lands. And now it's a little bit of a reset. But even then, Niagara... They have the ball on their own side, and they weren't able to get, I mean, even even a single tire on the ball. Yeah, struggling to maintain that ball control, but that's just the absolute stranglehold that UTA had on this game right now. 4-0 here at just about halftime. Adverse laying up his teammates so perfectly. Echo Clutch, good double touch off the back wall. And it's just the ability to strike from anywhere. The crosses don't have to come from the corner. They can come from anywhere on that wall. Play it out towards the middle. Not have to play it off the back wall necessarily. Then more than happy to take that double touch from any position yet again. UT Arlington are all just such threats here. Halfway through this game, UTA, they just haven't stopped whatsoever. If I'm not mistaken, Door. Every single one of our quarterfinal games so far have been 3-0s. Am I, am I not mistaken by saying this? No, and I think the real surprise of that one was actually done pretty much just in the first game. I mean, we look at how these teams were lined up. The first game we ended up seeing, it was, well, Niagara versus Sienna, which was the 8th and ninth place match, ended up going 3-0. Right. That was a little bit of a surprise, but with the way Niagara were playing... I, I'm not too surprised. Niagara are playing very, very well considering the earlier part of their season. Then Maris versus Canisius, another 3-0. That was a surprise. But then we head over to RIT versus Manhattan. And this is where we start getting into that territory where, like, these top three seeded teams playing against the lower seeded teams. It's what we expect. However, these semifinals, RIT versus University of Delaware, these matches are about to heat up real quick. Oh my, so many shots just going in on goal, and it just seems like every time a ball even gets close to making it into that defensive side, it just goes in. UTA just going nuts right now. Yeah, UTA going off right now. 6-1, or 6-0 oh, rather. Sorry, used to uh, Niagara having a goal from their previous game, and I honestly think that's exactly what they're hoping for here. Just get one in on the goal, prove... This UTA team can be scored on right now, and that's honestly going to be enough for me. With 1 minute 42 seconds left on the clock, though, we're sitting at about a goal every 20 or seconds or so. It's a tall ask for this Niagara side. 
Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, I mean, damn. I mean, UT at this point, I mean, I... I tried to hype up Niagara, you know what I mean? I tried to spiritually hype them up, Ho hopefully they, they would have heard me, something of the sort. Just like, hey guys, you know, maybe maybe you guys can do it, maybe you guys can pull off, you know, maybe the biggest upset that we've ever seen in, in any EGF competition ever, but I it, it, it's, it, it just can't be enough. It just It's just UTA being UTA at this point. I think that's kind of the position they put themselves in, since it took this last week big push for them to be able to make it in here to even play in this end of season tournament this is kind of the just the punishment for that you weren't able to perform throughout the season and yes you've had an amazing last week you've had a complete renaissance of your rocket league team but that also means that you run directly into ut arlington and bracket and that's the unfortunate part of the situation that that uh niagara have put themselves in Us on the right side, Consolation Goal could be in play. Adverse is going to stop it early though, great stop. And he's just going to keep dragging forward and Samba is there. With a little bit of a bump on the bottom. Ball just bounces on in off of Echo Clutch's aerial. Beautiful shots, it, it, it's, it's just such good stuff from UTA so far. And even the team plays are just getting better and better as the game goes. And Niagara, they just can't break through. Yeah, Niagara really, really struggling. I think obviously so. And with 30 seconds left here, you look to next game. And I think th this sounds like, uh, you know, what what your peewee baseball or t-ball coach kind of told you. But just have fun. Like, Niagara, this next game, they can start going for some ridiculous stuff. It's pretty well accepted that the scoreline is going to be high. But now you can start going for really, really risky plays that you would pretty much never go for. Otherwise, have a bit of fun with it, and I think you honestly stand a better chance of scoring with those crazy, more outlandish, risky plays than anything else. Fifteen seconds left. Double digits. Could they happen? Still ten seconds left. We, we... We almost saw the double digit happen earlier. It also ended out in a 9-1... In a 9-1 game. Adverse. Still keeping it going. Is he going to keep the ball alive? Oh, he tried to. He's styled at the end, but that's going to be our game. Game two, going to UTA. Yeah, UTA with a very, very impressive scoreline of 9-0 here. We mentioned Niagara starting the series off better than what we saw from them earlier on in the season up against UT Arlington. But see, seemingly falling back down into that rut, 9-0 looks just about even with the scorelines that we saw in that first initial matchup in week, in week one, no less. So Niagara, I think a good third game showing here would be huge for them, allow them to feel a little bit better about their improvements over the season. And uh, I, yeah, I think it'd be a nice little cherry on top to this season. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And they're the number one seed for a reason. They're lined up to face off against Marist coming up in the next round if they do end up winning out or end up closing out this uh, this BO5. So... Again, it's it's not going to get any easier for UT Arlington going forward, to say the very least. No, I mean, it doesn't get easier, but I don't think it can get any harder for Niagara, which is <laughs> the, the unfortunate part about their situation. They're in the toughest of places. However, UT Arlington load in with one man, which is hey, a good one for me. That's fun. All right. I, I think we'll go to a little break while we get this one figured out. It shouldn't be too long. I think we might just need to remake a lobby. So we'll right. be right back with you guys in a moment.
ladies and gentlemen, we are back with our game, and we're just going to jump right into our third game of this series. We're already just about 10 seconds in. Welcome back. Yeah, UT Arlington at zero goals about 20 seconds into the game, so we can say Niagara are definitively doing better than we've seen so far. UT Arlington, though, still searching for the back of that net, getting a little creative here with Adverse. Still on the blue side, searching for the attack. The aggression's coming out. Mitt gets a dribble out towards the midfield. Ball will be forced back into Texas territory, which, uh, you know, as I say, everything's bigger in Texas. So I'm starting to assume that this entire field is their territory as Samba flies through and puts one in. Yep, Samba doing Samba things at this point. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> just a midair flick. Taking forever to land in the end. And uh, again, he just floats it on in, and that's UT Arlington with yet another goal. Searching for a second here. Echo Clutch with the floater up above Mitt. Going to calmly knock that one down, but Samba's mm -hmm. there for the rebound here. UT Arlington quickly <laughs> raising that score line. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Couldn't get anything done on the defense either. Oh, man. I'm just looking through that goal. And it's, again, Niagara. They just can't get the ball out of the defense. It's the same thing that we've seen from the top three seeds in this uh, quarterfinal stage. It's it's all just a, just a waterfall type thing, and they you can see a clear discrepancy between these top three teams and the rest of the bracket. Yeah, the way they dominate is absolutely impressive. In fact, I believe all three of our top three teams went completely undefeated, and I believe that may include game victories as well, went completely undefeated until they played each other right the first match i believe was in week seven and it was rit versus ut or ud and rit took the match three to one and then the final two matches of the top three didn't get played out until literally the final week where university of texas arlington took down both the other two final teams and the fact that they managed to go undefeated for so long is so so impressive and like you said so so indicative of just how dominant these teams are. Get another opportunity, just about three minutes left on the clock. Chance for the attack. And Mitt, oh my god. I, I, I love how I say, chance for the attack. And just right after I say that, you just have Adverse dragging the ball away off of the flip from the wall. And Mitt just can't get to it. You know, that sometimes with how good <laughs> UT are, UTA are, I, I want to stop calling them chances and just the second they get possession, call them goals, you know? <laughs> it, it's that crazy, their conversion rate. These shots all connect. They're all perfectly placed. Oh my God. I feel like the other teams that do manage to defend against them, it's not saving shots, it's stopping the plays before they happen. The second the shot's rattled off, I feel like it's just guaranteed to go in. This Texas team is so insanely accurate. Yeah, games are about to get a lot spicier in semifinals, that's for sure. Because, I mean, we, we see three carbon copy performances from our top three seeds, right? And we still have Maris. They're, they're pretty much kind of the kind of the outlier in our in our top four. But they could still pull off a great performance. I mean, again, we, we see UT Arlington just kind of sweeping the floor at the moment. But maybe Maris could show up. Yeah, this next match of RIT versus University of Delaware, we'll get to talking that, about that one in just a little bit, but man, that semifinal is going to be good. A very close matchup. We saw them play earlier. RIT won it in a very close fashion. It was 3-1, but every game was just back and forth and back and forth, and it's that nice balance of having a hyper-aggressive team like RIT play against a, a relatively defensive team in University of Delaware, and I can't wait for that one to start but right now university of texas arlington trying to show us a little bit more trying to give us a little a few style points here Offs gets the ball out of their own half here niagara feels like an achievement right about now pablo though gets an intercept in the midfield not quite on the attack yet ruta but the pool shot lands from mitt knocks the ball over the goal and pablo is going to catch the rebound halfway point in the game and we're already going to reach a seven to zero man what a stomp, and it's not like these players are anything to scoff at other. Again, it's Niagara's earlier form. They can, you know, maybe maybe if the season started today, we could sh surely see Niagara in that top six, top five area. But, you know, just their, just their blank start at the very beginning. 
I mean, uh, we had a captain's meeting earlier today, and then one of the, uh, I think Oss, the captain for uh, for Niagara, you know, um, he said that he assembled the God Squad in uh, in Niagara, <laughs> going on towards the second half of the season, and uh, and yeah, no, it, it kind of showed in the in the past couple of days, but otherwise, they are they they just haven't had any chances whatsoever against what is the best team so far in EGF. Well, we'll find out today whether or not that holds true at this end-of-season tournament. They've still got more matches ahead, and this UT Arlington team, as dominant as they may seem, they've still got to beat both RIT, well, rather, RIT or UD here, whoever comes out of the semifinals. And that's not a small task, even for a team like UTA. Shots going back and forth, and again... No opportunities coming in whatsoever for the Niagara side. I mean, even though UTA has been on the attacking side almost the entire time, they look disciplined enough to actually have someone all the way in the backfield just kind of ready for that defense, ready for that rotation. And, uh, I mean, Samba already in the backfield. He is going to miss out on that shot. But, man, I mean, he was already ready for it. Even in an 8-0. Even in an 8-0, UTA is already ready for defense. Yeah, their rotations are absolutely incredible, not to mention the fact that they've controlled this boost so heavily that at any given point in time, they've got some in their back pocket. Adverse flying up, gets the flip reset off the roof, goes for some wacky stuff, absolutely clears the ball, and uh, sets his teammate up instead. Pablo oh my god! Is there to intercept. Ninth goal on the board for UTA, and they're searching for double digits. Yeah, they have uh, they've just about a minute left to do it. And uh, three players just kind of scrap towards the ball, and all of them miss because Adverse is just a beast also. Everyone individually on UTA can uh, can go up. You know, can, can just kind of show up on their on their own, in a sense. Just the individuality of these players. It's, a, it's just so nuts. And uh, yeah. you, you can't do much about that. I don't want to look at the side Niagara. of Niagara. Niagara have a lot to be proud of this season. They've been through... A lot. They've been straight through the ringer. A couple of roster changes, a couple of uh, rough patches earlier on in the season as well. Turning it around and having a very impressive last bit of the season. In fact, we wouldn't have even seen them in the playoffs if I don't think they won that last game. They had an even record with uh, Sienna. So even getting the chance to play here and then taking down Sienna, two wins in this final week, coming back, showing more impressive Rocket League than we've seen out of them, I'd say, in the entire season combined. The absolute difference there was between them and this previous week and them and every other week was ridiculous. They yeah. started having some seriously powerful rotations, some good communication, great team play. The mechanics still a little bit behind for the Niagara team, but they made up for it up against many other teams and a great showing from Niagara. Unfortunately, they get placed up against that number one seed, like we mentioned. But a hell of an end to this season, this Niagara side. Absolutely. Three O's to end the week. And uh, <laughs> whether it be losses or wins, Niagara, they uh, they show themselves as a, as a 3 0 sided org, <laughs> to say the very least. But uh, but yes, they ended up 3 0 Siena, 3 0 Manhattan, and UT Arlington. They end their streak now. That's just going to be it for their season. But Niagara, they have a beautiful foundation for that next season. Seriously, they, they don't need to go through any any player changes whatsoever if they just stick with this roster if they just stick with their game plan at the moment they're they're going to be a great team come next season or maybe even during the power series that's going to be starting up and uh i think just about this week we're going to be starting off with uh, big east come tomorrow right here back on the official egf channel but ladies and gents today is not over by any means we have the semi finals stepping up right now and uta they're going to be ready very soon to try to face off if I'm not mistaken, against Maris, but that's going to be our second game. I actually have our schedule already up. Our first game is going to be UD and RIT. So, ladies and gents, please stay tuned, and we'll be, you know, back with the rest of our action. Semifinals on the board. Dor, are you ready for it? I could not be more excited. RIT versus University of Delaware. Set to be a really close match. The last time we saw these two Titans go at it, it was RIT taking the W, but not in a 3-0 fashion. University of Delaware did make it difficult, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them do the same thing again. Winner that has to go on to face UTA. So I hope they're ready because they've got a long day ahead of them, and that's coming up in just a little bit.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And finally, we have reached the semifinals of the EGFC Season 1 playoffs. My name is Alba, and I'm joined here by my boy, Dor. And, man, I mean, this, this is where things start to get spicy. This is where things start to, to start to become a little bit more of a gray area. Because before, we were watching some of the teams that had a little bit less of a record, that they did have a good late-season performance, but simply put against the, uh, the top four seeds, they just couldn't get it done, and that's exactly what we're going to be seeing throughout the next hour. We're going to be seeing our top four seeds of the regular season face off against each other, and we're going to be starting off with a three and two seeds. We're going to start off with the number two, RIT versus UD, the number three. Dor, are you ready for this one, my friend? Oh, boy, man. This is <laughs> the RIT versus UD, round two, baby. They paid on earlier on in the season, and it was a slug fest. Now coming in here, right. <laughs> rapid fire, high aggression. Team University of Delaware looking to punish that slow, methodical play. It plays out like a movie, man. Every single time these teams come up against <laughs> one another, it's a great matchup. I'm ready to get in this game. We got the players in. Gus, why don't you take us through kickoff? Yeah, absolutely. I think the funniest thing is that uh, your mic actually went for a second there for a second. <laughs> for for a second during the right. So you went, oh boy, and your mic just went. <laughs> <laughs> Discord, Discord's going through some stuff. Man. Yeah, you're right. Time. Yeah, no one's on Discord. The servers are loaded, but you know what? So is this team. <laughs> out of its mind, these players <laughs> all incredible. In the right. Run, right. University of Delaware searching for the first goal. However, oh, Kato put a quick end to that one. Right, right, right. Let me actually update a couple of things because I wasn't able to update the actual teams. On the left, we have ourselves UD, and they already start off with a goal from Grau. Good stuff. University of Delaware starting off better. RIT, previously on in the season, took on the University of Delaware. And I believe the score was 3-1. Just going to try and figure out exactly how that one went down because I remember it being relatively close. University of Delaware fired back multiple times in many, many close games. And so I think the question is, what kind of improvements have we seen out of University of Delaware more so than anything else? Right, and I mean, it's... Okay, it's a it's a lineup for them. I mean, they they went close against UTA, so to go up against a team that actually lost to UTA just this week, you would expect RIT to actually be a little bit more of a formidable opponent or a little bit more of a possible opponent for UD, and it's already off to a good start. Like you mentioned, the 1-0 just within a minute. Yeah, 2-3-4-1... Two, two, uh, close score lines here. For this UD RIT game. Now heading into it, it's already UD with the early lead. It was UD with the early lead, though, previously on. They started the series off strong, but struggled later when RIT starts to turn up that pressure. So it's getting real confident with these balls. That's when they start to become real threats. Now we see on the attack, Sunblaze with the shot off the post. Bindo to finish it off. 1 1. RIT tie up the scoreline. Well, there you go. We already get the clap back from RIT, and that's going to be a good play from Sunblaze, making their way over. And most of the UD side, they were stuck over to that midfield area right when they were trying to make that play. And it all came down to a big assist coming in from Sunblaze. Already a good start. Already off to a great start right now. Tied up at 1 1. 50 50 in the air. Human L not going to be getting the better of that. However, it does go back down on the ground, who plays over to Fever. Trying to get this cross and just searching for that shot opportunity. And Grau's got it. Goes for the shot off the post. Human L not quite there to finish it. However, will catch a rebound. Sets up. Wow, Raymond what a pass. Takes it. Bindo, great save. Plays it into the corner. Now RIT looking to fire back yet another goal here. Centers it. It's going to be taken by Grau. Played off the corner. The cross is in. Will there be a man to finish it? Human L just a little bit too far up to receive that one. Beaver up on the front lines. He's going to get demoed by Bindo. And even then, Human L continuing the play. They're just waiting for their teammate to get kind of reset here, and they do. They all have their boosts back up. But here comes Sunblaze. Oh, Take it in slow! Oh! Sunblaze, you mad man! Slow okay, and methodical, man. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh shit! Oh my god, and then the 50 50 with another fake. Come on, man. Sunblaze! He beats all three of them! Okay. What's wrong with you? You'll like to see that. You'll like to see that. You know, that just I don't know. That 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 play looks sadistic in a sense, don't you think? 
Oh, you know he took great pleasure in breaking those ankles right there. Absolutely destroying the UD defense with a series of fakes. Now, though, UD are mad. They're searching for a fire back. Caso, though, trying to put an end to that one. Human L gets a nice touch. Sunblaze going to be the man to receive it. Takes a shot. Save will be had, though. Growl, of course, the rotations from UD being pretty much their strongest suit. They're going to almost always have a man in goal. You have to take a better shot than that if you want to beat them. Big boot from Casso over to the right. Fever going to keep the play going. Casso has to redirect again, but Sunblaze is going to be ready for the mistake. In comes Human L. Has to stop it, but no, he will not. Ball is stuck over towards the blue side, and Grau is just in a... He's just in a mid-air battle, just trying to get this one away, and Fever makes his way in. He's going to end up missing. Human L up in the air. Same with Grau. Oh my gosh, Human L was so close, but he had no boost to actually contest that last shot. Pass from Bindo. I was about to say pass, but instead that's going to be the double tap towards the backboard. Grau, pass over. Fever, shot. Casso, perfect spot. Now yet another counterattack. Great stuff by UD. And honestly, this game is starting to feel less like cars, more like planes. It's a dogfight out here up mine. And it looks like UD are trying <laughs> to take him down. RIT, though, flying high, stopping that goal. Human L's got another shot, though, and Bindo is back for the save. The rotations from RIT have Ooh. been very, very good. No amount of overaggression. They're balancing that usual fast-paced play very, very well. Fever bouncing it off the corner. Bindo trying to stop it, but no, it won't happen. Opportunity for UD. Fever, he's actually going to bump it off the wall, and it's going to go up the little ramp. And again, here comes Sunblaze. 1v1, gonna go for a flip, but instead it's gonna be Grau with a stop. Fever with a clear. Bindo doesn't stop, or Bindo is not gonna let it pass. Grau with a big boot. Caso stops it. Human L trying to pinch off the corner, but instead it's gonna be Fever right behind him. Gonna hit the wall, 20 seconds left. Both teams just trying to contest for this last goal, but instead, oh my, the goal completely empty. And now we have ourselves overtime potential. Both teams tied two to two, going to the last 15 seconds of the game. And finally that aggression is punished. The goalkeeper steps out for the 50-50 that he didn't stand a chance of winning. And University of Delaware with their solid offensive rotations take away a goal at the last possible second. Could fire in another though. 10 seconds left on the clock. Plenty of time. This ball to find the back of the net. Bino takes the shot. Follow up by Grau. He's going to be there for this save. Three seconds on the clock. Waiting for it to touch the ground. UD not done with it yet. They could keep this up off the wall. They could hold on his attack. It's off the corner. He has an opportunity. But it's going to be played That's it. down by the University of Delaware. We're heading into overtime. Gus, take us away. Absolutely, my friend. So overtime. This is the first time that we've seen it all today. And it's golden goal format. First team to get a goal. They win this game. So, man, I mean, this is this is what Rocket League is all about, my friend. I mean, we see this so much in competitive play. We just see overtimes, I mean, almost almost every set in a sense. That's purely because of how highly competitive these teams might be. So, to see this early, it's a good showcase to see what these teams might have going into the rest of our set. In comes Bindo, trying to clear it. Fever is here for the collection. Up for Human L. Human L just lays it on in, but that's going to be a save for Bindo. A little bit of a double commit, but some blaze is going to be down. Oh my god, missed there from Casso. He jumps early. Human L going to miss his shot. Yet another one going towards the goal. The rotation is breaking for RIT. In comes Grau. Trying to take it towards the middle. It's it's right in! Oh no! Casso! That's an own goal! And that's UD! They win the game off of an own goal! Oh no! Oh man, Casso. He's kicking himself right now, but this series is far from over here for RIT. In fact, this is exactly the same way we saw the series go earlier on in the season. 3-2 in the first game for UD in overtime UD clutching it out at the last second Grau coming up big with the hat trick as well three goals five shots two saves this man is on fire right now yeah absolutely absolutely and I man I I don't know at this point I don't know who to give this to I think this is the first time that we've actually seen like like an actual like non-discrepancy in a sense so right now I'm just excited to see what these two teams have to actually you know pull out in this next game because Again, rotations are just perfect on both sides. Midfield is pretty much a war zone. And, I mean, I, I don't know what's going on, man, but I'm excited. Let's see what happens in our next game as we have game two already queued up. I think war zone is the exact right way to put this field right now. 50-50s left and right. These players all go in absolute oh my mock God. two. And with that mock two, Casa is going to be taking 
out the opponent right now. UD now down a player. Will be back on the attack, though. Fever searching for a crosshair. Might just go for the shot. Taps it over. Grabs that for the receive. No! Nothing! But the goalkeeper stopped, and the human is there for the follow-up. Big pressure going on towards the goal. Fever tries to get it over for Grau. That was already a perfect opportunity for UD. But instead, you already had Human L coming in. What a great support player Human, is, uh, Human L is at this point. I mean, he was just waiting for it. He was already ready for the rotation period. But he saw that the ball would be kind of dribbling over to that spot. That the rest of RIT wouldn't be able to kind of predict that, that landing spot for the ball. So he was just able to tap that in pretty perfectly. 30, 30 seconds already into the game. And we already have yet an opportunity from UD. Save from Castle. He's going to take that forward off of a 50-50. In comes Sunblaze. He's not going to be able to get a shot either. Wow, UD is just shutting down RIT here in the midfield. I feel like we've seen a complete playstyle swap right now. University of Delaware are playing with the aggression and confidence that we usually see out of RIT. Going for literally every single 50-50. These players are on top of the ball no matter where it is on the field. And it looks so good for them right now. No way. From RIT, but it's just a little bit too slow. Now Grau back on the attack goes for the passing play to his teammate. Human L not able to receive. In fact, gets a little tripped up. Now an opportunity made for RIT. Benio goes for the double touch, but not quite able to find his teammate. Now his ball is played back towards That's the in. goal and Grau finds one from across the field. Yeah, coast to coast in a sense. I mean, Sunblaze. I mean, uh, Bindo actually was going to go for that little pass over to the middle. Kind of using that flip in midair, but couldn't it angle his car right wasn't going at the right speed and in the end ud they were just able to hail mary it down the field and they're able to get that second goal man rit they look mortal for the first time in a very long time yeah university of delaware doing a great job of actually outpacing rit which is something i never thought i'd say ever university right. of texas arlington when we see them play rit they keep up and then they beat them by just punishing over aggression what University of Delaware have done is just take RIT. Oh, no! Oh, no. oh off the post! Caso in an unfortunate place. I think it was Caso at least in goal. Backflip, sticks himself in there. Or oh, Bindo. No, yeah, it was Bindo. Bad, man. That feels bad. That's unfortunate. So that's yet another own goal here in the hands of RIT. And within a minute and a half in, UD. Already finding themselves primed for a spot here in the grand finals. But again, this is a best of five, and there's still a lot of time for RIT to just chip away at this attack, and that's going to be a great start for them. Caso on the I'm front lines, off of the clear from Bindo. Good stuff. I'm sorry to call you wrong, but if you think RIT of all teams can't score three goals in three minutes, you are crazy. This team moves like no other, and I, went, I can't wait to see them turn it around. They carry momentum like nobody else. This one goal behind them, I am certain that it is doing a number for their confidence. However, Human L is in for a shot. Kasu playing it out here. And RIT, they're not out of this one yet. The ball center. Bindo could shoot this, but he's going to off the play a little bit more defensively. The flip comes in from Grau. Grau! The shot goes for the flip, but Bindo with a great save. And another big opportunity, Fever. Knocking it up. He's just going to try to keep the ball forward to allow his team to collect those boosts to kind of reset themselves, and they do. In comes Human L, knocking it forward. Same thing with Grau. No one's going to be behind him. Instead, it's going to be Sunblaze with a big boot. Fever already ready for the save, though. And I think a weird stat that we can kind of look at in this game is the time in between touches on the ball between both of these teams. Right? So we look at the other series where teams are playing significantly slower. It's those lower-seeded teams. That's it. And RIT Bindo's found an opportunity out of absolutely nowhere in the midfield. He creates one all by himself. Yeah. Yeah, he just wins that simple 50-50, and I mean, that that's as simple as a goal as you're going to get all game. Good stuff from RIT, but they're not back in it just yet. They still need one more to tie it up. Yeah, like I was saying, the time between touches here. These teams are all over this ball, which is something that's weird to say for a team like UD. But I love to watch this high-octane Rocket League right now. This one, it's about... The boost meters are full, the Mach 2 is activated, and they are just flying at this ball. What? Krauss found a shot. But it's not quite going to find it back in the net. Man, I was about to say, no one back for RIT. And actually, good abort there from Fever, leaving Grau to get back on the ball. And even then, they still continue the pressure. Grau just tried to get a redirect over the middle, but it doesn't work. Instead, Fever still continuing the pressure. In comes Casso, and actually, Bindo with a redirect. Big opportunity. 
for RIT. In comes Casso, keeping it forward. Grau claps on back and wins the 50 50 against Bindo. A minute and a half left. Only one goal separates the two. Not too big of a difference between these two teams and RIT. We've seen it before. They can score in the blink of an eye. Sunblaze has the ball up. 50 50s there, but Bindo. Will just happily retrieve this ball and take another attempt for Wait. the side of RIT. Graldo gets the intercept. The human is up. Oh, the intercept doesn't quite connect. Still an opportunity. Sunblaze. Oh, no. Finds himself in an awkward position. Now an opportunity. Human L just tries to take it forward. Big save from Grau. That ball was going directly for goal off of the clear. And actually, big demo. Something that we haven't seen come into play whatsoever in any of our games. That demo play in the back lines would be just so critical against i i mean such a rotation heavy team such as this ud squad and yet another one comes in sunblaze takes down fever and he's still forcing the ball forward 30 seconds left human l just tries to lay it forward just to try to get the nail in the coffin but it said it's not going to happen Grow another opportunity bounces it towards the roof fever keeping it going it's right towards goal fever wins it again four to two for ud and I was just about to say what this UD side wouldn't do for one more goal here. And that is going to add so much comfort onto their scoreline. RIT is still very doable from their eyes. I've seen them score crazier stuff in shorter amounts of time. If there's a team that can do it, it's going to be them. But it is a tall ask right now. Caso going out. Going to allow Bino to win that 50-50. The ball's headed towards their goal. Gets a tap over someplace. Goes to the touch up. caso has got boost for this. Could go for it. The pinch, though, heads out wide with 10 seconds left on the clock. That's the timer is ticking down, and RIT might just be staring in the face of a game point. Oh, and they finish it. That's the nail in the coffin. And now UD up 5-2. to two. Four seconds left. That is it for our second game. UD out of nowhere. Explode into a 2-0 lead in this series. Door, what can you make out of this for RIT at this point? I mean, University of Delaware is playing out of their minds right now. I have never seen this team move at such a pace and honestly up against RIT, whose entire personality and play style is based around how fast they're able to play. The best thing, what they need to do is clean up their rotations, right? What they need to do is have a little more confidence in these 50 50 have a little bit better rotations so that they can win them. But they're being outdone at the thing they do best by University of Delaware right now. It is a tough ass to see them fix it. But if we can find that confidence they found after that first goal, I can see RIT getting back into this one by just being more confident in their decision making, giving them that little bit of speed more that they need to maybe catch up the University of Delaware right now. Gotcha. Ladies and gents, we're going to reset the server because it seems like one of the players are having a problem at the moment. So we are going to be back in just a couple of seconds. In the meantime, however, I would invite you guys to, you know, follow the family of social medias that EGF has at official EGF on Twitter, at official EGF on Instagram. And also these two teams or, you know, a couple of teams in this league are representing the Mac conference. So please follow Mac over at at Mac Esports. And of course, you can follow myself on Twitter at upmind underscore and you can follow door at door underscore casts we're going to be back in literally just a couple of seconds we will be right back Ladies and gentlemen, we are back and we have our next game already set up. Are you guys ready for game three? Can RIT bring it back? I think they can, but will they? Let's see what happens. However, we're going to jump in right into our game three. Door, run us through what we've seen so far. We have seen University of Delaware dominance, but it has been in a close fashion. RIT fired back nearly every time, but just unable to fully close that gap. And now UD already starting off again. Fever, this man's been on fire since last game. 
as his third goal in what feels like all of 30 seconds right now and University of Delaware continue their absolute stranglehold. And already six seconds in, UD exploding for a goal, and that's been the story of this entire time. And man, oh, I mean, Caso? okay, Caso okay. was going for them for some tricky stuff to say the least, but that's just a snipe goal all the way from mid by Sunblaze. So this game, not exactly cut and dry just yet. As I mean, hey, RIT. They still have that spirit. They still have the fact that all of these players are very individually skilled. Let's see what it, what can actually happen in the rest of this game, though. Because, again, UD, you mentioned, once they get on the attack, they just do not stop. But what? 50-50 oh, oh, from Caso. He ends it, up winning a ball is still forward. You mentioned individual prowess. And honestly, as much as UD have been winning a series consistently, RIT are a dead even Ooh. match for them right now. Hell, maybe even better as they go up 2-1. I believe that's their first lead in the series. I believe so, yes. That's their that's our first lead thus far, other than maybe in the first game, if I'm not mistaken. We might have seen something there. But otherwise, it's just been relatively cut and dry between the two teams. I mean, relatively cut and dry is not... As much as it is clean Rocket League, I feel like this is just a slugfest right now. Back and forth between the two of them. Grau's going to come in, take a shot. Everything's being ripped in midfield. These guys going up for every single 50-50. No wow. ball. But this one in the center of the field. Hell, Bindo's even going to try and win that one over. And he will succeed, stopping that goal from going in for UD. Ball is still middle. Sunblade just taking it over to the side. And Human L, good stop too. Grau's going to be able to continue. It's a two-on-one. Grau takes it mid, and that's the stop. Caso brute forcing his way through multiple players. And he just... Oh, he floats it on towards goal, but Fever is there for the save, and now a counterattack. Oh, Grau wins it, but that's going to hit the post again. It's just wide here by Grau, University of Delaware. No, not done with this attack. Caso plays it out wide. Grau to intercept Fever for another one of those shots. Can this man do it again? No. Sunblaze plays it out. We're going coast to coast to coast to coast to coast. As he <laughs> would say, back and forth, side to side, and these teams... Are oh my god. Now, maximum pace, maximum acceleration. All right, Dino, <laughs> might just get the last lap. The shot's over. Caso's laying it in. Bindo, follows. That's a goal! It finishes! There it is! RIT! And this seemingly scoreless game. Man, and it's looking like a Michael Bay film at times, too. We saw the two straight demos earlier, <laughs> and now RIT, they don't stop on the attack either. And I mean, you mentioned that this was their. Their kind of their play style throughout the regular season, non-stop action, non-stop momentum, just keeping their attacks going, unrelenting no matter what. And uh, it seems like the X factor for UD at this point is, uh, I mean, forehead just get some balls on net. Realistically, they haven't had any sort of opportunity th uh, towards that orange side just yet. So they just need those opportunities. They just need to get those Hail Marys, those stops off the 50-50s going, and they keep losing them. Another win from Caso on yet another 50-50. Ball oh keeps God. going, going to hit the wall. And a demo on Caso. Michael Bay film. These cars blowing up left or right. I'm pretty sure Sunblaze is a couple kills away from a tactical nuke right about now. <laughs> what RIT are proving that they are more than happy playing this way just all out bloodbath on the field Grau trying to demo over Sunblaze doesn't quite catch him instead just bumping cars around left and right it's a gladiatorial arena for automobiles right now but it's UD who are taking the L with two minutes left in this game though they've got plenty of time to score here comes Bindo up to Casso, but instead it's going to be stopped by Humanel. He keeps on going. Grau stops it towards midfield, and he's still midair. Sunblaze, he's going to get bumped off his ooh, bumped off his mark too, but it's going to be an easy cut and dry clear from Casso. However, the ball was played over to the side of University of Delaware. They're going to be more than happy to take this one. Sunblaze stuck on the UD end of the field. 2v2 in the orange half. Grau has a shot, but Sunblaze blows him up at the perfect time. Another! He sets the goal up for Caso. This could be just three. But a stop from Grau. The only player alive out of the three. Now they can just keep it going. And another one for Bindo. I, I think RIT made on their strategy. The miscommunication. 
Oh, they leave the ball up and two members try to leave it for one another. RIT let off the gas pedal for all of a tenth of a second and Fever punishes. Yeah, that's nuts. I mean, you saw you saw Casso and yet another teammate. They weren't able to communicate which player was actually going to go for the ball at that point, And both of them backed off. That's just unfortunate, but fortunate if you're... <laughs> If you're... Hold on, what's this? Yet another opportunity? I was about to say, Delaware. No, oh, they, oh, I was about God. to say, Delaware. They're just not getting many opportunities. The smallest of opportunities, they're taking it all the way into the goal. But that's just it. Human L fights through two players over in the corner. And Grau's just in there. Floats it on in. The slimmest of margins. And that's a 3-3 three to three with just about a minute left. UD, one more goal. And they're in grand finals. UD searching to send this one home, but RIT trying to take us to a five-game series. Casso's up. Gets a 50-50 drop straight to the Human L who's got a shot here. UD trying to seal this one out. One minute remaining on the clock. The horn is sounded. The bells have tolled. And RIT... No way! Never the ball That's going to be in! He's got the shot, and he's up to the pressure. Puts the ball in. 4-3. RIT not done yet. Yeah, big mistake there. I mean, you had Human L. He got a little bit too greedy over to the midfield. He was looking for a boost that just simply wasn't there. And now with 50 seconds left, RIT, they might find a nail in the coffin soon if they could just slip slip by and yet another one of those plays. Human L. Wow! Caso, he set up. But there's oh, no great redirect. Here. Sunblaze has to follow up, though. He's going to play it up off the backboard. What a shot. He had another save. He That's it. Unbelievable. So there it is. Has to be the nail in the coffin. 40 seconds left. Two goals. I mean, it can't be that tall of a task for UD. But man, oh man. I mean, it, it would just be tough for them to come back, period, against any team in this sort of margin. RIT, they haven't been giving up too many attacks, period. They were able to get two within a minute. No way. No way. Fever's there for the follow-up, though. That's it. 30 seconds. Sunblaze received Has to 30 be it. seconds on the clock. No way, Jose, dude. UD have every opportunity. We've seen them score relatively fast with 20 seconds on the clock every single time this ball is touched by RIT. It is critical time now for University of Delaware. Kasa's got it in the corner. He is buying so much time. Playing in no man's land. Goes for that's the demolition. That's it. Sunblade that's time. It. And that's got to be it. 10 seconds left on the clock. University of Delaware have given their all, but there's no way they're ending this one in just three games. No, absolutely. It's going to be a 2-1. And we're going to see RIT continue to go back and forth in our first multi-game series. So, man, oh, man. RIT. Surely showing, uh, showing some offensive prowess throughout that entire time. And both teams, they just have to stay stellar on the defense almost the entire time. Because, like you mentioned, slimmest of margins for the attack. The smallest of mistakes is going to let you up with a goal. And we saw there that's a high-scoring affair, a 5-3 to three. Let's see what actually happens, however, in this next one. Because it already seems like our players are ready. They're not ready to stop whatsoever. They already have the momentum. They're just going to keep going. All right. RIT, they've got the momentum. We know how much RIT can do with momentum. University of Delaware now on the back foot. Still, though, at game point. RIT can't slip up at all right now. The pace has to be the same. They can't afford to make mistakes. And right now, they are looking like they're not ready to make any. What a shot. From Casso, but it's going to go a little bit wide. Human L continuing the play. Growl has to continue. Oh, no. Casso takes control of it, but it was a little bit weird. Now, Bindo trying to contest over to the corner. Growl with a shot, but it's going to get cleared once again. Human L, another opportunity. Take it, it takes it towards the corner, but he actually flips it over on his tire. A little bit of a mistake, and here comes the counterattack. Casso, he gets blown up immediately. And now Human L, he can start it up, and Sunblaze clears it. Taste of his own medicine there with the demolition. University of Delaware out for blood right now. And I'm sure there's a certain degree of just momentum that you can carry even if you lose. When you're flying at this degree of pace that both these teams are moving at, a single goal isn't going to stop you from just gas pedaling your way over to that ball regardless of the wow. position it's in. And so you see both these teams are still at the same pace regardless of wins, regardless of losses. These guys are operating at 100%. They both need this victory, and they both understand what it's going to take to get it. Bindo over the middle again. Sunblaze is going to lay it in front of goal, but Bindo is not going to be ready to go for it. Still another opportunity. Casso tries to get another pass over to mid. RIT, they haven't left this ball. Leave this half field just yet. It's been on this blue side forever, it seems. 
And Grau, he's tried to start something. He does have the boost for it. Has to win the 50-50, but he just cannot. Sunblaze, beautiful follow-up off of Bindo. And yet another clear from Fever. And the defense from UD has been spectacular, but they've got to get this out. They've got to get on the attack at some point in time here, but they just can't. Kaso and Bindo are doing such a good job of attacking, keeping the pressure on, winning these 50-50s. There's another one. It goes forward to Grau, though, who's going to play it out. Kaso gets a nice little touch out wide to Bindo. Plays it up, waiting for a teammate now, but it's only Fever who goes up in the air to try and bring this one down. Gets another touch, which is great for his side. Makes it awkward for RIT and makes a great cross in here for Grau. Goes back out to Fever, though. He's going to lay it out to the Human L. Pass above. Human L has a shot. No goal scored thus far. I mean, we talked about high scoring affairs, but we have not seen a 0 0 when we pass the halfway mark of a game just yet. These two are as even as we can get, folks. Oh, we just. Oh, no. Halfway. Okay. That 0 0, you might have just cursed over RIT there. But now, UD, they've got a pulse. They can play some offense here. They don't have to be on the back foot all the time. They've gotten their momentum back, and Human L. Searching for the shot. Just going to be yet another cross here. Sunblaze catches it with the intercept. Grau, though, and calmly dribbles one. Flicks it wow, what a dribble. Wall, gets another one. He gets across. Wow, Bindo. Guaranteed. He does it. Fakes him out. Picasso gets That's a shot. Wow. The shot, but Sunblaze, the save. Unbelievable. And now Human L, yet another pass over to mid. Bindo, great save. There goes a floater. Going towards bottom left. Picasso, he has the time to flip away. And yet another one. 150 left. Both teams. So many attacks going back and forth. Finally, UD. They have some sort of footing in terms of that attacking side. Human L towards the corner. Caso tries to clear, but it might just set up Grau. It's going all the way back. Fever has to go away. And he's going to get the save. Oh, just in time. The man gets back. Sets his team up. Human L goes for the air drill, but a great intercept. Allows the ball to head over the way of Sunblaze. He's going to try and tap it center. It's back and forth and back and forth across this field we go. There have been miles and miles driven, but neither team has found the back of the net yet. Kaso needs this touch right now, or else it's going to be awkward when Fever gets this cross in. Allows him to play into the human L. Up for 50-50. Forced back out wide by RIT. Been on the back foot for a while now. It could be trouble, but a great demolition from Sunblaze is going to relieve a lot of that pressure. Allow them to pick that boost back up and allow Sunblaze to try and play this ball out. But same thing for UD, though, because Human L, he just went up for it, knowing that he was going to allow his teammate to get some time to get to a boost and just allow oh, his teammate to get the rotation. There it is. Finally, four minutes into the game, and we finally have our first goal, and that just might be it. Human L contesting a 50-50 midair in front of the goal, and Fever is just going to be ready for that shot. 50 seconds left in our game, and it's a 1-0 for UD. Reminder, this is a 2-0. Or, I'm sorry, a 2-1. And now UD, they're so, so close to just finishing this off. You know, as a caster, I'm not supposed to be biased, but my god, if RIT could just take us to five games here, it would be so... No way! The goal's in! Kaso does it! Puts it in and just a minute left on the clock. That's not a caster's curse, my friend. That's a caster's blessing. Because I was about to say, I also really want to see this entertaining Rocket League, to say the least. Because, man, I mean, RIT, they've been keeping it close. UD, they've been keeping it close. And to watch maybe one more game of this close affair, it wouldn't be all that bad, would it? 30 seconds left on the clock, however. UD might just have to find a hero performance to finish off this game. Good clear from Sunblaze. Human L going to be able to shoot it forward. But Bindo, easy oh, shot. Sunblaze. Oh, tries to get it forward, but it doesn't matter. Oh, Grau, though. Quick thinking on his feet. Turns around. Blocks a shot. Oh, no. Oh, so he's got 1v1. One. He can do anything with this. Sets up his teammate. bino has got the ball up. Goes for a second touch, but Fever's there for the touch out. Five no seconds, boost. And the ball's up in the air. Plays it down to Bindo. This could go to Grau, though. The ball's in the air here for University of Delaware. What? For this cross. Fever! Fever has a shot, but Bindo! Bindo! Oh, my God. We're in the <laughs> Oh, my God. Here we go again. Ball over to the left. Human L. Going downfield. Barely has any boost, but he's going to be able to flip towards it. Here comes Grau. Almost runs into his own teammate, but he knows. Oh, no. Pass towards the middle. Sunblaze is ready for it. Yet another overtime in our hands. UD, they won the last one, but can they do it again? Bindo over towards the right. Grau ready for the pass. He's going to go right on forward, going directly into Bindo. 50-50. Fever more or less wins it. Is now it's in the control of Grau. What a pass! What a goal! UD! They win the 
semifinals and they're in the grand finals what a performance our third seed is in it what a team play from ud and they have shown up against the second seed rit and they're in the grand finals what a game and the team that moved them down to third seed, RIT, are defeated. UD beat their demons, get their revenge, send themselves on to a grand final. And my God up, mine, was that a match? I, <laughs> ladies and gents, hydration is key. And I think at this point, we need a little bit of a water break. So man, oh man, what a game. Probably game of the tournament. No matter what we see next, potentially, you know, UD versus their opponents in Grand Finals might be a close one. But we do have a little bit of an X Factor for you guys in this top four. We have ourselves Maris showing up against our number one seed, UTA, playing up next on stream. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not tune away whether you're watching on Mixer, YouTube, or Twitch. We'll be right back with some more EGF Rocket League playoff action. My name is Upmind. You can follow me on Twitter at Upmind underscore. You can follow my man Door over here at Door underscore casts. We'll be right back.
Ladies and gentlemen, after that barn burner of a semifinal between RIT and UD, we do have a little bit of a <laughs> we have a moment at least to talk about our next game, our next series between Marist and UTA. Man, what what another big game that we have coming up next? UTA, our number one seed coming into this tournament, and we have Maris coming in as the number four. It would be a big upset if they could pull forward because I've been saying this entire time, oh, the top three seeds, they've been dominating this entire time. But Maris is not any team to scoff at. We've been talking about their MVP so far, Tones, as he's just been a, an insane X factor for this Maris team. But every single player is just going to have to be on their A game if they want to take down UT Arlington to make it into grand finals. Yeah, I mean, we were joking in the time uh, just before now, before the mics were on. It's, it's going to be University of Texas Arlington versus Tones. The guy's a one-man army, and we've seen him do great stuff before. And that's not to say, that's not to sleep on the rest of Maris. They're great, but Tones is playing out of his mind today. And I promise you, Maris is going to need every last ounce of that if they want to win this game. Yeah, man, absolutely. Absolutely. And it seems already our teams are ready and raring to go. So door, are you ready? My friend? Oh, I couldn't be more ready after a series like that, man. My blood is going. I am ready. And Maris is taking a kickoff. Samba already in the front lines, but Cypher already a good clear and actually out of reach for Echo Clutch. Opportunity. Z Ball gonna go for the shot, but it's too slow. Echo Clutch is gonna be there all day, every day, but Tones already in the front lines, shutting it down over to the midfield. Cypher, 1v1 against Adverse, gonna miss it out. Adverse with a shot, gonna take it forward. Z Ball with a clear. And right now they're just playing some volleyball at this point, just shots going back and forth. And it's, uh, that's essentially how this early game is going to go out, unless UT Arlington can just find some sort of aggressive play. Yeah, UT Arlington, they want to break this silence. They want to take a lead right now, but it's going to be a struggle. Uh, Maris are not about to just roll over right now. Tones has a shot. Goes for 50-50 up against Echo Clutch. Cypher's in for the save. Feels backflip, man, but he won't be punished for it. D-Ball as well. Gets the setup. Now he can try and dribble it out up against Samba and Echo Clutch. Wins a 50-50. Here's a good opportunity for the side of Maris. The adverse is there for the clear. Same thing with Echo Clutch. Actually, Echo Clutch misses. So that's going to hit backboard. <clears throat> In comes Samba. Great pass from Echo Clutch. In comes Adverse. He wins the mid-air 50-50. Now in comes Cypher. He's going to miss it. Samba, good pass. Tone's going to miss also. Now big opportunity. Echo Clutch through the veil of other orange players. Makes it on through. That has to be the goal. Adverse, oh, he adverse. takes his time, but Tone's is there. Tones barely gets there in time. The one car that Adverse couldn't account for, and it caught him off guard. Now, though, UTA still in the driver's seat. Z-Ball's got a shot up off the backboard. Echo Clutch going to look to touch this one out wide. And this is the struggle here for Maris. Finding the back of the net against a defense like UTA, who is going to play every single ball and play for every single ball. Whether it be off the top of the backboard or whether it be straight at the goal, there is going to be a man in your way, and you have to just outplay them. Here comes Echo Clutch, 1v1, and he wins it. Two minutes in, and we get our first goal, and it's going to be on the side of UTA. The Batmobile sneaks one in here just over top Cypher, turns around a little bit too early. It, it's a struggle there, though, because you can either ghost him and stay facing the same direction or risk turning around and getting beat on the jump, but that's exactly what Echo Clutch is waiting for, and Echo Clutch has him out. Now Adverse, though, up over top of the goal, sets down a very dangerous ball here. That's how going to look to play up and over. Three-man challenge, and it's going to be Maris taking the victory on that one little one. But Echo Clutch cool. has a redirect here. Z-Ball, though, for the save. And Z-Ball, 1v1 against Adverse. Adverse will win that all day, every day. A little bit too slow for him. Tonesy's going to miss the backflip. In comes Samba, going to hit it all back. He's going for the double. But instead, Z-Ball is there also. In comes Adverse, wow! Redirecting it off the roof, right into the goal, but it's a save again. Halfway through this game, and we've only seen big opportunities from UTA. I wanna see some fireworks from Marist. Yeah, like, well, like I said, it's finishing off these shots, it's gonna be the real struggle right now, but honestly, Marist is wow! out of minds. But as I say that, Adverse puts in another one off a of missed rotation. Yeah, he slides on in. The team had pretty much no clue that Adverse would just be in that corner, ready and raring to go for that shot. And he just slides it on in between the two players. That's a 2-0 for UTA. 
before I was so rudely interrupted, I was going to say Maris is playing really well. It's, <laughs> it's not the Tones show right now. It's the whole team showing up, stopping this bleeding. It's two minutes left in the game, and UTA have only scored two goals. That's a miracle by anyone. Wow. In fact, Tones is going to find the back of the net. Lobs one over in UTA and caught out on a very rare over aggression. Yeah, absolutely. That one just kind of kind of just floats his way on in. And uh, and Tones seems like he's backing at it, but again, Marist, they're going to need another one of those if they want to tie up against UTA. Yeah, and that's a tough call even getting the first one in here is going to be a struggle, but a demolition. They got time to both up off the crossbar Tones. Wow. Got the score against UTA. We're tied. I can't believe my eyes up mine. We're actually tied. Okay. So that ball, I mean, I thought that Cypher would actually be able to get in that shot, but because of the angle of the ball hitting the post, easy shot for Tones. He'll will never miss one of those shots. At least I hope. I don't want someone to clip that. So later, whenever Tones does miss that one, you just have me in the background just like, yeah, no, Tones will never miss out that one. But again, with 140 left in the game, we're all tied up at 2-2. Two two. UT Arlington, though, not a team to scoff at yet. You've gotten the score even, but you can't get comfortable right now. Tones has the shot. Samba is behind. He goes to the demolition, jumps out of the way. Now Echo Clutch going to force the ball over to the other side of the field. Z-Ball not in a position or in a boost state that he can really challenge. Double commit, though, from Maris. Could be punished here. Z-Ball gets the ball, looks for a dribble across the field. Might just go for the 1v1. Chips it over. Samba, though, gets the save just in time. <laughs> it was just waiting. Playing out with the hearts of UTA. But finally, what? That's a goal! Cypher in the middle! He shuts down the shot from UTA! And that's gonna be the lead for Maris out of nowhere! UTA, they haven't lost a game of Rocket League in a long time here in this EGF League, but man, this could be it. Has UTA lost a game all season? I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely checking this, Gus, hold on. Check, please, check, please. I'll take it from here. In comes Adverse. Off the wall, doesn't have the boost to actually approach, so he's just going to have to depend on the jump. In comes Samba, Hail Mary. Z-Ball's going to be able to clear easily. Same thing with Tones, he keeps it going. Echo Clutch over to middle, floating it on in. In comes Adverse, saved by Tones. And again, Echo Clutch, 1v1. Tones is going to be able to clear, but that's a floater. Samba going to be able to control it midair. Going to hit the corner, that's a boomer of a shot. 30 seconds left, Cypher with a shot. Gonna go a little bit wide and Adverse is there. Good movement from Adverse. Gonna hit the corner oh, no. again. Here comes Samba. Lay it all in. Z-Ball. We clear. By Tones. But an oh, amazing. He's got a shot. He's got a shot. He can do this. Above no way. Where Adverse can't do anything. So That's it. Shot. Four, two, what? Holy Three, Lord. First team all season to take a game off of University of Texas Arlington and two goals up. I've said this so many times today, but that is the nail in the coffin 12 seconds left in the game two goals up maris has won a game over uta are you joking me balls touchdown i am not counting my chickens till they hatch tones lays one over balls on the ground here for samba two one that's it that is it maris have done the impossible and that's not even winning a series against uta that's taking a game off of this texas team how on earth earth up mine what is going on <laughs> that's all i was like what what is actually going on <laughs> so much back and forth man i can't i think i'm out of sorts i think i think we need to recollect our thoughts you know maybe Dude, maybe I'm maybe what is going on i'm literally shaking and crying no okay <laughs> i think at the, i think at this point maris man i mean it, their rotations at least in the midfield they are stellar man they are so stellar and uh, I don't I don't know what UTA can do at this point other than just just keep that aggression going on the front field This is uh this is intense. This is intense Let's go Second game on the board and gentlemen This is some of the best Rocket League that EGF has to offer you're watching UTA faced at actually a 1-0 Lead right now by Marist. I didn't think I'd be saying that one today, but my god I am not impressed right now by what this blue side is doing. All right, but this is where the real UTA magic can come in. I mean, they're they're known as just being good, fundamental Rocket League players, aggressive as all hell, rotations on point. 
So maybe, you know, maybe that, that was just the little nip in the bud that they needed to wake up. Maybe to get back into things. But, oh my god, Z-Ball going right towards the roof. Controlled by Tones. Cypher tries to get the shot, but Samba just holds. Z-Ball, no! He, oh. uh, he misflips. It's alright, I think it works out for him because Echo Clutch got the touch on the ball. Yeah, wow, what a pass. position here to make save. Z-Ball gets back. That's it, Maris. Hold on for the time being. And that's the name of the game here. Hold on. Being able to continue this pressure against UTA is so, so key. Good Turning redirect. This momentum into a second game victory is going to be wow, so difficult cover. but they have to do it z ball's up for the shot lobs it over echo clutch will be there to set it down to his teammate a little bit of an awkward ball though wow this is They're awkward trying to get a touch in here on it cypher's gonna play it in towards the goal off of the corner tones looks for the touch echo clutch gonna dribble this one out z ball last man back touches it out wide buys time for his team to grab boost buys time for his team to make this save cypher gonna touch no it way position. big Never mistake puts in the first of the game wow the smallest of mistakes and that's gonna cost maris the first goal of the game adverse just boots it towards the corner and cypher wasn't able to get a good angle on the ball off the wall so that's just going to be an easy goal there from Adverse, a minute and a half in. All right, plenty of time for Maris to fire back. We saw them come down from a two-goal deficit in the last game. I'm sure they've got one in them right now, but Sama plays the ball down. It's a dangerous shot from Adverse, but not quite on target. Allowing him, though, to get this cross back in. Tones will be messing with that one back on the defense. And honestly, up mine, here's what I think happened. In between uh, this game and their previous one, What, Maris Samba? Uh huh. Maris have simply bought a cloning chamber, cloned right. tones, and they've got three of them on the field right now. I mean that that would that would be efficient, to say the least. That's all they I really mean, the needed. Way tones played first game is the way that every single one of these players is playing right now. This is what they need, my friend. Samba, good patience, but that's gonna leave the ball right in front. Echo Clutch gonna be able to get the clear, an easy clear. Actually, no one gonna be contesting that. Tones up front, passes up the ball. Samba goes right on beyond him. Cypher gonna try to go towards backboard, but Adverse quickly gets there. Echo Clutch, same thing, clears it out. We pass the halfway mark. UTA oh. still in the lead. Shot from oh. Samba. Wow, what a setup. All three <laughs> Maris players stuck looking like headless chickens right below that ball. Yeah, they had no clue to do. I don't think there was any boost on the blue side of the field there. They didn't have anything they could reach. The ball going off the backboard, all just stranded on the ground. Now with that 2-0 deficit, Maris, it's time to kick it into high gear again, my friends. Oh, Gus, are they listening? Are they listening? Oh, no. Okay, Tone's going to be able to clear. All right. Big boot from Tones. There goes Adverse. Samba on the front lines. Cover Cypher. Balls up and over. It's dangerous here for the side of Maris. They don't want to give up one more goal. That third goal is going to be so much harder to get back than that That's first it. and second. But it's going to go in regardless. Samba keeps up the pressure. And UT Arlington starting to regain that momentum. And Maris losing it all. The same cypher peels out a little bit too far from that goal. And gets a little bit too overconfident. And all of a sudden, UTA reaches 3-0 lead in what feels like zero time. This is what BO5 Rocket League sets are for. You get the explosion from one team, explosion from the other team, adjustments going back and forth, just play styles changing all the time, and this is what you need to happen. 150 on the clock now. And oh, I Tones, mean, he's got a shot. Oh my, we've barely seen any opportunities from Maris, as now UTA, their, their rotations has just, I, I don't know, it's changed on the dime. And even then, Maris, Tones? they're not done. 130 oh. left, and they need to take back two goals as Tones, he takes it back that one. Absolutely not. Great pass from Z-Ball. Plays it in towards his teammate. Textbook stuff here from Maris. Just keep the clean play going. That's all it is. The name of the game here against UTA is just don't make mistakes. You can make plays, yes, but I feel like it's so much more important that you just don't let any more goals in right now. Yeah, it's got to be. Oh, no! Oh, no. What a 50-50. Forces another one in here. Over the head of Tones. Nothing he could have done about it. Goes for the challenge. But it's just too damn much right now for this Maris side to handle. He is 4-1 to one for UTA. Nipping the momentum from Maris in the bud, like I mentioned before. And, man, I mean, now 
Maris can't exactly do much. They would need three goals in the next minute and a half, but oh. Uh oh, boy. I gotta stop. I, I have to stop. I seriously have to stop calling it like that. Oh <laughs> my maybe, maybe god. Maybe keep going. I, don't, I wouldn't mind a, a Maris tier. Oh. Maris <laughs> oh my goodness. Tones and his army are all about trying to win this game right now. Minute 20 left on the clock, and they're not done yet. Two goals in a very slow amount of time. In fact, even a third if you count the one that UTA fired back. But Echo Clutch is looking to do it again. Finds the pass to his teammate, but doesn't quite connect. Tone's there for the intercept. Now balls That's out Samba it. there to put it in, and no boost on the goalkeeper means a free goal for UTA. Again, immediately volley back. Yeah, these clears haven't exactly been the best for Maris, period, so far in this game. So far as, I mean... UTA, I mean, they, they eat those for breakfast, my friend. So, yeah, with just about a minute left, three goals in. Not going to jinx it anymore, but it's looking unlikely. You've got to be joking oh, me, right? You've got to be joking Jones. me. You've got to be. <laughs> I, I literally just said, I'm not going to jinx it, but it's not looking too good. One second after, bro. I, someone just told me to retire. I mean, I mean you're, you're not wrong. I mean, <laughs> I think at this point, I think at this point, I just, just step away from the mic and leave this last minute to you, Dor. Maybe. See what happens. I've aged 100 years in the past two games so far. These teams put me through so much stress, but Maris facing even more right now. Tones, though, he's found another shot off the target, though. The pressure's starting to get to the man, and he needs some reprieve right now from his teammates. They back up. Echo Clutch up, misses the ball. Touch will be had by Z-Ball. Played out now. It's all Maris, and Z-Ball's got the dribble. Touches up. 50-50 won by University of Texas Arlington. Samba's got the shot. It's up. It's over. No double touch. Add Tones with a great shot here, but Adverse has the rebound. Tones again off the back wall. Another save. Cypher's got to make the most of it. Fakes it because he doesn't have any boost. Has no way. Center. Also, Samba nearly an own goal there. Z-Ball tries to play in center, but he just can't reach. Cypher's looking for this touch, but Samba will not leave this goal line. The man, the myth, the wall right now. <laughs> As Adverse goes for the shot. Wow, the back, back flip. Tones. It's everywhere right now. Echo Clutch has it across the field, but there's just not any time left for this Maris side as one second ticks down in University of Texas Arlington tie our series up one to one. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Maris, UTA, you guys got what it takes. Let's see who's actually going to make it into that grand finals, however, because both of these teams they came to play and now i mean they're they're just going at it they're just going tit for tat and uta they're not ready to give this one up just yet looks like we are gonna have to wait a little bit more however because it looks like samba has actually left the server and I, I might just be restarting his internet or restarting his game something of the sort but ladies and gents we're gonna take a quick water break and i encourage oh, oh i think he's back oh i was about we're to good. say we're gonna take a water break right now hydration like like right now like i'm gonna take a sip of water everyone i encourage to do the same stay safe stay healthy stay home wash your hands watch more egf <sighs> yes sir yes sir <sighs> let's see all right all right Let, let's all right. Bre breather breather's been had all right absolutely it's been two matches straight of high octane rocket league absolutely high octane <laughs> I, I haven't taken a breath in an hour oh yeah <laughs> you've just been going off of like one big lung like, one, <laughs> one single continuous breath there, yeah <laughs> and uh right now marist i'm sure are holding their own they've got to fire back in this game We've seen them up. We've seen them down. Can they turn that momentum back into their favor is the question as we head into game three. Attack from Echo Clutch extremely early off the wall, but Tones is going to keep the play going. Tones again, oh, solo. Oh, wow. Oh, the finish just wasn't there. Yeah, and it was All a right. little bit too high and a little bit too fast. Z-Ball's not going to be able to get there whatsoever, and now Tones still on the front end. Z-Ball doing the same. Going to actually knock it towards the middle. That's That's rough. Can't be doing it clear like that. You have to boot it up field. And especially against this UTA team, it almost seems like they're all over the field. They at least need to restrict the opportunities. Ball towards the front end. Cypher with an opportunity saved by Adverse. And oh, another good, stop good, by, by Z-Ball. Wow. Uh, that but buys this team time to get back, though. Cypher's going to have an attempt on this ball. Wins that 50-50. Echo Clutch now up for it. Taps it towards the corner, but this is going to be free here for Z-Ball. Take whatever he wants, but Echo Clutch is going to make more of it. Makes the cross happen. Adverse down, That's balls out. up. Double touch doesn't happen, though. Adverse 
with a uncharacteristic mistake, but picked up by Echo Clutch. Wow, great play. Nice deflection here, though, by the defense. Ball goes centered. To great Average, save. Dribble it. Cypher, great stuff here wow. by Marath. Holding on tight. Gets Z-Ball a flick, but Samba again, always on that defense. He has been save after save for this UTA side. And I love that pre-jump from Samba too. Right as the ball was about to get hit, Samba was already up in the air, and all he had to do was just use his double jump and just get that ball out. Beautiful stuff from Samba. Beautiful heads out play from almost everyone on the field. And there you go, Z-Ball clearing it out. Adverse is trying to set up Samba. Samba with a floater, gonna hit the corner. Still an opportunity, and it's cleared again. Oh no. Right, Samba now searching for the back of the net here, searching for a goal to stop this silence that is this game. Scoreless for so long, but somebody's gotta do it first here. Z-Ball is gonna try and dribble this one back around and out of the Marist half. Does succeed, gets the ball to the corner, Tones tries for a 50-50, gets a little over aggressive, but Z-Ball will be there to follow up. Echo Clutch taps it over the goal. Now the ball clearly no. in Marist hands. Oh, what a missed touch. Tones has to make it awkward, but he actually places the ball perfectly. He could wow. get over Echo Clutch, wins the 50-50, but Adverse is there to follow up. Z-Ball misses. Cypher the last line of defense here for the Marist side. Doesn't get the touch he wants. Ball across the goal, but Tones just in time here. Samba's not done with it yet, though. UTA still on the attack. Tap the ball over. Cypher, though, finally gains his team some reprieve. Uh, Z-Ball just waiting at this point. Kind of an awkward position for him to be in. And Tones, he has to win that 1v1. He has to win yet another one against Echo. Echo taking it up the wall and he has extra boost to work with and another player misses. Now it's just down to Cypher. He's the last line of defense. Tones is back, but that ball just gonna go right on in. Adverse floats his way over the post and that's gonna be the first goal for UTA. The first goal period in this game three. And UT Arlington had zero boost on any single one of their players. There absolutely nothing they could do. They were exhausted, choked out, and the goal goes in for UTA. Not done yet, though. Two minutes left. We've seen Maris fire back. Let's see if they can do it again. Cypher clearing. Oh, wow. Double commit. It's going to fail. In comes Adverse. Knocks it up. Wow, that was a beautiful fake. Beautiful pass from Echo Clutch. It just hits the backboard, and it's there for his teammate. And Adverse happily going to finish it on and off. Echo Clutch puts the ball into the back of the net here. Two up. UTA. I'm done writing Marist out of this book right now. <laughs> They've got every opportunity to do this. Should just be that way, but in comes Z-Ball. Backflips it out, but oh, wow, no, big demo. He's the only man. He can't be ready for that. Wow. What a play from UTA. And the floodgates have opened. Multiple goals in just a matter of 20 seconds in this game. And man, oh man, UTA showing... Their dominance now over Marist. All right, dominance, we'll call it for now. Marist, though, a team that has shown us a lot of hard Samba, though, looking to take it all the way. Two fakes in a row, but not going to get the second defender. Beating them out will be Tones and Z-Ball. Now giving the ball out of their half. Marist searching for the back of the net here. Minute 41 left on the clock. Goes to the flick off the wall. Samba does catch it, though. Dribbles it back. Z-Ball sets his teammate up. And Echo Clutch there for the interception. Plays it out of their half. Tones now back on the defense. Trying to get a clear out on this ball. Does succeed in doing so. But Samba's off the roof. Great flip reset there. Allows the ball to go down to Z-Ball, though. It's a counterattack for Marist. That could make it happen. Crosses in. Adverse. Jumps over the 50-50. A player That's blown it. up here on the UTA side. But Samba is going to happily receive this one on the other end of the field in the fourth goal in here for UTA. Holy gosh. Holy Lord. So now UTA, they put quite the lead in this third game now. But ladies and gents, again, Maris was able to take that game one. So we do at least have the prospect of a fourth game. But... Man, I mean, wow, what a play! Oh, come on, let off the gas pedal, UTA. They've got plays to be, they got games to play, and they've got to look towards this next one right now. Five goals in a minute and 10 seconds. Well, it would be impressive to see Maris do. It seems incredibly unlikely at this point, even at their fastest, it was goals every 20 seconds or so. But uh, yeah, look at the next game here. I think Maris need to focus on maintaining their momentum, not losing it after this game. Yes, it was high scoring, but the next game starts out 0-0. You're not at a goal deficit. You just keep playing your game and you'll get there. Uh, Tone's trying to go nuts. Instead, it's Cypher over on the front lines, but Adverse, he just keeps on going. 
It's going to be a pass over. Batones is going to be there for the stop, but that actually sets up Echo Clutch. Adverse actually going to get blown up. So 40 seconds left. Maris passing back and forth. That pass back was actually brutal. Z-Ball just couldn't find his target. In comes another opportunity. Adverse with a great pass, but it's going to be Cypher to stop it. 30 seconds left. This game is done and dusted, essentially. All right. I want to take a moment away from the seriousness to appreciate Maris' choice of vehicles. The fruit? Every single one of their cars is fruit-themed. Yes, absolutely. I mean... You... And it's not the same fruit. That's what I like. It's, like. it's different color schemes respective to their fruits while maintaining the green. It's a... I... I can tell you that makes you play better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, team synergy, you know, maybe, you know, it's it's nothing, you know, without without a little bit of color, you know what I mean? If you're if you're gonna play a video game, you might as well have some fun with it. Might as well, but Maris don't look like they're having fun right now. Maris look like they're down six, maybe even seven goals here as they go clutch. Goes up, this ball should touch the ground. Adverse actually wants to add insult to injury, put one more in, yeah. He's gonna play it off the corner here. Not done. Ball's over. Z ball. The touch echo clutch again, but the ball hits the ground and Marist down in a unceremonious fashion. Yeah, absolutely. But they're not out of it just yet. They still have at least one more game to go. And let's see what actually happens, however. We're we're just looking towards this next game, and UTA could just fulfill the prophecy and make their way into grand finals against the third seeded. The third seeded University of Delaware. That would be insane. Whew. All right. Maris, they got to take a breather. They got to take just these quick 30 seconds that they have before this next game. Do breathe and figure this one out. Take a drink of water. Take what they need because every last bit is on the line here. They have taken University of Texas Arlington further than any team has before. And I can't wait to see what they have to offer. Oh, boy. All right, mine. Let's go. It could be the last one here for Maris. Could it just could be. be their tournament, but they have had a hell of a showing, and they're not done yet. Not just yet. Not just yet. You mentioned that this is the farthest, but that's just that's just a testament to how good UTA actually is. I mean, to have your farthest, to have your you know pressure threshold to be down a singular game, that's insane. That is just nuts to think about, period, about any Rocket League team out there. So, I mean... UTA, the best that they could do right now is just win this one out and, uh, you know, maybe maybe just pour some salt in the wounds of Maris, knowing that they were the ones to finally take away a game. UTA with two golden opportunities of the beginning, however, to get themselves a goal, and Maris now thanking their lucky stars that it didn't actually come true. Adverse, gonna be able to clear it out, but instead it's gonna be Z-Ball, keeping it up middle. Cypher with a shot, gonna, uh, gonna actually hit Samba. Echo Clutch is going to be ready for the shot. Not going to be a stop either. Z-Ball has to rotate. And he's going to flick love, it over. He's taking his time. Love the aggressive play here we're seeing out of Maris. That wind is not out of their sails yet. They still believe they can win these 50-50s. And that is so, so key to actually winning them. The second you start a challenge, you need to be able to commit to it. And they've done that time and time again. Staying on top of this ball. Maybe not at the same, sp same pace that we've seen them do it before. But they're definitely playing aggressive as all get out here. Z-Ball wow. into 50-50, forces it under, but Echo Clutch, luckily for UTA, is there. A Big demo. though, leaves the goal open for Cypher. He's going to go for the cross here, away from Samba, but Adverse will get there just in time. Ball chip. Oh, no! Oh, no, Marist. Yeah, Rocket League. UT Arlington from the other end of the field. Get one in. Yeah, that is, that is pure Rocket League right there. I mean, just the Hail Mary downfield from Adverse, and no one's going to be able to get that. Good Lord. UTA up 1-0. And if the score stays the same, they're in grands. Luckily enough, for Marist, they have a history of making sure the score doesn't stay the same. Whether that just means more goals for UTA or goals for Marist, we'll have to find out. However, how wow. the contact, Samba's found two. Did, did. There's an open goal on the other side of the field. Oh, but he screwed up his air dribble just long enough for Tones to get there. The collateral. The double kill. Good lord. Oh, this has, been, this has been a bloody semifinals, man. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I mean, both sets. We we mentioned this before. It looks like a Michael Bay film. Like just just straight up, so many demos, and not only not only in the goals, but like at midfield too, where they where just they're moving targets in a sense. 
Oh no. I think they, they are. Oh no. Echo Clutch. He's got a dribble. Zeebo. Great 50 50 ball. Great shot. That's it. Center. Samba has to touch it down, but Adverse has lobbed it perfectly yet again. This guy is hitting shots from so far away and so consistently. Rotation broken. Maris, the entirety of the team, still on the front end. And the rest of UTA, I mean, just working as a dynamic all the way up front, ready and raring to go. And halfway of the game already passes by. And Adverse, oh, are you Adverse, kidding me? No. He dribbles out the entirety of the Maris team off of the, just off of, oh, off of the kickoff. And look at that. Just slides his way on in. And that's a 3 0 for UTA. Yeah, Floodgates are open. Boost advantage, not having to turn around as well. Maris have to take these risks. They need to be going for the follow-up on the kickoff if they want chances at actually winning this game. They're down three goals. And I think they understand that, but nonetheless, Maris, their backs against the wall. They're on the ropes. They're searching no for way. the goal. No way. What a pass. Up. No. no. Finish, though. Oh. You hate to see that. Beautiful pass. Beautiful fight from Tones. And not even Tones is going to be able to take that shot on either. Two straight opportunities. Lots of aggression coming in from this Maris side. Oh, 1v1 oh from Cypher. And he wins oh, it out. They're alive. Maris, they're in there. And they're not done with this one yet. We've seen them score uh, probably like four or five goals in the course of 20 seconds between the two of these teams. I'm sure at least two of those can go the way of Maris right now. And it's all they're looking for. All I'm seeing in chat spam these boxes to help the red foxes and i think that's the type of energy that they need at this point they need everyone's energy if you're a maris fan or hell you just don't like uta now's your chance now's your chance i'm not even gonna lie to you i mean hey i'm unbiased if, if i'm in for both i've been cheering for uta fans, all, all season man. in the boxes man oh yeah you're too yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> oh, but it's not over yet. One minute, 30 seconds left on the clock. Maris still scoreless in the last 30 seconds. Samba searching for the back of the goal. Passes over to Echo Clutches. Do you want to try and maintain ball control? I think UTA are trying to park the bus here, but Tones has nothing. No, that that's not it. Across. Oh, but it's off the post. Samba able to clear that one out. Ball goes straight over to Z-Ball. Plays it down towards center here. There will be a UTA member to receive. Samba narrowly avoids the demolition. Tones is up for the shot, but it's just put out wide here. Out of position is the man himself. Been holding on here for Maris all day, and he just needs a little bit more effort. One minute on the clock, the horn has sounded, the whistle has been blown, and Zebo has decided it's time for a little bit of a dribble play. Passes it out wide to himself, plays it over, the cross in, Adverse looking for the touch, but his teammates don't believe in him, they're not there for the follow up. Now, an opportunity again! Oh, oh what save. A save! Tones! 30 seconds All right, left. Z-Ball is down for the save. The flip reset comes in from Samba. Whiffs on the ball. But Cypher's got it here. Gonna try and dribble out. Oh, no, no. boost. The flip completely whiffs. And Echo Clutch has a chance on goal. Creates a dangerous opportunity here. Tones. Oh, no. The flip misses. Cypher's got to make the save. Adverse plays it slow. But Z-Ball comes in just in time. 18 seconds left on the clock. Maris, their tournament hopes on the line here. Tones has to go for the clear. But it's a double commit here from Maris. That's valuable time off the clock. 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7. Oh, no. Fading here from the blue side and UTA. There's chinks. There's dents in their armor. They're bleeding, but they come out victorious. Our first seed continues on to the finals. Can't believe it. I cannot believe it. That is just it, ladies and gentlemen. That last minute was played perfectly by UTA in general. And just in the end, man, in the end, that is just going to be a W for UTA once again, keeping their undefeated streak all season. And... Of course, Marist, the Red Foxes, are going to be eliminated from this tournament, but eliminated, you know, in a valiant effort. In an absolutely valiant effort. GG's Marist. GG's UTA. UTA, we'll see you guys in just a couple of minutes because we have grand finals being set up in just a little bit. It's going to be the University of Delaware versus the University of Texas Arlington. Dor, any last words before we get into one last break? Dude, Marist. Marist. And also, here's the thing. So Marist are playing out of their minds right now. But the series that we saw University of Delaware and RIT come off of, that absolute barn burner of a four-game series between those two, they were both playing maximum capacity. They were giving it all the juice they had. That was the best game I've seen out of either team, especially University of Delaware. That being said, 
We're, we've now seen the best that Maris has to offer go up against UT Arlington and make them hurt. University of Delaware are playing out of their minds today in a similar fashion. And University of Delaware is a team that we know can compete with UTA on a normal basis. I can't wait to see the absolute trouble they start to give this Texas Arlington team now that we know that it is a possibility for them to lose a game. You said it best, my friend. These two are going to be going at it in a do-or-die fashion. Winner takes the gold. Loser going to go on back in second place and going to have to redirect their target to the next season. Ladies and gentlemen, University of Delaware versus University of Texas Arlington coming up next in our EGFC Season 1 playoffs. It's going to be the Grand Finals. My name is Upmind, a.k.a. Gus Franco, and I'm here with Dor, a.k.a. Cameron. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen.
It has finally come down to this, ladies and gents. Delaware versus Texas Arlington. It's the University of Delaware versus the University of Texas Arlington. And it's the grand finals of EGFC Rocket League. And it's our first season doing so. And I hope you guys have had an amazing time watching the action between two of these powerhouse teams, between the nine powerhouse teams that we have had the privilege of showcasing throughout the season. And I'm very glad that we get to show you guys one last game in this season. My name is Upmind. I'm joined here by Dor. Dor, how are you doing right now, man? The blood's pumping. We're good to go. That was the most exciting set of semifinals I may have ever seen. Maris coming out and oh my God, swinging <laughs> well above their weight level. UT Arlington battered and bruised, but come out on top. But now they've got to come up against University of Delaware, who in their own right have just shown up today up against RIT. They took the victory three to one in one of the highest paced series I've ever seen. Cars going Mach 2 permanently, dogfights going on in the air, kills going down left and right. The demolitions, I'm pretty sure there was a tactical nuke dropped at some point by Sunblaze. It was crazy. But after all that, they make it through that war zone that RIT created, and they make it all the way to grand finals up against UT Arlington, staring down the barrel of the number one seed, University of Delaware, have to take down a giant. Well, Dor, prepare the players, because I'm certainly ready for this one. It's the grand finals. If I'm not mistaken, this is going to be a best of seven format between the two, so it's going to be a long and drawn out one. Let's see how it actually goes out. Ladies and gentlemen, the Blue Hens versus uh, whatever that <laughs> mascot is. Ladies and gentlemen, we're right into it. It looks like a horse, maybe maybe cavalier of sorts. Who knows? But ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, we're in the grand finals. Let's jump into it. And oh, oh my god, you oh! oh, on the kickoff. Blake okay. and you miss it. They score a goal here off the human L. Great pick. Mavericks. Off the opposing player. Knocks it in with ease. Call it a stroke of luck. Call it what you want. But I'll tell you what. UD are more than happy with it. Thank you to the person in chat. They are the Mavericks. Thank you very much. So it's the Blue Hands versus the Mavericks. And good lord, like you mentioned, man. Blink it and you miss it. Out of nowhere, UD already gets the first goal in these grand finals. Setting the pace for what might be a barn burner of a match. Again, we have a lot of Rocket League to go through. So maybe an early start would be a good one, to say the least. Fever already upfield. Samba going to have to carry it out. Over to the left side, Adverse, same thing, but now it's in a weird gray area. Human L up for it, same thing with Fever, that's a double commit. Ball going All back right, go. and Grouse shuts it back, shuts it down early. Got the opportunity here for University of Delaware, they're searching for the goal, but it'll miss. On the shot means it's all up to the Human L here to buy time for his team. Does get enough that they can rotate back, grab some boost. They're doing all right. Samba gets a nice pinch off the wall. Not quite what he wants to follow himself, but Adverse will be there to help him out. Ball gets crossed here, center for UTA. But Growl, solid defense by UTA. Exactly what we saw un up against RIT in their previous match. UD can hold on for so long. Their defense prowess is not something to be messed with, but UTA still on the attack. Here comes Echo Clutch. Going towards goal. Fever going to knock it on out. Samba just keeping it on this end. And Adverse, he ends up going for the ball, but instead he goes for a player. Going to end up demoing a UD player. Oh, no. Samba, you madman. He's just going to clear it out towards the right in the weirdest way possible. And even then, Samba going back. Fever, 1v1. Fever still with the ball. Oh wow. So, oh, the follow -up. so simple yet so effective. It was, but the follow-up, not quite there. It was a 50-50, they needed to win it, and they ended up losing it at a critical time. Still up 1-0, though. University of Delaware, they take us into this third minute, and they are looking very, very good. Their previous showing up against UT Arlington, they ended up going down 0-3, unceremoniously getting stomped, for lack of a better word, against this UT Arlington side. And now, Maris has put the chink in their armor. Maris has shown they can bleed. Maris took a game off of the undefeatable, and now it's all up to University of Delaware to try and finish it off. Not only that, but University of Delaware, they've had a little bit of time to kind of get themselves a break from that 3-1 barn burner that we saw in the semifinals. What I would like to mention was, so far, best game of the tournament. Can they repeat that performance? Can they upset 
the unbeatable UTA thus far. They're doing it thus far, but it's again, it's it's a 1-0, and there's still lots of Rocket League to be played still in this game. Ah, but Fever, he slows it down, but Echo Clutch, he's going to be ready with the timing. Human L on the 1v1 is going to be left to Adverse. Up to Samba. Samba with a shot. Going to hit the backboard. Echo Clutch is not going to be ready for it. Neither is any one of these UTA players. Yet another counterattack starting. Beautiful pass. Human L off to the left. Clear going to get thwarted. It allows Growl, though, to take a lot more position. He's got a shot. Wow. Doesn't quite get the air roll shot that he wants, so he could have gotten a lot more power on that and really made it dangerous. The UTA, luckily enough, are going to get a bit of a reprieve. The pass comes in from Adverse, taps it back. The Echo Clutch, Growl, great 50-50, buys him a lot of time. So I'm just going to try to knock this one up and just mess with the attackers here, but it won't stop it from happening as the Human L catches the rebound, taps it over the roof, and that just means it's free for Samba, who lobs it over. Growl's up, great save. Locks it very far away from his goal, which is going to allow Human L to rotate back, grab that boost, and not That's start it. the team out. But Samba, the cross gets through from Adverse, and the score is evened up by Samba. Pretty much his classic Rocket League play. Straight off the corner, dribble it through the goal, and Samba's there for the finish. Yeah, beautiful pass, beautiful last second touch over the, the last point of contact there for the Blue Hens. And now with a minute and 18 left, UTA finally nailing one on the board. But still, time for UD to still... Get themselves a goal here, and it, this is as close as we can get. Coming down to the last minute, it I would say that it would be golden goal, but we've seen nastier stuff so far in this tournament. I mean, let's put this into perspective right now. UD, oh. the last time they played UTA, in the very first game, the score was 7-1 to one for UTA. Wow. It was utter dominance. Here, we're sitting at 1-1. UD looking in some of the best what a shot of their lives and they hold on to that score line human l oh miscommunication fever last point of contact he's gonna go up for the aerial and beautiful beautiful early boost there from fever just getting his body up in the air but now here comes yet another pass samba up to adverse adverse just trying to set up one of his teammates but instead it's gonna be a clear Grau has an opportunity. He's going to go in a 50-50 with Echo. Yet another one. Grau over Samba. Right over him. It's a chip. And still over to the corner. 10 seconds left. Adverse. One last opportunity for this team. He has to go in a 1v1. Grau going to clever. Five seconds left. We could have overtime. But the ball is made. Oh, Samba, wow! 50-50's one. And Adverse follows up. Puts it in. UTA steal away at the last second game one. That's got to hurt. That has to be incredibly disheartening for this UD team because, man, they fought incredibly hard just in this one singular game. And just like that, it's going to be over. It has to be over. Right? Uh, it is okay. going to be over. Okay, now okay. it's over. So we can breathe up, uh, mind. We're all right. 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 Uh, <laughs> UT Arlington come out with the game one win. University of Delaware look good. Maybe not as good as they did up against RIT which may just be a team thing, but honestly, I do think they played a little bit better against RIT considering that first game, but it's a good showing nonetheless. I think it's still definitely above their average, but they've got to dig just a little bit deeper and find that gas that they had in the game against RIT. So at this point, both of these teams, they kind of know each other's play style, but Delaware, they had multiple opportunities to just war ut arlington then and it was just it just came down to unrelenting attack breaking that rotation from delaware near the end and i think at this point ut arlington if they just continue the same play style over delaware if delaware just can't make any adjustments that's just going to be it ladies and gents so again game two coming up on the board both teams are already ready that they are in UT Arlington, not in the lead anymore. Your score is 0-0. Zero, zero. This guy looks for another early goal here. Human Elf, wow, another, goal. another one! Again, University of Delaware, do it early! Are you kidding me? Off the bat, adverse in an awkward position, and Grau! What a play from Grau! Bumping off adverse in his flip, and Human L, he actually missed the goal there, but off of his collision with adverse, they were able to kind of pinch it through into the goal. So that's going to be our first goal of the game. Now, with just about 10 seconds in, we already have yet another opportunity for one of these teams. And it's UT, uh, UT Arlington all the way up front. But they just can't get it done. In comes Fever knocking it up. Ah, uh, Echo Clutch with a shot strike towards goal! Wow! Oh, my man! Pre 
jumps it, boosts across the goal, prays to whatever god he believes in, and gets <laughs> some relief, makes the save. Samba now hits the demolition here. One man advantage for the side of UTA. Saved though by Fever. The pressure's still on Samba up for the shot. Human L down for the save. The floater! Wow! Beautifully done the air dribble from Samba. Evens out the score line. What a play from Samba. Look at this. He stops himself, floats it on in, and Echo Clutch doesn't even to, doesn't even need to shoot. That was just an incredible play from Samba, man. Holy. And that just shows the mechanical prowess of either of these teams. It could come out at any given point in time. You need to be ready for those shots for those air dribbles. And UD caught off guard. Unfortunately, Human L back for defense. Adverse touch past it. him. That's Beats gotta be the it. only man there. It's off the post. The pinch is there. It's a shot. Fever can't save it. And 2 1 up. UT Arlington take the lead yet again. And Adverse with the solo play waits for the ball to hit off the wall so he can just get the essentially the full shot on in, hitting the eight ball into the right pocket. And that's gonna be our second goal for UT Arlington. UD. They thought they had some sort of pat, like uh, some sort of, I guess you could say pad in the uh, in the first goal, but in the end, UT Arlington, they just don't stop. Absolutely not. They're not going to stop here for UD either. Samba goes up, crosses in. Nobody there to finish quite yet. Great 50-50 by ground. Nets him a demolition. Allows his teammate to follow up. Fever, though, loses the 50-50. Ball goes back to Humanel. This is valuable time taken off the clock right now. When there's a one goal difference and the games are this close, UTA will take anything they can get, but that's not oh, what they want. Anything oh, they can Has get? Adverse done anything? No, it's Growl this time. Pardon me. Wrong team. I'm so used to Adverse just hitting shots in from half field, but Growl, oh my god, all the way across, realizes the overcommitment from Samba and punishes it hard. Anything you can get, huh? Holy. Oh. So that's a okay. two to two. University of Delaware tied up the scoreline. Samba, this man. That's it. What? Where, where, where was UD? Where on earth were they? Okay, Human L's behind. Teammate Fever, he's flipping around in the corner. I think he, I think he missed oh, touch the button. Wow, he, oh, he misinputted. Unbelievable. That is not what you want to see. But that three minutes, 20 seconds left on the clock. UD, they're all right. They can get this one back. It's what they're looking for. They can do this. UT Arlington, though, looks strong as ever. And the shot comes in. Beautiful from Unbelievable. Samba. He's done it again. Widens that score gap. This man's been on fire all game. Samba, what a monster. Unbelievable shot. Tiki Taka type play is from a man called Samba and a man with uh, with <laughs> with soccer players in his in his profile picture. I, I would you would feel that that's on brand for Rocket yeah, League it's player, not right? Yeah, from him like Samba. Samba a little flashy with it, right? And you know what? He tries and he does pay off. Echo Clutch got a shot. Adverse for the follow up. Great 50 50 by Human L, but Echo Clutch has another attempt at a fever. Wow, oh, Adverse! Adverse falling from the ceiling gets the touch. Holy man. Fever, he thought he had the clear, but Adverse, he just comes in swinging out of nowhere. Two minutes into the game, and we've already seen seven goals between the two teams. That's nuts. And now. UTA with a very, very commanding lead. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is the best of seven. It's not the best of five we've been seeing. It's grand finals time, baby. It's not game point after this time. UD have room to breathe. And honestly, with three minutes on the clock, they've got time to do it as well. Human L clear. Brow trying to do the same thing. Not going to be able to do so. Fever. Winning up on the ball. Wow! The double! The triple! Oh, baby, a triple! boy, Samba! Holy! Oh, baby, indeed, Samba. What is this man on right now? Taking people away from their team side from playing this game. They don't get to actually enjoy Rocket League right now. Not while Samba's on the field. And now, maybe not while UTA are in the game. If that three-goal lead looks more and more insurmountable. Balls touch into the UTA half. Grouse there to follow up. Wins a 50-50 here. Taps over to the corner, but that's not the cross that you want. Samba's going to happily play that one out towards midfield. Adverse touches it up here. Samba for the finish, but Fever beats him to the ball. Now, UD back on the attack here, but unable to connect anything into that goal. Adverse is the defender. There's always someone on this UTA side in their way, and UT are struggling to create opportunities. 
Adverse clears it. Samba has to do the same. He redirects. He's still playing around with it. Has the boost to work with too, but he just can't do it. In comes Grau. Collecting the ball back. 130 left. Right under Echo too, but Samba is there. Sliding his way under the players to try to get that ball in. Adverse with a nice floater just to try to set up his teammates. Oh, Grau wow. across the field. Can't get a second touch on it either. Fever floats it. That's going to be a clear. That's going to be control. For UTA, Human L, he's not going to be able to calculate that one. Now with just about a minute left, it's a three-goal mate. Oh, oh, Echo Clutch, though, what a save! I was about Human to say L. a two-goal differential, but now it's still three. Minute yeah, left on the clock. A long ways away right now for this UD side. With 50 seconds left on the clock, though. Fever's what a pass! Up, what a pass! Down. Comes through, Grau does it! UD are not out of this one yet. Not just yet, but let's see what they can do with some momentum on their side. Something that they just simply haven't had whatsoever in this game, too. Again, I think they're going to be regretting not winning that first game out because they, they had UTA's number for the first time. They really did. And I think at this point, heavily regretting it because this looks like an awakened UTA. I think game one UTA is a much different, like a, a completely different squad from game two or game three UTA. Things are starting to slip out of their hands and UD realizing that their chances have ended in these first two games. Three six the scoreline here at 30 seconds, seemingly insurmountable at this point. UD need to look over to next game and Gus, I'd like you to as well up mind. What do you think they got to change up here? Man, it's really gonna come down to, I, I guess just teamwork. Because, of course, they are communicating with each other. Their rotations are fine. But it's going to come down to, you know, these clear attempts. They have to work together on them. It always seems as if one player is always working their hardest to try to clear. And there you go. Okay, they actually did make that, uh, not that adjustment at least, but at least a play over to mid. But all the way back, UD, they do have the confidence in one another to just leave their own players, you know, playing around with the ball. Just trying to get something going. But you see UTA. One person taps the ball, and they're all already rotating towards the other side. They're confident in one another, and UD, they just simply don't have that confidence right now. And I think there's something to be said here about just this UTA effect. When you're losing to UTA, it feels like you're just being choked out, like there's nothing you can do. And that really does affect the mental game. UD losing a lot of confidence by the end of that match, and it shows so, so much. They need that strong mental reset. They need another game here so the score is 2-0 it's a best of seven so first to four wins ladies and gents so uta they do have a little bit more work to do this next game won't just be it for our bracket thankfully I, I would like to see a little bit more action from these two teams especially delaware man i mean delaware simply i mean they've been they've been working at it they've been working at uta but we just haven't seen that spark just yet. We haven't seen, you know, those, those stellar team plays on the front lines. We saw them later on in this game over to midfield. I want to see it on the attacking side. I want to see more passing. I want to see more communication. I want to see more balls on net coming from Delaware. And the only way to do that is to just get aggressive against UTA to play as a team. Let's see if they can actually do it. However, ladies and gents, we have our next game up. And it's a fresh game of Rocket League here. A fresh timer, fresh five minutes, and two 0 0 counters. We head straight into it. UD most likely will not have the comfort of an early goal, but we'll have to see if they can pull that one off again. Just as I say, that fever's up. Human L looks to set one down off the back wall. Fever's going to tap it out yet again. Growler will have a 50 50 opportunity to get beat by Adverse. And now there's nothing he can do about it. Samba Merciless puts another one in. Yeah, there you go. That's that Uno reverse card. UTA instead taking the early goal rather than UD before. So, oh man, oh man, early lead for UTA. Early lead, plenty of time though for UD. We've seen UTA do the same exact thing when they're on the back foot. Turn around, get those two goals almost instantly firing back. Both previous games, UD needs to look to do the same thing. If you give up that momentum right now, if you just roll over, there is nothing that you will be able to do for the rest of this series. You've got to fight back and find that heart that you found up against RIT. What a passing play. 
Over to mid, Grau gonna boot it up. Same thing with Fever. Ball is back. Shot from Humanel, but adverse. Patient as always. And wow, two players missing that ball. Make that three. Grau barely tapping that ball. And now a big opportunity for UTA once again. But this time it's gonna get cleared out off the bump from Humanel. Exactly, it will be. And now UD on the back foot yet again. A position they've become all too familiar with. Grau tries for the aggression, getting this ball out of the half field. Would be so huge. Human L goes, oh, but feels bad. Ah, you hate to see the side flip come through, but not able to control that ball quite how he wants to. Human L now has to do an awkward half flip to get any control on this. Ball's up in an awkward position for UD. However, the shot will be missed by the UTA player. Echo Clutch coming back around, trying to force it in the back of the net, but Grau has a 2v1. The flicks up, flicks over. Oh, but it's just not fast enough to outspeed these UTA players. Counter-attack again from UTA. In comes Samba. Even Adverse trying to help out. It's small clear, but it's going to get forwarded. Opportunity for Fever. Passes it to Humanel. Back to Fever. Fever has to hit it again. And that's going to be a miss. Adverse controls it, but he's in a 50-50 against Grau. Grau more or less wins it, but it's still in the hands of Samba. What just happened? Samba just broke someone's legs. Almost literally. <laughs> Goodness. Oh my Absolutely gosh. relentless right now. Samba has been hitting demo after demo after demo, making sure University of Delaware is not playing this game. And now he's breaking ankles while they're at it. He's got a counterattack here. The backflip at the perfect time. Sets up Echo Clutch. Not able to make the shot though. Fever's right in the way. Yeah, good discipline from Fever. Not going for the pre-jump. No way. That's going to hit the that's going to hit backboard Fever going for the shot again. Echo Clutch still in the front lines. One point of boost for the human L. He can't get there. Ball is up middle. Wow! So much traffic there for somebody. Somehow finds the ball towards the net, but it hits the post. Two minutes left. Finds the ball, but not the goal here. 1 0 is not insurmountable for this UD side. They just got to find the back of the net. Echo Clutch goes, but Fever finds a 50 50. All he needs to do is hit this double touch. You can do it. Oh, and he no wins boost. It. Samba gets there in time. No boost on the man. And there's nothing you can do about that one. Grau now has his opportunity. Flicks it early. He doesn't have boost either. He's trying. He used what little he has to try and go for this goal. But it's all going to be desperation right now for UD. With one minute and 40 seconds left on the clock. Grau hits it up. Adverse goes for 50-50 up against Fever. Wins it. Pull handedly. Human L gets the rebound out to Samba. This midfield play has been great from UTA. Just suffocating UTA. UD and there's just not much you can do about it when adverse has shots like that off the crossbar though Echo Clutch sets up his teammate Grau tries to play it out opportunity here for University of Delaware going to look to play it down it's out in center Human L has the shot Echo Clutch though in for the save he'll happily just dribble that one over the corner Fever lays one down over top of the goal but it's not quite in line yet good boost control though by the Human L taking that option away from UTA giving his team more options to work with no Human L Yes! There it is! Oh my! Does it! Finishes it off after God knows how many shots. God, that was so long. So many shots going towards that goal. And I even yelled yes because I was so frustrated for a second. I'm like, yes, they finally did it. UTA. I mean, you don't like seeing them struggle, man. No, it's exactly. so close to being able to do it. It's tight. Oh no, the double. But UTA is so impressive. But my god, you Adverse did. scores these for breakfast, man. Where's the setup? Oh. Samba going up for it. Oh, and he's not going to be able to score it. Bomb is back. Or uh, ball is back down. Human L. 50 50 against Samba. Samba still up front. Same thing with Adverse. Straight to. Oh, what a pass. Echo Clutch can't finish off the shot, however. Counter attack. Fever needs to cover. Ball is up. Human L needs to tap it. Yes, he does. Beautiful oh, clear. Touch. Okay, Grav's got the ball now. He can work this one out, but that's the shot. No. Does it. He misses the save. Where did that shot oh, even come no. from? Adverse, wow. And this is this is a textbook save that should be made by the human L. He didn't he have the time. His trajectory. No, he, I, I, I'm almost certain, but it's just, I feel like the nerves, <laughs> quick the shot, how quick the shot came out, just overturns a little bit, misses the ball low. Oh, but the shot is out from Fever. Samba though, he's back. Plenty of time to dribble that one out. UD not out of this one. 10 seconds. Enough time. The flick. Grow! Grow! The one man play clutches it out. Jesus, Grow. You gotta be joking me. Look at this. Just flips it on over. Echo Clutch. 
didn't expect it. All three players for UD standing in the goal, looking dumbfounded at the ball. And now it's 2-2 once again. It's tied. Wait. All right, Growl. Wait. They could have just been saving that kickoff goal for right now. Two seconds on the clock. No, nah, that's got to be it. Challenge. Ball up from Salva, Overtime again. Over. We're heading into overtime, Gus. Here we go. Pa Fever and Samba kicking it off. Humanel goes for the 50 50. The boost will be taken away by no! UD. The ball heads towards UTA territory, oh. but Samba gets back just in time. Fever knocking it up towards middle. Echo Clutch, another stop. Fever. Takes a little bit a little bit of time to actually set up. He has to go all the way back. Grau needs to get the shot, but he just cannot. Human L on the back right. Oh, no. It's two versus three right now for okay. UD. They play the ball out. Grau has managed to find some boost somewhere on the field right now. Some reprieve for this blue side. But they need to keep applying this pressure, and Grau's going to be that right there on time. Oh, no. But whips the ball. Adverse has a great opportunity to pass through. What a pass. Yeah. Off center, Samba's there, off the backboard here. Echo Clutch for the follow-up. Gonna have to play it off the back wall. Grav's got an opportunity now, plays it into the corner. It will be a cross hat here for the blue side. They just connect with a play. more touch, but no adverse is on a dribble. Human L though intercepts off the back wall. UD searching for the net. Human L cross in, too low, bump found. No goalkeeper in sight right now for UTA, but the rotations are quick. They come back and Grav has a- What a stop from Human L. They're both down one player. Is the ball stuck in UD territory? What a demo from Grau stopping up F Echo Clutch once again. In comes Humanel. He's going to miss. Pass. Adverse. Who's going to be in the back? It's Echo Clutch. He's not going to be able to get that shot, however. Fever. Oh, what? Sink. He doesn't have boost. Do no. Oh, my God. What a save. No boost to do so. He couldn't just drag it on in. Another shot going up towards the middle. But everyone from the blue side, they just wait. Another one. Grau. Gonna start it up. This is a big one. Samba up front. Grau waiting. Oh, pass to Fever. He misses. Oh, Rotation coming back. UTA with an opportunity. Wow. He's made it miss. Samba's put it off target. Grau's got the dribble. 1v1. Does he have the speed? Oh, he tries for the fake. Tries to bump the goal. No one's back. There, though. Nobody's home, but Grau. Gets back in time. The rotation's here. Two minutes now into overtime here for University of Delaware and Adderworth. Trying to force what a pass. Slip reset off the ball. Pass comes in. Echo Clutch doesn't believe, though. And now Fe Fever has the ball in half field. Back and forth and back and forth. Coast to coast we go. UTA surging for some sort of reprieve. And UD are applying pressure we've never seen out of them before. Echo Clutch looks for the shot. Human L Beautiful forcing cover. out 1v1 Sambas. I had to save these all night long, but he's been doing such a good job of it. Great cover by Samba again. It's the 50-50. Adverse is set up. The That's shot not going in. It's That's the in. Double touch and Adverse finishes it off. 3-0. Oh, UTA take us the game point. We go a game and a half in a single game here. And now UTA, they have set themselves up in a 3-0 fashion. They are now one game away from taking the grand finals, from taking the championship here. But UT Arlington, they just saw the actual fight come out there from UD. Let's see what, it can, what can actually happen, however. I was really impressed with the play from UD there. But UTA, not stopping whatsoever. Covering every sort of clear that, uh, that UD had going for them. I mean, we saw pinches get stopped. We saw clears get stopped. We saw shots get stopped incredibly early. UTA, they've been reading their opponents incredibly well so far. And now, UTA, they just need one more game. To do the exact same type of performance for them to win out this grand finals oh my lord and with that samba has dropped the mic yet again left the match no, and back. rejoined the match all right we got the man back he's faked us out what fool me once shame on me fool me twice you know or fool me once shame on you what's i mixed up man i'm ca caught up in this series right now <laughs> we could be on last game gus we could be on our last game of the night last game of the season before we move on into the EGF Power Series, which, ladies and gents, is going to start tomorrow with the Big East Conference. We have powerhouse teams participating in that league. But, of course, you guys are watching some of the best of the best here in EGF facing off for potentially one last time in this first season. Oh, great touches by Grau. Goes for the air dribble. Allows Human L to get back in here. He's got a cross. Oh, awkward position, though. Has to touch it across the field. Try and let Fever get a touch him, but he can't. Ball now in UD territory with two what UTA players trying to attack Samba, though. Messes up the touches a little bit. Now, some breath gained here for UD. Some breathing time, finally, for them to get boost. 
playing across. Human Elk can go for it, but it might be over aggression. Sama's got a shot. Growl? Oh, Growl can't get to it. That's UTA with another early save. Or, I'm sorry, early goal. And if the score stays the same, that's the championship for UTA. All right. Four minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock, and I highly doubt this score is staying the same with the way this game is going. UD will get thirsty, and they will get thirsty very, very quick for a goal right now. Grau's got a ball searching for a one-man dribble. Bakes out Echo Clutch, wins the 50-50 because of it. However, his team not in a position to score quite yet. Human L trying to force out and choke out some of the boosts here and doing it well. And that's how we've seen a lot of these teams score goals. It's just who runs out of boost first, whose boost management will be better, and who can take control of the field. What control from Adverse? Oh my lord, will he take this coast to coast, stopping two players in a row? Yes, he will. Oh he gets the goodness. assist to Samba. What a play from Adverse. Jesus. Quality stuff, and the goalkeeper just can't get there in time. Growl off the 50-50 from Samba. Well done by UTA, taking early 2-0 lead. UD searching deep right now for everything they need. They've come close. It's been neck and neck. It's been a nail biter, but you've got to finish it off right now, UD. Adverse. Stuck right in the middle. The ball goes right towards him. Grau gets it. Shot! That's going to go in. Fever. Takes one back for UD. Score has been reduced. Or deficit has been reduced to one. Okay, this is doable for UD. We've seen kickoff goals. We've seen dribbles. We've seen air dribbles. We've seen shots from across the field. UD can do it all. So can UTA. The goal could come from anywhere at this point. But with 3 minutes and 37 seconds on the clock, there's bound to be another adverse. Gets demoed. But was it that enough? Won't go Human L has to make the save. Sama goes for the 50-50. But oh my goodness, is that save a close one? Now adverse up for the next shot. And UTA not letting off the gas pedal. Flick over from the Human L. Beats. Sama's going to be able clutch. to set up. Wow, that's in! But Fever steals it away, and another goal found for UD. Tie for UD again! You gotta be joking me now. Samba tried to play with it a little bit too much in the backfield. He was so ready for that ball, and finally when he gets it, he plays a little too much in the backfield. That's gotta be another goal. Two minutes in, and we already have a 2-2 tie. All right, now UTA Adverse. trying to regain that lead. UTA outburst in the lead, in the air, rather. But there's plenty of time. Still, I can't believe. Fever with, Fever with a pass. Human oh, Elf with a shot. shot. Beautiful. Beautiful pass. Human Elf was all the way upfield. He was ready for it. Takes it, angles it perfectly right under his opponent. And that's going to be the goal. Are you kidding me? Two minutes in. And that's UD reverse onto UTA. Oh my. Echo Clutch now. 1v1 midair with Humanel. UD, signs of life being shown. Grau. 60 boost. Gonna be able to get the shot. Oh, Samba, shot. he gets it. Oh my god. What kind of goalkeeper training is Samba doing? I swear, he was full stop going across that goal. Read the ball going behind him. Slams on the brakes. Flies up to save it. What? A save, keeping UTA in this game right now. Two minutes, 33 seconds left on the clock. UD looking a lot better than they were the first half. Crow, great 50-50 off the back wall, but it will go out to Adverse. You can play it up the wall. Go for a cross here. Maybe even go for a shot. Echo Clutch is up as well, but Growl will be there to receive this ball. Ball is up. Growl tries to take it forward, but instead it's Samba. Humanel again, keeping the attack going. Taps it towards the wall, waiting for his opponent. Off his or waiting for his oh teammate, Growl. Can't get the shot in. It bounces right off of him. In comes Fever again. Stopped by Adverse early. He has no boost. In comes Grau. Grau Gonna hit the back though. backboard. Cleared out. Beautiful clear. Quality stuff here from UD. Looking like they're in the driver's seat right now with Human L taking down Echo Clutch. That could be exactly the case. Adverse needs a touch on this ball. But it's a free shot here for Fever. Echo Clutch comes in with just 30 boosts. Gets there in time. But the cross is going to be had. The shot off the crossbar. Adverse great That's save. in. But nobody's there when Fever knocks. And 4-2, UD extend their lead. Unbelievable. Another goal for UD coming in off of just a scrappy UTA in the goal. And I mean, man, it seems like finally UD figuring out the rotations of UTA. But UD, they have a long, long road to go.
before they actually, you know, can, can finally think about taking back this reverse 4-0. Because, man, UTA, they put themselves in such a great position to try to take oh, down this team. But, Wait, oh, don't do it, Tomsama. Two fakes! Oh my god, oh Samba! My. They've got families, man! Their ankles are gone! Look at this! One! Fakes out the second! Fakes out the third! Oh, come on, man! Oh my... Wow! Wow, wow, wow! Samba shutting down the momentum of UD there, making them look silly! Oh man, 50-50 between Fever and Samba. Human L comes in to to save it at least fever wow almost pots it right in but instead it's gonna be a save there from echo clutch one minute left adverse going for the pass everyone from ud in the back lines they realize they gotta park it here all they need to do is avoid getting scored on 50 seconds left on the clock seems easy enough seems simple enough but against uta that is the tallest of orders adverse now on the attack here human l gonna be more than happy to just play that back into uta territory follow with one man and great pass see how another goal but regardless fever finds one off the cross extends it back to two goals and a little bit more comfort found here for ud oh my oh my so another one from ud but I can't call it nail in the coffin just yet. I mean, we've seen too much from UTA to call it nail in the coffin. 40 seconds left on opportunity for score. Oh my god. See, I can't call it. I can't call it. Someone just said in chat, chat, nail I'll in the coffin. The no, incorrect. Incorrect. Not just yet. We've seen this too many times from UTA. <laughs> Holy lord. That's a big goal. Big, big goal from Adverse. And with 33 seconds left, UTA still has an opportunity to push this into overtime. Okay, 30 seconds left. Plenty of time here for UTA. Adverse. Adverse. Up. Oh, he's terrified. He's got the dribble. He can shove in. Re Fever. He's there just in time for this save. <laughs> UTA's got me thinking some kind of way right now. Echo Clutch looks unstoppable right now in the midfield, but he goes down to the demo of Grau. Another one. Human L. If he puts this in, Nail. Is. Oh, 11 seconds. Don't you dare say it up, mind. Oh, I'm going to say it. UD have taken the second game from UTA this entire season, and they do it in the grand finals. Nail in the coffin. Finally, it is over. UD, they have 10 seconds to just try to cover, and they will. Has to be done. No, no. Okay. Hey. Hey, Fever. Okay. <laughs> finally, it's over. <laughs> I'm like, hey, hey. Don't, don't mess with the line, man. And uh, that's just going to be it. Human L going to bounce it towards goal, but that's going to be it. 6-4 to four for UD. This isn't over whatsoever. It's a best of seven. Delaware is back in it. Delaware, the second team, only Tamarist who did it in a miraculous fashion. The only team to take a match off of UT Arlington. I can't believe what I'm seeing. And they have to pull off the reverse sweep. They've got the momentum. They've had a game that ended in more than a one goal deficit for UT Arlington. Something we've never seen. This is uncharted territory for EGF. But UD might be the team to do it. If not, Arlington come off of arguably what could be one of the most impressive seasons of collegiate RL that I have seen. The most dominant and crazy season they've had. But no joke here they have to go through so much to finish it off get the oxygen tanks ready because it's just gonna get more intense from here UT Arlington off to a great start in the game at least in this one so far and Delaware I mean the the two or three first games that they ended up losing if I'm not mistaken first two games that they ended up losing they got that 1-0 lead off of the beginning. But that's just a testament to how hype UT Arlington gets when they're down. That is just another challenge for them. We saw UT Arlington essentially reverse 3-0 Maris right when Maris took the first game. So what kind of magic can UTA pull off just to get a single W here to finish off the Grand Finals? They're going to have to go big. They're going to have to go for the gold. Let's see what happens. UTA one game away from victory, but Human L and all of UD stand in their way. Fever up, has a good touch here, could set up a teammate, but just going to look for a cross onto the ground here. Grau 
Good follow-up, allows the cross to go in, but all three members are committed for it. If this goes badly, it could be real bad here for UD. Crowd finally rotates back, a little bit of safety, a little bit of sanctity for the UD side. Good contest by Fever, allows his teammates to get boost. Now it's all up to them. Wow, Brown wins misses. 50, 50, but just sets up Samba. Up for this double touch, it could be dangerous, Fever. <laughs> <laughs> That's risky. That is so risky. Fever just, uh, just controls it into a dribble right in front of his own goal. Man, oh man. Oh. Ooh, so Sorry. close also. Echo Clutch has the ball at midfield here for UTA. The follow-up is here from Adverse. Any one of these players touches that ball could head straight for the back of the net. But Grau is going to be there to play it out. Dribbled out himself by Adverse. Now on the back foot, UTA searching to get this ball out of their half. Great flip allows that one to go into the corner. But nonetheless, UD playing very, very cautiously right now. They know what a goal means. That first one sets up the entire momentum, especially this far into the game. Oh. Humanel's not going to be able to score that one. He's a little bit too off. Samba, he clears it out over to the left. In comes Grau. Adverse clears. Over to the left side. Fever goes for a shot, but it's up. Aerial opportunity for Samba. We've seen him score so many times just from that position alone, but an early shutdown from Humanel is going to give their team an opportunity. And the back and forth, the pinball. In the back line, that's going to be the goal at least. Growl, he's all the way back. He's just watching his team have some fun. Humanel, he's going to get that goal. That's 1-0. Good stuff. Good start by UD. But historically in the series, they've only lost when they've gone up goals in the beginning. So I'm not going to count my chickens quite yet. UTA are still a force to be reckoned with. And with three minutes left in the game, we saw what happened with three minutes left in the last game. UD brought it back. They turned around. I don't doubt UTA has it in them either. Humanel up for the shot, plays it out towards Grau, blows one up. Humanel is going to get a free cross in here. How perfect is it going to be? Not quite. Plays wow! Nobody oh, jams it in. No teammate to finish off. Samba is there for the clear, though. In comes Samba, knocks it back down. Fever upfield. Echo Clutch going to be able to get the free clear, but instead it's going to be Humanel shutting him down early. Fever, are you kidding me? The, the slimmest of margins to actually make that shot, and he makes it. Beautiful play from UD. Adverse was so close. Riker Fever has been for this UD side. Fever looking real hot right now. Better check that temp, because this man's on fire. He's been in the front. He's been finishing off shots, making opportunities for this UD side. And I got to say, a real powerhouse player for them so far. But... This game not over yet. Just halfway through. Human L up, finds an open goal, but Samba's there. That's in! No, he's not! For the first time all day, Samba misses a save. And that was a clear miss, too. Samba. Oh, he had it. He had it, but he just miscalculates the angle. And that just goes right on in. That's the 3 0 for UD. What is going on? What's going on is they're finding top bins and Samba. Not even he can handle it. Fever dribbles around here, searching for his opportunity. Gonna dribble it out, pass it to Human L. Can he finish it off? It's beautiful! Are you oh kidding me? Oh my god, what is going on? Oh, you never thought you'd see it, but they pull it off. What just happened? What are we watching? What is this scoreboard? When did this ever come alive for, for UD? Oh Four my! Up mine against UTA. Wow. All right. They're not out of it yet. It's UTA. I'm literally just not going to say it's over until that whistle blows because this Texas Arlington team has so much experience. A top 101 scheme, a CRL competitor. They know they've got it in the tank. They've just got to pull it off. Samba goes up, chips the ball over into UD territory. Looking for a finish on to Fever. Misses the 50-50, but adverse will as well. Plays the ball center here to Echo Clutch. But human else for the finish. Samba, he doesn't have boost. And the ball is headed directly for his net. 5-0 UD. Extend their lead even further somehow. Unprecedented. Unprecedented. 5-0 with just two minutes left on the clock. And UTA, they got to be thinking already of this next game. We're thinking about game, the game six. UD are missing one of what I would generally consider one of their starting members in KG Kendall. He's either on the bench right now KG or he Kendall, had right. something to do. <laughs> and KG Kendall's out of this game right now. UD... <laughs> are doing something, man. And I, I, I have a feeling that KG Kendall is just as involved in it, whether he's in the game or That's not. That's in. Samba fires one back. One minute, 28 seconds left on the clock. Right. 
I'm not gonna downplay this goal because it's UTA. <laughs> right. And that's actually terrifying. One goal less of a lead is, feels like a mile right now for UD. They're taking anything they can get in every last bit of safety <laughs> padding that they can. But UTA starting to make it look more competitive. I love the all-star lineup that we got in uh that we got in chat too. I see Matt Muskie, I see Tones. What's up, boys? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Looking at their... one in. oh no. Oh, mine. Oh, I was mine? about to say they're they're doing some future scouting for what UTA might just do to UD. Uh they were down 5-0, but just about mm, I would like to say two minutes, a minute thirty left on the clock. And um uh oh, <laughs> it's happening! It's that UTA effect. Don't count them out quite yet. Samba gets demoed here by Fever. Human L on the defense taps that one out wide at first, looking to create a cross, looking to create an opportunity for his team. But the aggression, unrelenting, the demo found. Samba's up and Samba shoves no it way. in. It has been all of 15 seconds, guys. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's come back down to reality. UTA now two goals away to tying up this game and taking this un into overtime. They have a minute left to do it. UD, no, they have up. slacked on defense in the past only 30 seconds. And in those 30 seconds, UTA, they were able to get three goals on him. A floater, not going to be able to go in, going to hit the post. Fever with a shot, and that's... Oh I'm not going to say it, not going to say it, goodness. not going to say it. Not gonna see. I was about to say that. No, you bet. You better not, Gus. There's 45 seconds left. In I the can't game. say the it. The UTA. Okay, I get <laughs> it. I get it. I get it. Six to three. Score is now doubled. All right. Score is now doubled, but the score was like tripled earlier. So like, I, well, no, the score is infinitely larger earlier. It's five zero. Right. So all right, UD. They've got life in them, but they need to play defense now. Oh, great shot by Adverse. Good block by Human L. UD. Pushing the ball out, UTA giving it every single ounce of being that they've got. Otherwise, this might look real hot for UD. Gaining all that momentum, winning two games in a row. The cross is in, throws the shot, Grow hey. forces a seven. Can I say it yet? Oh. I'll say Stop. it. It's Wait, the nail the in the coffin. No, 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 it's let over, it's over. That is it. Us. Four goals, 22 seconds. No, it's over. It's absolutely over. That's the nail. That's that's N A I L. That is the nail in the coffin, ladies and gents. And I mean, hey, UD have taken this into a game six. I said just about a minute ago, just about a minute and a half ago, that hey, maybe UTA would would be thinking about uh, you know game six. But hey, now they could start talking about game six. Now that it's truly over, my friends. So, ah, uh, okay, ball's gonna land at some point, and. Uh, Ball's gonna land at some point. Ball's gonna point. land at some point, right? Like, that's the rules. Like, you, you could physically keep it up forever, but. Ball okay. is gonna hit the ground. Okay, so. <laughs> <sighs> UD. UD, UD. They have taken the second game so far in this series. They have taken UT Arlington's third game of this entire season thus far. And. Uh, you know. Oh, mine, I never thought I'd be saying this, right? Well, what? what are you I never in my life did I think I'd be saying this. Oh, yeah? What does UT Arlington need to change to win the next map? What? <laughs> what kind of question yeah, is that? Process. What kind of question is that? I can't answer that. If UT Arlington can't answer that question in two games, I don't know if I can answer that. I mean, uh, All right, I'll, I'll give him a hint. Don't let five goals in in one minute. Okay, right. Right? Right. And that's about all the tips I got. Because they, they nearly made it five. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how they make a 5-0 lead or 5-0 deficit look competitive. But uh, I think if there's any team that can, it's going to be UT Arlington. I think they had Delaware shaking in their boots rightfully. But the human L, Fever, Growl, I remember saying earlier on in the season, Fever is popping off. Mm -hmm. The man has been an absolute monster on this team. But right. this game, every single one of those University of Delaware players came together to defeat the Titan. Series not over yet. They can't lose a single one of these games. They need two more games to take this one home and pull off the reverse sweep to end all reverse sweeps. UTA, though, stand in their way. Unfaltering right now, Gus. They are still just as big as ever. 
and they are used to these situations. Let's see if they can pull it off. UTA looking to close this one out. Meanwhile, UD can only buy themselves more time. So clean slate, 0-0, zero, zero. back to normalcy, back to reality. Oh, there goes oh. gravity. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. Oh my god, no, okay. Adverse is going to be here to receive this ball, though. It's dangerous in UD territory. It's almost a guaranteed cross however he wants it. Great job, though, by Fever messing with this one. The bump comes through, stops that counterattack by being so fast. Fever, though, finds the cross. Echo Clutch has to make an awkward touch. Great pass out to Adverse, who whiffs the ball. Human has got an opportunity here. Wins it by faking it, plays it to the center until somebody can make it, but nobody's going to be there. Sama goes for 50-50. Great challenge into the UD half. Working his way into a cross here. This is a dangerous ball. Adverse has the touch. Doesn't quite have the shot, but the ball's locked in. Fever with the save! You gotta be joking me with that. Okay, all right, fine. Fine, he, he, he at least got something going for themselves because, man, UD still against the ropes. UTA not stopping on these attacks, and it's only been a minute in. But there goes Grau. Fever coming in, trying to pinch. He actually throws off Echo Clutch midair, and Grau going to score. UD has the lead again. Snap back to reality. Oh, there goes Grau again. No, my oh God. My no, God, no, man. Guy. Too UD far. UD are nonstop with these absolutely incredible plays. And the thing is, not all of them are flashy. In fact, very few of them are. UD are playing some of the most solidly fundamental Rocket League I have ever seen. UTA, it is taking such creative play from them to actually put balls into the back of the UD net. And I can't believe it. Now that the cross is free, it's absolutely open, but he can't get it there in time. No boost on the human L. Loses the speed and loses the attack now, but they still have ball possession. Here comes Adverse. Pops it up. Human L. Clearing it over to the side, but instead Samba is still here. Continuing the pressure. Grau doing the same and Human L continuing it. But that's a very weak clear, but instead Fever is still there covering. Now it's a 1v1. Grau, last point of recovery. Double, double touch is and perfect. He double touches it to clear it perfectly. Echo Clutch has to clear and he will. Oh no. Ball is back center. Grau's gonna oh, go Grau, for the shot. Grau, oh, Unbelievable. Oh my god, okay, okay. I'm seriously just trying to process this in my head because something has happened to UTA where they have just broken down on these rotations. They don't seem confident. They don't seem like they're actually keeping track of these UD players. Sometimes it just seems that there's just oh, one player oh, just sweeping it, it on in. Oh, it's That's just in! The human else gonna finish off 3-0 lead in under half the game. University of Delaware looking to do it again. And I'll tell you what, you start talking about confidence, upmind, it matters so much in Rocket League. Whether or not you beat somebody in a 50-50 requires you to react just as fast to it. Reacting quickly, yes, it's reaction time, but it's also decision-making speed, and you have to be confident. Wait. Echo Clutch, though, he's got to follow up. That's it. He might have okay, one goal more here for UTA. They're clawing their way back into this one, and all of a sudden, UTA, they've got a heartbeat. They're showing signs of life in these past two games, and they can pull this one back. Two goal lead is nothing to them. Surely, surely it would be nothing to him in a sense. I mean, we saw UTA. I mean, they made back three goals in in, in less than like 30 seconds, less than a minute. So <clears throat> let's not doubt them for any second here. And look at this, already starting off with a play. Half of the game goes by, the score is still three to one. Look at this pass from Echo Clutch. Great it gets challenge. shut down by Fever. But Human L, he's not ready for it. And him and Growl, they were just bumping into each other for a second. And Samba almost takes advantage, but it hits the post. Look at all of these opportunities that UTA are creating on the shot. That's it. And Adverse, there's somebody in front of the goal at every single moment. The crosses just come in left and right from every single side of the field. And how do you even combat this if you're UD? I, you're asking the wrong guy. I mean, I, I'm just telling you straight up. UD, they just have to... I don't know if it's possible to even park the bus at this point. But they would need some sort of cushion now. Their cushion is gone. They had a 3-0 lead. Now, they keep un they're very unrelenting on these attacks, and I love that about UD. But it just seems as if their defense is very easy to pick and prod just through the play style of UTA. Just one what big bump. You saw right there, one boomer shot all the way down the field, and Echo Clutch 
all, all Echo Clutch had to do was just be there on time. And he was almost there on time. He was almost there to get that one tap. UD, oh, they're losing a lot to clear. Oh, Ground with a great clear here, though. And yes, that goal differential, only one for UTA, but a minute and 30 left on the clock. It's starting to get to that point. UD, a team that has prided themselves on their defense all season long, has turned seemingly overnight into a team of unrelenting aggression. A <laughs> superior... What a shot! What a shot! It's all but the same! The goalkeeper man himself! He has been on fire all day. We've seen him miss so few of those. And he clutches out when they absolutely need it most. Ball still up, though. UD still in a threatening position. Not quite the challenge that they want. Demos everywhere. Explosions left and right. A damn Michael Bay movie right now. Oh! The UTA are the ones getting the better of a human L looking to dribble out of the half. The ball's threatening on the goal. Fever can't get the save. And UTA tie it up 3-3 three to three with just a minute left on the clock. There it is. UT have done it. They have eliminated that 3-0 scoreline before you know before things start to get a little bit saucy in terms of time we have a minute left either one of these teams i would call it golden goal but you just can't call it just yet there's still a lot of rocket league to be played left in this game and fever still on the front lines trying to lead ud into a game seven somehow here comes Wait, adverse. adverse tapped up in the air oh, okay there goes fever Grow on the side Pinches it towards the wall and over to the attacking side. In comes Fever also. Over to the middle. Human L leaves it forward. Fever needs to win. He does. In comes Grau. But Grau, he gets contested. Still off the side. 30 seconds left. 24 seconds left. Echo Clutch. That's not the touch he wants. That's not the touch he wants. Fever's got the ball now. Grau's going to lay it down in for a cross here. Fever trying to get a touch on it. Trying to make it awkward for UTA to deal with. 14 seconds left. You don't want to be the team. Oh, there goes Adverse. The ball in your half when 10 seconds is on the clock. And it looks like UD's playing a little what bit a of pass. defense right now. What a He's pass. Gets his teammates up. Fever's there. Ball's out. Grau could do this. Touches no, over. that's Ball's not in. the back wall. That's it. going to let it touch. He overtime. 3-3. Three, three. We're headed into overtime. Up mine. UTA, one goal will take them to championship. UD, one goal will take them into game seven. Let's see what happens. Growl on the front lines. Get the Grow pass. Cleared. Fever, Fever goes up for it. Follow, though. Adverse, great challenge. Ball off the wall now here for UD. Echo Clutch looking to play it out of the half. Human no way. Nothing. Echo Clutch has an air triple. This could be a Fever, though. Gets back for the save. UD looking to get this ball out of their half. Anywhere away from their goal is where they want this ball to be. And Fever lobs it up, lobs it over. Adverse wins the 50-50. Great opportunity for them, but a great challenge. No there way. The shot. No one's back. And Wait! That has to stop him! No, it's not! The crossbar ruins him, and Fever gets the touch out. Echo Glitch plays it over. Now, Hugh Hill looking to put the ball out of the half. UTA breathing heavy, feeling it. Samba off the backboard. backboard. Will the Fever. Finish. Adverse touches it down, but ground clears it out. Ground needs to get that boost, and he does. Now he's going all the way back. Everyone's reset. Ground's just playing time. Adverse is going to be able to clear at least over to the side, and he's still playing around with it. He has so much boost and a wall reset to play. Samba hits it towards the corner. Grau with a shot. Not going to hit. It was more of a pass, if anything, and it's still in UD's favor. But in comes Adverse once again. All right, the challenge. It's a good win. Fever can turn this one around. Gets the dribble. Human elbow. Too ad uh, too aggressive on the touch. Rather, he is looking for the back of the net. Wait. He's got a shot, though. Chips it. Samba over the ball. Gets it. Fever plays it out wide here. Nothing's getting past the midfield right now. But Echo Clutch has a shot. It's dangerous. That can't be and it. In. That and can't be it. it. Echo Clutch does it. UTA. No way. End it. No reverse sweep had. UTA end their incredible, incredible series. Ladies and gentlemen, UTA has done it. They went 8-0 in the regular season. They won three sets today. They complete the 12-0 season. UT Arlington, your season one EGF Rocket League champions. University of Delaware, congratulations, my friend. You guys put up a valiant effort, but that is just it. UT Arlington continue their reign of terror and they complete the perfect season. Of course, the only games that they ended up losing were in the playoffs, but that's because formidable opponents were in their way. But that is just I mean, it. I, I've got to hand it to everybody right now in this league. Every single team turned up today. RIT turned up. Delaware turned up. Maris turned up. UT Arlington came in at the last second and turned the dial up to 11. You look at Niagara. Niagara came, won a matchup against Siena. Siena, even playing not too bad up against Niagara. Marist and Canisius put on a good show. And now...
we head in here to this final match. I can't think of a more suitable way for this one to end. UT Arlington, 8-0 in this season, 24-0 game-wise all season. Then we come in here. They give out their first match ever to Marist College, a team that pretty much nobody had going into this. And then Delaware turns around down 0-3, starts taking games off UT Arlington like candy from a baby. <laughs> what on earth have I just witnessed? These semifinals and finals have been some of the most incredible Rocket League I've ever had the pleasure to watch. It has been an absolute pleasure being here with you, Dora, because, man, EGF has given us this opportunity week after week after week to commentate some some top collegiate Rocket League. And, well, this is just it, huh? This is it for EGFC's first season. But Rocket League is not done here in the official EGF channel. EGF is not done with Rocket League. Be back here tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, as we start off the EGF Power Series. Big East. The Big East Conference is going to be starting tomorrow. So please stay tuned to the family of EGF social medias at Official EGF on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever that you guys can uh, put a post on. And ladies and gentlemen, my name is Upmind. You can follow me on Twitter at Upmind underscore. It would be much appreciated if you could also follow Door on Twitter at Door underscore casts. Congratulations to the University of Texas Arlington for winning the inaugural EGFC Rocket League season. And of course, UD, it has been absolutely real. They took them against the ropes, and unfortunately, they couldn't close it out in the end. Last score was 2-4. to uh, two to four. Man, Door, it has been an absolute oh, the, pleasure. Oh, scores. Yeah, you're correct. Oh. Man. Man, this I is just want to thank all the teams, man. It has been an incredible season. UT Arlington, RIT, Delaware, Marist, Canisius, Quinnipiac, Manhattan, Siena, Niagara. You all came out today and put on a hell of a show. And I can't thank you guys enough for everything you've done throughout the entire season. And I can't wait to see what we have to offer in the Power Series. But for today, I've been Dor. I've been joined by Upmind. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys tomorrow.